Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. Today we are talking about the new recruit of the Third Reich, uh, or namely Fourth Reich, namely Candace Owens. David, what have you heard about Candace Owens? I just heard that she's super cool and everyone likes her except you on the planet. Yeah. And we try to figure out why that is. And we notice certain patterns in your thinking. Like what? Well, every time someone is a uh, black or <laughs> a woman <laughs> or conservative, you lose your mind. Isn't that Keep weird? Me. You're still doing you're making that joke way too early. If you make oh, that right. too That's early, good. it's going to be it's going to be like a problem at the beginning of the stream. Yeah. You're supposed to keep it to the middle when nobody notices it. Okay. And then it All right. I'll slip um, it in later. I'll slip it in later. I'll bring it back with a vengeance. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. So um today we want to talk about Candace Owens. This is this is a live stream that I scheduled yesterday. And um announced it yesterday as we were talking when we were in david's channel last night and um i also tweeted or posted that i'm preparing a major um take down of candace owens um this is only part of that this is not necessarily it this is only part of it um at this part we want to have a look at her discussion with pierce morgan um where she discussed with them um with him her uh you know her story with the daily wire why she was kicked out um whether she was she was being anti-semitic what people actually accused her of and so on because she just she lied and twisted things very very much from what i have seen there and just as i was preparing for that <clears throat> i saw that she also um just published a conversation with um brianna joy something something who is a very very uh vile person who spreads misinformation on uh twitter and she was recently fired hold up hold up hold up hold up hold up yes now i don't know this woman but i saw you viciously attacked i'm gonna make some predictions yes. one she's a woman <laughs> i knew it two <laughs> She's black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which happens to be a very big coincidence. Oh, um, it's just a coincidence. Okay. That's good. Yeah, a very big coincidence. Um, in fact, so this is the person that we're talking about here. In this case, uh, this is Brianna, Bri Brianna Joy Gray. She's been at the forefront of spreading all kinds of pro Hamas propaganda since the beginning of this war. And, uh, is terribly incompetent and also lies a lot and it's called out on that but continues and does very very awful things terrible behavior like this one which i showed before but it's always worth looking at again to see to have a look into how these people are thank you me too and i really hope that you specifically will believe women when they say that they got hurt <sighs> All right. Thanks for joining. Stick around. More right. So here we have a an Israeli woman speaking, uh, and, and a sister of a hostage speaking about the assault and the abuse that um, that that the hostages and that the victims are going through and have gone through uh, as a result of Hamas treatment. Hamas is mistreating people, and her reaction to that is seriously <sighs> and rolling her eyes specifically will believe women when they say that they got hurt. All right, thanks for joining. Pretty what bad. A, what sick pretty behavior. Pretty awful. Pretty, pretty sick behavior. Anyway, as a result of this, um, probably as a result of what she did here, uh, the hill where she was working, which, to be honest, is not a very, um, very reliable and competent place, uh, fired her. <laughs> 
most likely because of this because i mean who wants this associated with them you know with, with their with their own company and their own name their own label but after lots of uh, complaints after lots of uh, terrible behavior misinformation lies attacks and so on they eventually fired her she said it finally happened the hill has fired me there should be no doubt that the hill has a clear pattern of suppressing speech particularly when it's critical of the state of israel so it was the Jews. Mm -hmm. The Jews fired her, of course. Uh, <laughs> and Candace Owens, who was recently let go from the Daily Wire as a result of her own actions, of course, used this opportunity to get in touch with her and to have her on her own channel, which happened here. I didn't really watch this video. It was only published four hours ago, and I'm not going to focus on this, but I just want to play the first few seconds of this because this is what i saw when i when i when i saw this link when i saw that this came out i saw the first few seconds and let's yeah. let's have david react to this let's all see. right guys happy friday nothing too controversial today just one question is america a sovereign nation or are we being controlled by israel i know i know that question someday is probably going to get me arrested i know this anti-semitism bill is making its way through congress and yeah uh I don't know if we're going to be able to have free speech anymore. So let me get it all out while there's still time. That's how far I've watched. <laughs> David. That was the most insanely idiotic 20 seconds I've ever seen of anything <laughs> in my life. <laughs> this is supposed to be a reliable, good wonderful journalist a great source of knowledge and this is what she says we talked about this we recently yeah. made a whole live stream about it we analyzed very deeply what she's talking about here. she's talking about the anti-semitism awareness Act. didn't we unlike her and all her stupid fans and i'm saying that i'm just i'm just dialing it up uh in the past i don't know that if if you follow her after i don't know what to do man we, unlike her and her stupid fans, didn't we actually read through the bill? Didn't we yeah. actually read through and see exactly what it says? Yes. I'm going to say it for you. Uh, if you if you are still following her and thinking that she's totally cool and uh, totally reliable, you're stupid. Or you are really having you, you really have a bad sense of judgment and should probably reflect a little bit and open your eyes and fact check this idiot here because. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and just to be clear, unlike AP, I'm not saying this just because she's black and a woman. <laughs> I'm saying this, be, that I would apply this to everyone because lots of people are doing the exact same thing, the exact same thing about that bill. I thought, I mean, gosh, I thought the bill was already like old news and it's still a thing that's being posted now that this is going to stop people from speaking. When there's nothing in the bill, and the bill specifically says nothing in here, nothing in here can be used to stand in the way of a person's right to free speech. Yeah. Um, so she is once again it's in the bill. It's literally in the bill that this can't stop you from speaking. Oh, my goodness. She's once again referencing the, the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act bill as it is um, as it is labeled, as, as it is called, which is um, which passed Congress and which is currently in the process of making it through the legal process of becoming recognized, uh, turning into 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 law. And um, she is to totally misrepresenting it like most people of her kind did her when the kind. news broke her uh, her kind by that i mean the anti uh anti jewish anti israeli oh. Oh. uh i thought you meant <laughs> right wing and also left wing people who have been on this propaganda for quite a quite a bit it's what her <laughs> kind do the bill is not about putting anyone in prison the bill is not about restricting speech for people the bill will not change anything remotely about your right to say whatever you want it will not do any such thing at all what the bill does is it gives further instructions to the Department of Education for universities, for example, so that they can properly understand 
what kind of behavior is seen as anti-Semitic behavior. And then based on uh, like mob attitudes within universities, for example, where people go around screaming all kinds of genocidal things, where universities have then the obligation to prevent discriminatory actions against Jews based on anti-Semitism. And the universities in this, uh, in, this, in this case have the obligation to comply with that and to stop such things, to stop such discrimination. Otherwise, they face losing um, federal financing. That's all this bill is about. It has nothing, nothing at all to do with your right to criticize Israel or to ask questions or to quote different things. That's a complete misrepresentation. It has nothing to do with any of this. Yeah, and me... her just saying this is just is is either so she's one of two things. She's either a completely terribly incompetent journalist, or she's a liar. So, um, <clears throat> in short, what that bill actually did—it's already a thing on school grounds and college campuses. So this applies in regular, like elementary schools, high schools, colleges, and so on. It's illegal to discriminate against people on certain grounds. You can't discriminate against someone, let's say, for being black. Right. You understand, AP? Uh, you can't discriminate against someone for being black. Now, suppose, suppose a black student is told you can't be in this room. Okay. How, how could you identify if it's saying you can't be in this room for some other reason, or if he's being discriminated against because he's black. Because keep in mind, a student could come in there and you could just say, hey, you're not allowed in here right now. Why? Because we got something going on in here. It might not be any sort of discrimination. How do you identify if the student is being discriminated against because he's black? Well, you would have some sort of list of things that might tip you off, right? If you say the N-word while you're saying you can't come in this room, there could be a list of things and you say, here, here are criteria that can be used to identify whether, whether that act of discrimination has something to do with the person being black. All right. So there's a situ there are situations on college campuses where people are blocking Jewish students from uh, entering the building and things like that. And so the question becomes, how do you identify and be able to say this this uh, this college campus or something discriminated against that student because that student is Jewish versus some other reason for telling the student he can't come on campus or something like that. Well, the purpose of the bill is to say, here's the list of things. Here's the list of ways that you could identify whether that person is being discriminated against specifically because he's Jewish as opposed to some other reason. That's what the bill does. It's about schools and being able to identify being able to identify when a person is being discriminated against because he's Jewish, at which point the school has to take action, the school has to take action to stop the discrimination or federal funds can be withheld from the school until they make sure that students are not being discriminated against. That's yeah. it. There's nothing about anyone not being allowed to say something. There's nothing about um, uh, people going to prison over saying something. It's yeah. withholding funding from schools who refuse to protect students from discrimination. That's what the bill does. And we have all these, uh, we have all these people. Ah, they're saying we can't do anything. We can't say anything. We can't criticize Israel anymore. This is not a matter of disagreement, by the way. So uh, some people might listen to this and think, oh, no, but that is problematic on a different level. OK, fine. We can talk about that. First off, it's not really problematic. It doesn't change much. All it does is um, the Civil Rights Act uh, at, at the time um, tackled certain things. Um, religion, for example, was not included. Uh, but, um, for example, discriminating against people based on their skin color and eth ethnicity and, uh, and and gender and all of that is protected. So th that that is addressed. But uh, discriminating against, against people because they're Jewish, for example, is not being addressed. So because universities failed to act and failed to shut down uh, internal protests that call for the genocide of Jews, 
Congress thought, okay, apparently, apparently we need to pass a bill to explain to these universities what exactly constitutes, uh, <laughs> you know, discrimination of anti-Semitism, because apparently they don't get it. So that's the whole point of it. That's the whole point. Um, and, and we can have all kinds of disagreements about this. And uh, you can disagree with us and say no you're you're kind of you you're describing it as something that is uh not problematic but in, but in my opinion it is problematic for this and this and that reason that's all cool that's all all right however in this situation here between us and Candace Owens this is not a matter of disagreement we are right she is objectively undoubtedly beyond reasonable doubt wrong and she is misinforming people and it doesn't matter why she's misinforming people, whether she's lying or she just doesn't know. In either case, she's causing harm and needs to stop. Whoever even recognized this person as a proper journalist? Anyway, <clears throat> I didn't watch any more of this. Uh, I'll probably have a look at it at some point and get back to that. Now our focus is actually the uh, Piers Morgan, Piers Morgan interview. Yes. And boy, there's a lot here. There is a lot. And Al Uzza. And Al Manat. Okay. David, are you ready? Born ready, son. Occasion. Two people like Ben Shapiro. I want every single person in the world to declare Christ as king, whether you believe them to be a Nazi, a white supremacist, a Jew, a Muslim. It is the phrase itself that I want declared. Who do you want to win the war, Ukraine or Russia? I don't want Zelensky to win. I don't want Putin to win. The statement doesn't make any sense, but I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to nitpick now. So <laughs> I would stake my entire professional reputation on the fact that Bridget Macron is in fact a man. With that, got me. Okay. It is okay. Established beyond. Oh, oh, oh no! At worst, at worst, Nusset is a hugely influential YouTube commentator. Was wait. My next guest is a hugely influential YouTube commentator. Why would you introduce me as influential? Who says they were fired for speaking <laughs> their mind, but then came roaring back with an even bigger show. And no, it's not me. Candice Owens launched her new independent show this week. Wait, did, she, did he just refer to her as they? What? A person who says they were fired for speaking their mind, but then came roaring back with an even bigger show. And no... Wait a minute, when, when people ask him... <laughs> No, I agree with him on the whole, uh, you know, uh, proper pronoun thing. Because when people ask him to say they, he says, well, it's just one person. It's just one person. Why they? It's just one person. So why is he using it here? It's just interesting to me. <laughs> it's not me. Candice Owens launched her new independent show this week. She's previously described me as dishonest, a slip, <laughs> and a toddler. But in the true spirit, I'm glad to say Candice joins me now for our first ever interview. So that's, finally, that's a good start. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, pretty good to be here. Here's crush that intro. This is the first time they're talking. That's interesting. We get to do it. I'm interview. very happy to be here, Piers. I, I promise. And honestly, credit to your producer because she just was like, I'm going to make it happen no matter what. So I have a bunch here. of ruthless Rottweilers uh, of both genders. <laughs> Um, who who didn't let it go? And what did you both want? You both want genders? That's very both? racist. That is extreme. Wow, that's very racist against. Pierce Morgan declares there are only two genders, both of them. That's very racist against all the other genders. Public figure. There's no question about that. I think we're going to have a, a, a fascinating interview. I do want to go into some more detail before we start, though, to show the level of my of my generosity in giving you this platform on my show, given some of the stuff <laughs> you've said about me. So April 2020, uh, 2022, when I, when I launched the show with my interview with Trump, it all kicked off, obviously. You said, if my team was unethical and dishonest as the snake Piers Morgan, we'd have sensationally edited this clip of Trump to make it look like he threw a tantrum and asked the cameras to be shut off when in reality the interview was over. We simply wanted to chat off camera. I responded, I bow to your superior knowledge of being a snake, Candice. Tune in on Monday and you'll learn something about real interviews. You then said, Piers is whatever he has to be on any given day for attention. He's not guided by any set of principles, which is why I say both sides need to stop platforming his sensationalism. Uh, in 
This is very funny because how, how awesome is it that he starts off like this? This is awesome. <laughs> I know it's it's both wholesome, but also quite um quite a good start for him, not necessarily for her. Because what's funny is I'm looking at the timestamps here, and they won't, uh, as it seems, they won't really talk about any of this very much. But he's just starting with this, just to put that in her face. <laughs> March uh, I, of that year, I accused you of falling for Putin's propaganda when he invaded Ukraine, and I called Putin the new Hitler. You said you're such a toddler, Piers. It's way too old to be seriously entering in a literally Hitler analysis. Keep yourself contained to mean <laughs> tweets good, about the Will well, the adults discuss foreign affairs, NATO, and Western hegemony? Uh, in March the same year, you wrote with a picture of Finding Freedom, the most historical thing Piers Morgan has ever read. Uh, in January 2022, you said, I find Piers, Piers Morgan to be morally inconsistent, which breeds intellectual dishonesty. I welcome a public discussion with him about systemic racism, a topic with which he's impassioned, although apparently not impassioned enough to speak with me about it. Why do you suppose that is? You added, we're all on the edge of our seat waiting for an answer here, Piers Morgan. No, he's really dragging this out. This has, yeah, but this has to be extremely <laughs> awkward for her, right? Like she's yes. laughing, she's yes. laughing like, oh yeah, I was just joking or something like that. When yeah. the longer he continues, the more it's like she's been relentlessly yeah, coming yeah. after him for a long time. And the impression you get, because I mean, up until we, up until we started watching uh, the Pierce Morgan interviews after the October 7th attacks and so on. I mean, I'd seen Pierce Morgan before I knew who he was. I'd seen uh, Candace Owens before I knew who she was. I'd seen some clips by them, but I never really like followed them enough to know what they're about. But I mean, sitting here, sitting here watching this, it's, it sounds like, it sounds like she's just been coming after him a for a long time to try and get attention or something like that. Right. Doesn't it? Yeah, 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 and it happened, and um, <clears throat> yeah, she is probably feeling very uncomfortable about this. Uh huh. It's, and it's, it's and she might be someone who, when she feels uncomfortable, gets an awkward kind of chuckle. Yeah, yeah. Morgan. Well, okay. I'm you should here. do that more often. I like when you read mean tweets about <laughs> Piers Morgan. That was great. I just, I salute you for that. That well, was wonderful. Exactly. Maybe she likes it. Uh -huh. Piers Morgan reads mean tweets. Tweet. Yeah. That should be a whole video, a whole section. If it is, I, I actually do want to give you a platform, and I have no problem with that. I, I, I would obviously contest much of your characterization of me in some of those mean tweets, but that's fine. Uh, we can move on because there's a much more interesting story, I think, involving you, which has played out in the last few months, which everybody knows about. So let's just talk about that. Why did you leave the Daily Wire? Oh, this is too much. I can't even, it's too big of an issue here. I know she's just going to, she's going to lie about it. As far as I know, um, as far as I've seen, she also actually um, keeps a lot of the details to herself because she is legally not supposed to talk about it as legal proceedings are ongoing. Um, well, well, also, well, I was just going to say, it's not a situation where you want to lie. Yeah. Because I'm guessing, I'm guessing the folks at the Daily Wire are a litigious group that would be quick to sue you if you made things up about them. That just sounds like you're going after Jews now, David. Ah, they're not all. They're, they're, who's, who's a Jew there? You got Ben, ben Shapiro. Who else is Jewish? Don't be labeling me. Don't be labeling me. <laughs> No, that's, they, that's, just uh, don't. Doesn't that group seem like they would sue you? I, don't, I mean, the true. Daily Wire, not the Jews. AP, come on. That's the most racist thing I've heard. But that yeah. Jeremy, I don't even know that Jeremy something. There's a Jeremy guy. There's a Michael guy. There's a uh, there's a Clavin. Now he's Jewish, but he's a convert. So they all seem like they would sue. They would sue her in a heartbeat. Well, oh, it was just racist. So let's just continue. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I can't talk about the specific reasons that I left the Daily Wire, but I, what I can do is respond to whatever reasons were given to the public. Uh, and obviously, no sooner did we agree to leave than Andrew Clavin of the Daily Wire did an entire episode uh, stating that the reasons that I was leaving was because I was anti-Semitic and I was engaging in a type of anti-Semitism that was hard to pin down. 
And that is why in my first episode of launching my independent podcast, I hit back pretty hard at him because you know, I think it's it's pretty despicable, first and foremost, as a colleague who I had a great relationship with, to have engaged in that, knowing that I was not at liberty to to say anything. You know, um, can, I thought I it was. In on this? Uh, you know, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to say, I don't know what went on behind the scenes. I was not there. She's there. The Daily Wire guys are there. They're all there. If I had to guess why she was fired, it would kind of be exactly like what Andrew Clavin said. <laughs> if he's saying it's because it's because she's anti-Semitic. That's what, like, even if she wanted to defend herself and say, no, I'm not, that seems entirely like a an entirely believable scenario about why she was fired. If I if I were a if I were a betting man. I'd be like 90% in favor of that explanation. Yeah. And, and we both have seen um, some of the footage from um, from Andrew Clavin um, in response to uh, Candace Owens, which um, she's talking about. And didn't it seem like he didn't seem uh, malicious or offensive or hostile or anything? He was actually talking quite calmly and reasonably. <laughs> about the things that she about the wrongs that she that she did there and why it is wrong and all that right if yeah. i think they're going to play it let's see a very underhanded disgusting tactic and i responded in force i, I want to play you what ben shapiro told me when i asked him about this on uncensored one of the consequences of this war has been a lot of very high passions on both sides, a lot of angry disagreements. You and your company have been at the center of a very uh, high profile one at the moment with Candace Owens, who's now left Daily Wire. Um, was she fired or did she leave of her own volition? I'm not going to speak to this topic, Piers. At, at all? At all. The only thing I will say is what I've said all along with regard to Candace or with regard to any of our other hosts, I am not in hiring and firing position with The Daily Wire. I'm a co-founder of The Daily Wire. I'm a co-owner of The Daily Wire. I'm not actually in management. And as far as the free speech situation, what I will say is that no company has the obligation to literally pay anyone. The, the Daily Wire is a, is a publisher. It is not a platform. Do you agree with that, Candace? Agree with which part? Well, okay. The important part. Yeah. Which part? Yeah. So the important part is because when someone who works for a company starts saying something that uh, other people or the management or whoever uh, doesn't agree with, everyone starts yelling, oh, what happened to freedom of speech? What happened to freedom of speech? Guys, freedom of speech is the government not interfering with your ability to speak. A company, a business... I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. If some guy at McDonald's starts screaming about Jews every time, if some employee, the cashier at McDonald's starts screaming about Jews every time someone walks in and the company says, get out of here, it's not interfering with your freedom of speech. You still have the freedom of speech, but they have the right to say, hey, we don't want you representing our company if you're saying things like this. If you want to complain about Jews, there's the door, go out there. When you're here as an employee, you are part of our organization. We do not want you representing us so that's not a free speech issue people don't get it it's like um of course uh a, a company a publisher will you know choose to keep or remove somebody based on certain things that they say be it um their conduct their values if they if they openly stand for something um how could people not accept this as normal mm -hmm. because um if, if you don't accept that the daily wire or any other publisher has the right to do such a thing then you are also pretty much implying that the daily wire should be hiring anybody no matter what opinion yeah. they have yeah they should be hiring nick fuentes <laughs> or they, they, have, they hiring... have to or, or they're they're blocking his freedom of speech that's it's they, idiotic. They be hiring some somebody who is like uh, who is um who is pro uh, transgender who is a drag queen activist proponent uh and complete enemy of uh religion and conservatism mm -hmm. so they, they would probably they would have to hire, hire them because it's all about free speech no that's not how it works yeah that's not and how that, it works they don't yeah. have to hire everyone they don't have to keep everyone yeah, and that's why 
that's why Ben Shapiro pointed out we are a publisher, not a platform. If you're a platform, platform is like YouTube or Twitter or something like that, where you're not responsible for the content that people are putting out. And so people can post things. You can make rules about what's allowed and not allowed, but your the management is not responsible for the speech that is being put out because it's it's a place for other people to put content. If you are paying her, if you're paying her, then you then you're a publisher. You're a publisher who's paying her for her speech, and she is an employee of your organization. Then when she's saying something, you are bearing, you are you are bearing some of the responsibility. And so if she's saying things that you do not agree with or that you believe go against what you want, my goodness, why are you supposed to keep paying her? Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, let's continue. Well, I think that it's interesting and I'd love to sit down with and debate Ben Shapiro on a number of topics, particularly cancel culture, because I know that he's made some comments in the past that he believes that publishers, platforms should allow people to have different ideas. And so those particular comments to me sound in contrast to what he has said in the past, well, but I can't really speak don't. on behalf of him. Different I ideas. guarantee, I guarantee, I don't even know what she's talking about, but I guarantee Ben Shapiro has never said that if you work for a company, you should be able to just blab all you want, no matter how racist or anything else it is. And you could just, you should just be allowed to say whatever you want. Um, I, I, I just, I'm pretty sure he said things against cancel culture and things like that. But the idea that a news agency, a company or whatever should just let an employee say absolutely anything with no, uh, with no concerns at all, uh, that seems like nonsense to me. I don't believe he said anything like that. Yeah, a lot of people um, think that this is where the Daily Wire kind of decided to draw the line. Um, she, she was going in a very terrible direction of uh, gathering a lot of neo-Nazis around her and uh, bashing not only Israel, but also having uh, picking, picking up this whole fight against the Jews, then suggesting that uh, that that people are outraged because she says Christ is king and they're deeming that um, deeming that anti-Semitic, which nobody ever suggested, but she just made that up. And uh, the new Nazis and the Groypers gathered around her to spread that propaganda. And that is a very important point that we're going to come to because it's, it's I think it's a, it's a very important thing to, to address here. Um, but this here is one incident where the media drew attention to it, um, where she was interacting with uh, Rabbi Shmuley and um, this account, which is a Groyper neo-Nazi account, came in to the discussion and made a comment saying, it says February 20th, Rabbi, are you, are you drunk on Christian blood again? Are you drunk on Christian blood again? And Candace liked this tweet. <laughs> Candace liked this tweet. Of course, later she tried to explain that uh, oh, she you know, she liked it because of this aspect here, because it says, because it corrects the rabbi on something else, not because of the other part, but the other part here is not something that you can just ignore. Because yeah, the other I agree with the first part, <laughs> yeah. and therefore it doesn't matter what the second part is. <laughs> the second part here is not something that you can just be like, yeah, okay, whatever. I don't agree with that part. No, that's not yeah. what it is. Yeah, the like second part is a very, very very historically problematic and serious thing we're talking about yeah like imagine it said it says february 20th rabbi death to jews and you say <laughs> oh i like that and you say wait a minute you just liked a comment about death to jews. no i was i just meant the first part <laughs> um so for those who don't know what this is about and why that is problematic um there is this thing that many people that might might have heard called blood libel in history, um, <clears throat> where it is often used where people accuse Jews of doing a certain thing and then somebody says it sounds like blood libel. This here is actually genuine blood libel. In, in history, blood libel was an accusation against Jews out of complete hysteria that they, um, that they are abducting <laughs> certain people uh, of different religions, especially children, and then um, killing them or sacrificing them, and um, and taking their taking their blood, 
and uh, using their blood in uh, baking, and uh, that this is a religious, a religious practice. That this is what Jews do. Of course, it's completely insane. Completely insane. Doesn't lead back to any proper actual evidence. It is a complete um, insane accusation that people made in order to uh, point fingers and then discriminate against Jews. However, this is specifically going in that direction. Are you drunk on Christian blood again? Here in this instance, this guy is uh, accusing the rabbi or Jews of killing Christians and drinking their blood or, or using their blood. It's literally blood libel. And she just likes this. And of yeah. course, she might not yeah. know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to put like, are you drunk on Christian blood? <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. Even if, you know, even, the guy, even if the guy's joking or whatever, he's joking about Rabbi Shmule drinking the blood of Christians as an insult. And uh, knowing the history of that. It's similar. To, I mean, the things we have that are like close today would be like in Pakistan or something like that. Uh, you don't like Christians, so you just say, "Hey, those Christians burned the Quran," and get the whole community riled up to go and attack Christians. And yeah. so people would do this. People would do this in decades past. Uh, you want to rile up some people against Jews? Ah, they're they're ah, they killed a little kid and drank his drank his blood because it's part of their. Ah, and then they go out and attack Jews. This guy's doing it. Candace uh, likes it. And, and this is something. This is actually a good point that you point that, that you uh, compare this to such an instance. For example, um, over the years we talked about different people in uh, in Pakistan. For um, one of those is Asya Bibi. She was um, she was falsely accused of insulting Muhammad uh, because of a little dispute as she was working, and then um, a mob formed based on the accusation that she insulted Muhammad, and she's a Christian in pakistan and they tried to they they lynched her and tried to kill her until the police came and took her away and sentenced her to death sentenced her to death over blasphemy um she wasn't expecting you know the whole um whenever the execution will be announced and to take place and all that eventually under pressure the pakistani authorities allowed her to leave and i think she then made her way to some other country and uh people have been quiet about this ever since but this is similar it's a comparison to that it is similar if people can do the very same thing to christians in a muslim environment for example they can simply because they have a dispute with somebody else accuse them of um, a certain offense and then gather and try to kill them and try to persecute them that's what they do that's what they do urinating upon one another that's what they do. Uh, <laughs> I can't ever say that's what they do without thinking about that. Um, <laughs> so this this is the problem. Um, and this was only one of the many instances. Another instance was the whole Christ is King topic. And we'll get to that. Obviously, I personally believe that media companies are healthier when you allow people to have different opinions and allow people to debate those opinions. Personally, I love to see a debate between two people. And so I can only tell you what my perspective is. And All right, uh, Candace, I, I, think, uh, I think we should be allowed to accuse yeah. Jews of drinking Christian blood. And if we need to have a robust debate on whether Jewish rabbis like Rabbi Shmuley are drinking the blood of Christians and getting drunk on it, I, I think that's a healthy a healthy feature of of yeah. any conservative media organization. Candace, um, I hope you build your own media company, a very conservative uh, media company, and then you hire people who have um, who are porn actresses uh, and who advocate for um, <laughs> who advocate for same sex marriage, LGBTQ I plus Z S F N whatever rights. Um, and who also think that religion should have no place in society, that religion is actually terrible, it's a perversion, and things like that. Yeah, definitely. So you should definitely create a, a media company and hire such people, since you believe that uh, a media company should, in general, be just accepting anyone and, and, and never, ever turning down or kicking out people based on their opinions. That's what it sounds like here. 
So please do that. And can't really speak for him. I mean, he made the point at the end there that any company, any private company, and when it comes to free speech, is not compelled to pay people to work for them. I mean, would you accept that as a, as a principle? Well, what I would say again is that it just kind of runs into what is wrong. I guess the question you could ask is what is wrong if CNN fires somebody mm. for having a different opinion? What then is wrong if Fox News fires somebody for having a different opinion? Your answer would have to be that it's not wrong and that companies are at will to curate whatever beliefs. She didn't just have a different opinion. She was also very, very... Um... So here is one of the instances. This whole issue of her getting um, eventually leaving the Daily Wire was um, a long process in the making where she repeatedly acted in very <laughs> hostile ways toward the Daily Wire, um, including with this. I think there were some um, some issues that she said about Israel and about uh, Zionism, where Ben Shapiro was then asked about her, and uh, Ben Shapiro said that what uh, Candace Owens said was despicable. She then got really outraged about this. She made this uh, post here where she quotes the Bible. She says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And this is Very why... Nice. This is why... Uh... Andrew Tate said, uh, as Candace, Candace Owens said, my good friend, blessed are the peacemakers. I really love what she came up with there. She's so smart. This is kind of disgusting to me because um, yeah. at this point, she's just using Christianity for her own gain and for her own agenda. And the first people who, sh who, are, who should be offended by this the first people to be offended by this should be Christians. <laughs> they shouldn't be supporting this. Of course, uh, everybody understood directly, directly and immediately that she made this post because of the Daily Wire and because of uh, Ben Shapiro. So Ben Shapiro then responded to this with this here saying, Candace, if you feel that taking money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means, quit. <laughs> Upon which, David, do you th do you think that Ben Shapiro said anything offensive here or anything about her usage of the Bible? No, right? No, she's saying you can't serve two masters, can't serve God and money. So that would... I don't know. That seems pretty straightforward. It, she's going, she's obviously responding to the Daily Wire. Yeah. And saying, hey, you guys pay me. And so you're acting like you have some say, but I have to be, I have to be, I, I have a greater obligation to God. I can't serve both these things. And he's saying, yeah. so if you think there's a conflict here and you have to choose, why are you still working here? Yeah. Ben is clearly saying, uh, Candace, I see what you're doing. You're not just quoting the Bible. You're trying to make a point here about your work at Daily Wire. So why why don't you just quit if it bothers you so much? Here is her response to this. <laughs> you are utterly out of line for suggesting that I cannot quote biblical scripture. The Bible um, is not about you. Christ is king. <sighs> Pretty bad. David, explain why this is bad. Explain all aspects of why this is bad. Yeah, so she clearly made a tweet saying <laughs> that there's a conflict between her obeying the Daily Wire for money and her obeying God. He responds, if you think there's a conflict between you following our rules of our company and serving God, then quit. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Just you can quit and then we have nothing over you and then there's no conflict and you don't have to feel like oh i'm obeying men for money and instead of god and then she blasts him how dare you try to tell me i can't quote the bible the bible's not about you ben how dare you think that the bible 
is about you. I just ran, I was just randomly quoting the Bible for no reason. Christ is King, Jew. So, <laughs> so first off, did Ben ever suggest, say, or suggest anywhere that she cannot or should not quote the Bible? No, never happened. Never happened. It didn't happen at any point at all. All Ben did was thinking, okay, I see why you're quoting this. Because you clearly have a problem with what is going on here. So if things bother you so much, why don't you just quit? And she then says, how dare you suggest that I cannot quote the Bible? Nobody suggested that. Yeah. Nobody suggested that. And let's be realistic here. Candace is not stupid enough to think that Ben was complaining that she quoted the Bible. I'm not sure about that, to be honest. I don't think so. I don't think she be. is. I think, <laughs> I think she knows a ton of her fans are stupid. And it's this is something that anyone can do. Anytime someone quotes something, you just completely misrepresent what they're saying. Say, oh, he said this. Oh, that's awful. It's complete misrepresentation. But you might have a ton of fans who are stupid enough to agree with you. And then you'll also have fans who aren't stupid enough. They know what the guy's really saying, but they'll go after him anyway just because they hate him. You do have people like that. You've got like the gripers. They're going to hate Ben no matter what. And so they'll agree with Candace no matter what. And they'll think it's great if she twists his words into uh, into an attack on quoting the Bible. And um, you're probably right. It's probably that aspect that she tries to deliberately twist what Ben Shapiro said and tries to appeal to these um, to the to the to the groiper neo-Nazi crowd in order to appeal to them and depict Ben Shapiro as this evil anti-Christian guy, which he clearly is not which he clearly is not. He is working with Christians, has been working with Christians, has been inviting and hiring Christians, surrounding himself with Christians, inviting Christians on his show to speak, and so on forever. The only Christian, apparently, that he has a big problem with for, because of Christianity is Candace Owens. Yeah, makes complete sense. Candace Owens, the perfect Christian, by the way, the great big example for Christianity. This is just such a vile behavior, such deceptive behavior, where th this is why, this is why I'm saying that um, Christians should be the first to be offended by this, because she's using Christian sentiments, she's abusing Christian sentiments in order to further her own agenda and to attack Ben Shapiro and attack the Daily Wire to cut ties. She is abusing, making use of Christian sentiments, Christian ideas, Christian beliefs, Christian emotions to rile people up behind herself for money, for status, for being right, or whatever it is. She is using Christianity, using Christians. If you're a Christian and you agreed with her because of this, because of the stuff, you were played, used by her. She used you. She uses Christians for her own gain. That's what's happening here. This is just so deceptive and so evil and messed up. Christians should be the first to be offended by this and should call this out. Yeah, everyone. And when you're, when you, whenever you need advice on how to live, responsibly as a Christian, be sure to go to the apostate prophet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, listen to me. <laughs> um, the Bible is not about you. Thereby, again, deceptively suggesting that she didn't make that tweet about the Daily Wire, which she clearly did. Um, and then she doubles down with Christ as king. And th this here is, it just gets more and more and more disgusting. This is the most disgusting aspect of it, where she, where she actually uses the phrase... Uh, in the same manner that Nick Fuentes and the Groypers have been using it, by the way, uh, the, the, the phrase Christ is king, not as a declaration that Christ is king, not as a declaration of faith that you are a Christian and you believe in Christ, but to make a political statement against um, those who are perceived as um, enemies of Christianity, which obviously they're not. She is using it here, the phrase Christ is king, to attack Ben and to attack Jews to attack others. You shouldn't be, 
you, you don't even have to um, be offended by this because she is being anti-Semitic or whatever it is. You should be offended by, by this because she is attacking and insulting Christianity and mocking Christianity, mocking Jesus. That's what she's doing here. Yeah, let me, uh, <clears throat> for everyone who's not up to date or who hasn't watched our previous discussions on this issue. So the slogan, Christ is King. Um, Christians <clears throat> can say that. Christians can declare that. Christians can say Christ is King, Jesus is Lord, all these things. Uh, I heard it's a common thing um, when I was just a speaker's corner. So people would, uh, Christians would uh, start yelling, Jesus Christ is Lord, or they'd say Christ is King or something like that. They're clearly saying it because they mean it and not as a kind of, uh, not the way the groipers are using. So there's a, there's a different sense in which it's used by groipers. Uh, so this is the Nick Fuentes fans as a slogan, because they're aiming towards this uh, Catholic white nationalist society. And their slogan, their slogan is Christ is King. And they're talking about Christ is King. And he's, they're, they're going to establish this, uh, this Catholic white, white nationalist kingdom here. And this is their slogan. So in the past, I've compared it to the slogan, Black Lives Matter, in the sense which, okay, the slogan, Black Lives Matter, who's going to, who's seriously going to dispute that unless you're just a racist scumbag, but it's being used by Marxists. So when a Marxist organization is using it as a smokescreen to cover their true agenda, because they know that if you can, uh, if, if you use this slogan as kind of a shield against what you're at, uh, 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 about what you're actually after, then the moment anyone criticizes your organization or your goals, or your agenda, which is Marxist, bunch of Marxist stuff, then you say, oh, they're just, they're upset that we're saying Black Lives Matter. See, we're just saying Black Lives Matter. And that's why these people are mad at us, because we say Black Lives Matter. And so you use it as a shield, right? That's what the Groypers are doing. Right. There's, ah, we're going to get rid of the Jews. We're going to get rid of all the Jews. We're going to get rid of everyone except uh, white Catholics. And we're going to have our nation here. And Christ is king. And then when you object and say, man, you got some sick ideas. They say, oh, you see, they're, they've got a problem with us saying Christ is king. That's what that that's what they're after. That's what they're objecting to. She used it in the exact same way. Yeah. She called out the Daily Wire. And as soon as they respond, ah, you see, they got a problem. Christ, they have a problem with, with my belief. Christ is king. You see that they've got a problem with that. And so that's that's kind of the issue. So now when someone is saying Christ is king, what exactly do you mean? Are you saying Christ is king because you're a Christian and you're proclaiming that Jesus is the Messiah? Or have you simply weaponized it because you have your own agenda and you're you're using that? You're using that so that when people respond to what you're actually after, what you're actually trying to do, and when people are responding to you for being an anti-Semitic piece of garbage, and you just say, oh, see, people just have a problem because I'm saying Christ is king. That's, uh, that's pretty bad. That's bad stuff. Yeah. Um... And that, that precisely is the problem here. Nobody says uh, you shouldn't be saying Christ, uh, Christ is king. Nobody has a problem with that. It is not uh, considered anti-Semitic to say Christ is king. Even, even just that the fact that we are talking about this, of whether saying Christ is king is anti-Semitic or not, this is something that these people strategically planned, came up with, and went through in order to seriously distort the phrase Christ is king for their own agenda and use it against Jews to say, oh, look, look, Jews have a problem now with Christ. There is no Jew, okay? There is no known Jew, Jewish figure, nobody out there who during this entire process said, don't say Christ is king, saying Christ is king is anti-Semitic. We went through it all. We made a live stream on this. We reviewed it. I made it. I put a challenge out there. I asked people to tell me who exactly said such a thing. There is no example. Nobody said such a thing. Nobody in this whole discussion, in this whole controversy, ever said that the phrase Christ is King is anti Semitic. This is something that uh, Candace Owens and others completely made up. Nobody said that.
The closest thing that you can get is that uh, Andrew Claven said that she uses the phrase in such a way that she attacks Jews over it and thereby actually abuses it. And we want to have a look at that. I think it's going to uh, it's going to come up in a, in a little bit. System that they want and to to not allow free <clears throat> speech. So, you know. Out of interest, is it true that you signed an NDA and that's why you can't really talk about this in detail? I cannot speak in detail about any of that stuff. You can't even confirm whether you've had an NDA. Why'd you sign it? I am not free to speak about any topic pertaining to contracts signed or not signed. And so... You see... The Pretty sure she was issued in an order to um, not speak about any aspect of it, which probably um, a lawyer on her side agreed to. To well, she would have had to agree to it as well. And it's here. Yeah. Uh, here's your parting. Uh, your parting millions of dollars. Yeah. Um, you can't blast us as if you're leaving. We're paying. We're paying you. We're paying you a bunch of money here, so you don't get to uh, blast us and so on. And keep in yeah. mind. Keep in mind. They seem to be. Apart from Andrew Clavin talking about it, I mean, Ben Shapiro seemed to be along the same lines. I'm not allowed to, I'm not talking about this. Yeah, yeah. He clearly said he can't talk about it, so. Hello? Chick this is where it gets interesting for me, because you, you referenced uh, Andrew Clavin from The Daily Wire. I want to play the, a, a part of what he said, and then I'll come back to you. Yeah. The Daily Wire parted ways with Candace Owens, and part of it was things that she was saying that we felt were strongly uh, anti-Semitic. And she was doing it in such a way that it was kind of hard to pin down. So I was trying to show where these things happen. So I, I'm bemused because I've been involved in a lot of contracts in my time. I've been an employer, I've been an employee and so on. I don't understand why somebody from the Daily Wire can be so explicit about the reasons you left and yet you are not able to be as explicit to defend yourself or to counter what they're saying to be fair to be fair i also Man. am confused by that like why is he allowed to talk now maybe andrew clavin didn't sign anything but it's i mean it seems it would it would seem odd if it's hey you can't talk but we can say things about you that would seem odd to me so I, i'd actually be with pierce on that one that's something weird about that don't yeah. know what, don't know what the legal don't know i don't understand what the uh legal requirements are but that does sound weird if he can talk and she has to keep her mouth shut Yep. I don't know why. We don't know. Pierce. Amen. I think that is probably a question that was on a lot of people's minds. And, you know, Amen. what can I say other than what was it that Kanye was saying about contracts? And, you know, I, I think it is, even if you believe it, it is valid for that to happen. I think it is immoral to allow someone to attack someone and to not allow them to defend their, their name. And so for me, Andrew actually rose to the level of defamation when he started claiming that I had actually said things that I had never said. I mean, he flagrantly lies. And I showed that on my platform when he pretended that I did an episode suggesting that Adolf Hitler burning books was a good thing. I wasn't even speaking about Adolf Hitler. It's a nonsense to think that I would do that on my platform. And it's a trick also. It's, it's All right. Let's hear this one more time, what she just said here. Because I heard this, then I looked it up, went back to check all the details and looked through it and realized that there is something really wrong happening here as she's making the statement about Hitler. Suggesting that Adolf Hitler platform said things that I had never said. I mean, he flagrantly lies. And I showed that on my platform when he pretended that I did an episode suggesting that Adolf Hitler burning books was a good thing. I wasn't even speaking about Adolf Hitler. It's a nonsense to think that I would do that on my... Okay, so apparently um, Andrew Clavin, like many others, pointed out that she's doing outrageously messed up things, such as saying that the book burnings in Nazi Germany were actually good and that you know hitler burning books was actually good and she says that that makes no sense because um the show that i did wasn't even about about hitler that's very interesting 
So I went back to check what actually happened. And it turns out she did speak hold, hold about... On. Hold on. Go ahead. How is it sometime anything having to do with Hitler comes up? You're just on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I jump on it immediately. I just love it, man. I love it. I can't resist. When I see the name Hitler pop up, I'm like, okay, I have to look at that. I have to see what's up here. So... um <laughs> Here you have the Jerusalem Post uh, reporting Candace Owens attacking pedophiles and perverts takes aim at 1930s Jewish sexologist. Uh, the article is quite interesting. It uh, points out that she makes assertions about people that are totally, um, totally verifiably false, um, such as that um, Hirschfeld was gay and was interested um, in the sexuality of colonized African people and things like that, which is all weird and not really true. However, there is one part here in this video, which they are referencing, where she has a few words to say. Let's look at that. Focus. Literally Nazis, all that, that, that obsession with only referring to that historical aspect. Okay. Brings me to number two on the did you know question, because this really blew my mind. Do you know which books the Nazis were burning? And I'm asking you this, and I'm telling you why it blew my mind, is because definitely something that we covered extensively, and you will cover extensively throughout the public education system, is the Holocaust, Nazi Germany. It's why so many people, when they're commenting, it seems like the only historical reference they have is, it's just like Hitler, it's literally Nazis, all that, that that obsession with only referring to that historical aspect is hi infidel noodle hope you're doing well um this is very funny because she just said to pierce morgan that the show wasn't even about hitler and about hitler burning books yet as far as we understand here she's talking about book burnings in nazi germany yeah nazis hitler, not hitler under it but she also even mentioned hitler here like, that a reference they have is it's just like Hitler. It's they're literally Nazis. All that, that that obsession with only referring to that historical aspect is partially because when you're in a public school system, you you really focus on World War II and the Nazis. So I was shocked that I never learned throughout that schooling that the brown shirts, you know, the the student activists that went around burning a bunch of books were burning books that they deemed to be Marxist and that they deemed to be overtly sexual. Yes, the Nazis did not like other political views. That is correct. People who are, who are aware of Nazi Germany's history will probably cringe at what she's saying here. First off, student activists on World War II and the Nazis. So I was shocked that I never learned throughout that schooling that the brown shirts, you know, the, the student activists that went around burning a bunch student of books. Activists who went around burning a bunch of books. The brown shirts were uh, student activists who went around burning a bunch of books. The brown shirts. Mm -hmm. Who are the brown shirts? <laughs> the brown shirts were very famously known not as uh, regular student activists but as the Nazi paramilitary organization the Sturmabteilung the Storm Division. Sturmabteilung the paramilitary the violent paramilitary trying to form a violent militant movement within Germany for the Nazi party who also went around and conducted several very, very notorious, very well-known acts of killing people, destroying all kinds of property, destroying Jewish shops, burning books, and so on. She just seriously sat there and described these people, the brown shirts, as, you know, the student activists who went around burning books. You know, student activists 
Let's read what Oxford Reference says here. Member of an early Nazi paramilitary organization, the Sturmabteilung, or SA, Assault Division, the brown shirts recruited from various rough elements of society were founded by Adolf Hitler in Munich in 1921, fitted out in brown uniforms reminiscent of Mussolini's black shirts. They figured prominently in organized marches and rallies. Their violent intimidation of political opponents and of Jews played a key role in Hitler's rise to power. Does it so far sound like these were just a bunch of student um, activists? <laughs> student activists? No, it doesn't, right? From nineteen thirty. Well, I mean, technically, they had a lot of students, <laughs> and they're they're activists, so. Uh... <clears throat> From 1931, the SA was led by a radical anti-capitalist, Ernst Röhm. By 1933, it numbered some two million, double the size of the army, which was hostile to them. Röhm's ambition was that the SA should achieve parity with the army and the Nazi party and serve as the vehicle for a Nazi revolution in state and society. For Hitler, the main consideration was to ensure the loyalty to his regime of the German establishment and in particular of the German officer corps. Consequently, he had more than 70 members of the SA, including Röhm, summarily executed by the SS in the Night of the Long Knives, after which the revolutionary period of Nazism may be said to have ended. But hey... Let's hear once again how Kenneth Owens describes these people. The Nazis, when you're in the public school system, you, you really learned throughout that schooling that the brown shirts, you know, the, the student activists that went around burning a bunch of books were burning <laughs> books that they deemed... All right. Um, it's just... It is just amazing, isn't it? This is an instance where I would say that um, that this is incompetence, ignorance, more than just her vile, dishonest aspect. Because she doesn't know much. She's actually quite ignorant. She doesn't know very much. She learns things from social media. She learns things from somebody uh, who tweets something. Yeah. She learns things from groipers. Yeah, let's, from let's groipers. Put it that, from groipers, let's put it that way. And I'm not sure why in the world, how in the world she got that whole idea that these were just regular uh, student activists. But, I mean, putting the, putting this out there, just describing them as regular student activists, it's a very stupid thing to do. It's not just deceptive. It's stupid. It's just stupid. It's ignorant. And, and she's acting like they're good guys because among the things they're burning, hey, they're burning Marxist stuff. Yeah, they're yeah. burning anything that's that's not in line with the Nazi party. <laughs> Yes. That was their solution. Here's the Nazi party. This stuff disagrees with it. Let's go burn it all. And she's like, but look at the great thing. Look at the things they were burning. What a great <clears throat> job, guys. These great student activists who put Hitler in power. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that is the second aspect of it. I just got so stuck on her calling them just student activists. Um, but the second aspect of it is also that she actually distributes this uh, false pro-Nazi apologist propaganda that the books they were burning were just books that were morally reprehensible. You know, a bunch of Marxist stuff and overly sexual stuff. That's not what happened. That is not what happened. We have, we have endless lists and names of books that were actually burned. We have names of authors whose books were burned. Jewish authors, categorically, no matter what they wrote about, were considered for burning and mostly burned. So their, their books were mostly burned. Communist actors, uh, communist uh, authors, did I just say actors? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> communist authors um, had their books burned. Uh, liberal anti-Nazi authors had their books burned. All kinds of different people, regular conservative capitalist books were burned. Lots of different books on medicine, on art, whatever it is, all across the board were burned. And as said, Jewish books, so books from Jewish authors, were categorically considered for burning and mostly burned. This has nothing to do with just being uh, repulsed by the Marxist and sexual content and then burning them. This is a well-known neo-Nazi, a Nazi apologist propaganda point, which she is repeating here. And to people who are not aware of it, this may sound like, uh, you know, quite innocent. And she's making a moral point here and saying that things weren't actually that bad. 
And she's also saying that she actually she never really learned this in school. Well, she is the ignorant one. I did learn this in school. I also did learn this later on myself. Lots of people out there do learn this. And they know very well that this is not what happened in Nazi Germany. She's presenting Nazi lies, Nazi apologia. That's what she's doing. To be Marxist and that they deem to be overtly sexual. And one of the first and most notorious book burnings was the student-led destruction of the library at the Institute for Sexual Research. That library was founded by a man named Magnus. Yes. Look at all the other things they burned, by the way. If you want some basic information on things that happened during the Holocaust and during Nazi times, just look at the Holocaust Encyclopedia, United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. It will tell you the actual details with the receipts and the names of everything that actually happened. Here's an actual article on the book burnings which lengthily goes into it, actually not that lengthily, it keeps it, it, keeps it quite concise. It makes it bite-sized to easily um, easily consume. Jewish authors numbered among them among the writers whose wor works were burned, among them some of the most famous contemporary writers of the day, such as Franz Werfel, Max Brod, Stefan Zweig. Uh, among the authors whose books students' leaders burned that night were well-known socialists such as Bertolt Brecht, August Bebel, the founder of the concept of communism, Karl Marx, Trickle Bourgeois, and, and so on, Ernest Hemingway, Ernest Hemingway, <laughs> and so on. Lots of these people, lots of these uh, these books were burned. It wasn't just uh, about sexuality. And the movement wasn't just a student activist group. It was literally part of the paramilitary with the inclusion of students. That's it. What a... Platform. And it's a trick also. It's it's meant to make people feel em emotional. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that she's supporting Adolf Hitler. And I thought it was nasty business. I thought it was it was extremely nasty business. And, you know, for me, Piers, it's important for me to state. I'm not supporting Hitler. You know, I'm just saying, just saying that, you know, this thing that is that he's vilified for was actually not bad because he was actually totally good. But yeah, I'm totally not supporting it. I'm not a great, I'm not a fan of Hitler, but. <laughs> yeah, I have to say. In that clip that she's referring to, it sounded like she's saying, hey, these Nazis aren't, aren't as bad as they as their reputation. They're doing they were doing some really good stuff. And we've all been manipulated by the education system yeah. into thinking they were really, really bad. Yeah, they may have done some bad things, but they were doing some great things as well. That's what it sounded like. That, that's literally what's happening here. Why in the world is she giving a whole speech about how we were deceived and not told the truth about what the Nazis actually did? We were told the Nazis were burning books, but they were actually burning books that were bad. They were burning bad <gasps> books. This is just so dishonest. She's despicable. My name means a lot to me. You know, my grandfather grew up on a sharecropping farm, one of 12 children, you know, in, in the segregated South. Robert Owen Sr. And for him to have worked the way that he worked and to have instilled the Christian values <clears> in me <throat> that he instilled in me growing up, the idea that I would allow someone to so flagrantly throw dirt on his name, it was never going to fly. Did you? Nobody is doing any of that, uh, Candace. Stop playing the victim. <laughs> You're being called out for what you actually yeah. did. <laughs> yeah, throwing throwing dirt on someone's name. I mean, it reminds me of what they did with Hitler, uh, <laughs> throwing all this dirt on him when all, all he's trying to do is get rid of communist propaganda. Come on. That's, that's because that's the Jews. Dude. That's what the first, Jews do. First Hitler, now me. <laughs> Imago Dei is a debate her. I don't know what you mean. Uh, I would happily debate her. I would happily debate her. And um, I would happily do that, but I interacted with her once to correct her on something or to call her out on something, and this is what she did in response. <laughs> she blocked me. So I'm not really, um, I don't think that she's actually going to debate me. And I'm preparing something else. I want to publish a video that will have a much wider reach. Um, 
But even as a result of that, I don't think that she will debate me. Okay? No, she wouldn't. She would only she would only do something if it was going to help her career. And, yes, uh, debating yes. you would not help her. Yes, this is what she does. She blocks people. Well, oh no, oh no! I just harmed the reputation of her grandfather. I threw dirt on her grandfather's name. Ever say or do anything which to a Jewish ear could be construed as anti-Semitic? Well, let's be clear about all of these topics, whether we're talking about racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, everything can be construed to an ear mm. when you're talking about a subjective ear that I believe that this is racist. I mean, I could say, hey, Piers, you even asking me questions. And to me, it feels racist, right? A feeling and a fact are two different things. So what someone construes something is meaningless. Factually speaking, I have never said anything that is anti-Semitic. And had I have said something that was anti-Semitic, Andrew Clavin would have simply showed the clip. I was with her until that point. I, I thought she's actually giving a fairly okay response to it, that you can construe everything in a different way if you want to hear it that way to be very honest i actually thought you know sounds quite all right but then until that point something is meaningless factually speaking i have never said anything that is anti-semitic and had i have said something that was anti-semitic andrew Clavin would have simply showed the clip yeah she didn't say anything that is anti-semitic she just acted in such a way that it is a clear instance of anti-semitism but she didn't explicitly say anything that is anti-Semitic, except also for, of course, uh, praising the Nazis, who are very well known for loving Jews. Um, <laughs> this is just, this is exhausting. Man. Right, a lot of attention has been focused she, on- She's playing dumb. Isn't that what she's doing? She's playing dumb here. And, um, and the, the, the honest thing that you could do in this position is to say, you know what, I thought about it, and I, get, I understand now that some of the things that I said do indeed sound quite problematic. Maybe she can still at that point clarify and say, however, I didn't really mean it in that way. She could still do that. That would be actually very nice if she could do that. But at least she should acknowledge that the things that she's saying can be or are received as very problematic. It's quite obvious. This is not some uh, agenda. This is not some game that people are playing. It is actually quite problematic. Or she could just say, oh, I'm not, I'm, I didn't say anything anti-Semitic. It's just the Jews, the Jews are twisting everything that I say to make it look anti-Semitic. <laughs> um, I mean, that's clearly what's going on in her head. Right? <laughs> yeah. Constantly referencing Christ is king. Um, yeah. Many people believing that although those words in themselves, if you're a Christian, as you are, um, would not be offensive, that to Jewish people, when they're being whipped up on social media as they were at the time by people who are genuine white supremacists and pretty brazen anti-Semites. Do you remember, David, we went through um, a bunch of tweets on that day when the controversy of Christ is King happened. We went through uh, lots of tweets that mentioned the words Christ is King. And yeah, wasn't it like, you're Jew, blah, 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 yeah. blah, Christ is king. You filthy Jew, you this and that. Yeah, uh, kill children, Christ is king. Uh, I see your nose, Christ is king, and so on. Because it wasn't by regular regular Christian people. It was led by um, these groipers. The groipers. Mm -hmm. Who were using Christianity on that day. And she joined in without, re without uh, ever stopping and saying, hey, this is, this is not what I intended. That being smart as you are, you would have known that, that to deliberately use that phrase repeatedly in that time, in that climate, was a deliberate act of provocation to people like Ben Shapiro, who obviously are extremely high profile Jewish people. Do, do you accept I'm that? I'm sorry, what, which time frame are you talking about? Well, when you since, say at that time. Well, since the start of... Oh, she's just being deliberately obtuse here, right? The Israel-Hamas war. Yeah, no. So that phrase, if you're talking about when it began to be a scandal, because I think everyone was quite confused 
when there was suddenly this narrative that it could be construed as anti-Semitic. Which nope. People were not confused at all. It was quite obvious. Which is uh, why it required so much explaining by people of when it became anti-Semitic. Mm. I posted a standalone Bible verse, just this is just a pure fact, uh, calling for peace. And at the end of the oh, verse, please. I ended it and said, Christ is King last November. Andrew Clavin references that. The reason why this even became a scandal is because of Andrew Clavin. Andrew Clavin did an episode called Because Christ is Really King, and then he accused me wrongly of spitting that phrase at a Jew. That simply never happened, as I showed in my first episode. It did happen exactly like that. Didn't what, we just yeah, have did, a was, was it an actual tweet <laughs> at Ben Shapiro? <laughs> didn't we just look at Yes, it was. It was. In fact, she didn't say Christ is King at first. She only said it after... Um, let me see. I closed a bunch of tabs. Around burning a bunch of books. Let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. Let's, let's find that once again. We just had to look at that. We just looked at it, man. We just had to look at it. Okay, here. Got it. Got it. Let's see. Let's see. Where did it go? 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 Christ is king. Christ is king. Here. She didn't at first say Christ is king. She She posted the Bible quote which was obviously a remark about her work at Daily Wire, to which Ben Shapiro then responded, Candace, if you feel that like taking money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means quit. To which she then responded with this idiotic uh, remark, which is, you are utterly out of line for suggesting that I cannot quote biblical scripture. The Bible is not about you. And then here, Christ is king. And this is one of many instances where she then did that so that she was clearly tweeting this at him she wasn't doing this on her own as a standalone tweet david am i, am I not you're seeing the same thing right yeah that's exactly how i read all of this and it's obvious <laughs> she's literally doing that as a as a response to ben shapiro as a as a provocation as a hostility that's it why in the world would you add this here you can say Christ is king on your own. That's totally fine. Why in the world would you add this to a hostile interaction between you and Ben Shapiro? This is just so dishonest. Back, it was just made that call because Christ is really king. And then he accused me wrongly of spitting that phrase at a Jew. That simply never happened. As I showed in my first episode back, it was just made that up out of thin air. I posted a standalone Bible verse and I wrote at the end of it, Christ is King. And then a Jew responded to. Nope, that's not what happens. Mm -mm. That's not what happened. In fact, let's look at the original post here. Um, Candace Owens, blessed are the peacemakers. So her version is that she posted a standalone um, Bible verse and then at the end put Christ is King. Did that, did that happen? We just looked at it. We just looked at the post that she's talking about here. Do you see Christ as King anywhere here? No, I missed it. No, it's not here, right? Maybe the Jews removed it. I don't know. <laughs> Do you see Christ as King anywhere here in this post? Mm -mm. No. Let's let's look at what she's saying again. To me, I showed in my first episode back. It was just made that up out of thin air. I posted a standalone Bible verse, and I wrote at the end of it, "Christ is King," and then a Jew responded to me, telling me to quit my job. Here is the post where she posts the Bible verse. It never says Christ is King anywhere. Yeah, and she then just made it. She just made it sound. She just made it sound like she posted Christ is King, and then the Daily Wire goes, "Oh, that's it. That's anti-Semitic. We're firing you over this." When can, when she posts this as an clearly as an issue for the Daily Wire. Hey, yeah. um, I have to be loyal to God and not the money I'm getting from the Daily Wire. Ben replies. If you, if you think there's a conflict here and you want to serve God and not money, then you can quit. There's there's the solution to this uh, moral quandary you found yourself in. You're you're in a moral quandary. I don't know what to do. I'm supposed to serve God, but uh, these guys are paying me. He says, you could quit. There's an easy solution. Quit. If you think you've got this problem, quit. I don't like the solution. I want the final solution. Um, <laughs> so there... <laughs> There are different lies here. Lie number one is that she made the post for 
different reasons. This is lie number one. She clearly made this post in response to the Daily Wire. And lie number two is that she added Christ as king at the end. It's clearly not here. You can see it very clearly. It's not here, right? We're not blind. <laughs> and this is quite obvious. This is not a matter of disagreement once again. She's lying. That's it. She then explains the situation uh, and continues that Ben Shapiro, a Jew, responded to her. Christ is king. And then a Jew responded to me telling me to quit my job. So what happens sometimes is that... A Jew then responded to me telling me to quit my job. No. Ben Shapiro responded to you and said, Candace, if your job is really getting between you and God, then by all means quit. It was just direct a response to her complaints, to her tweet. It was not a Jew telling her to quit her job. That That's another lie. That's lie number three here. Jew said quit your job. <laughs> That's lie number three. Of course, the next thing is also then a Jew came. That, so this, this could actually be number four. Let's say three to four. Though there are two lies in here. Then... Time passes and people try to rewrite history, but we're not going to do a Wow. Wow. The irony here, man. <laughs> the irony here. She's literally twisting it and rewriting it as we speak. We can see it right here. It's right in front of our eyes. And she's now accusing others of uh, rewriting history. Wow, man. This is insane. history here. I tweeted Christ is King appropriately following a Bible verse when okay. I was 38 weeks pregnant. And I stand by following a history here. I tweeted Christ is King appropriately following a Bible verse when I was 38 weeks pregnant. And I stand by that proverb and I stand by my declaring Christ to be King as I have done many times okay, in so the past. Two things That's a lie and we have demonstrated it abundantly. Yeah, it's, Thereby. again, it's it, it just the entire thing is reminiscent of a bunch of Marxists coming up with a plan. Hey, we're going to wrap everything up in this slogan and any time and we've got we've got our agenda. It's on our website. Anytime someone objects to the agenda, what we're really after, we're going to say it's just because we're proclaiming Black Lives Matter. That's it. And what she do here? They're just they're they're, they're, they're coming after me because I said Christ is king. What a liar. What a complete liar. It's quite clear. There is just no denying it. What a liar. The Uralic tribe said, I understand why you don't like Candace for what she said, but in regard to the Ukraine conflict, she said the truth. Ukraine's corrupt and has committed genocide against ethnic Russians for eight years. And in return, Russia retaliated. First off, BS. <coughs> <coughs> Yes, Ukraine is corrupt. In fact, uh, Zelensky, um, his main, his main, um, one of his main points, his main talking points was that Ukraine is corrupt, and that he wants to come and uh, fight the corruption. Of course, this is something that lots of politicians say. Whether he did it in the end or not is a, is a different matter. But uh, that's in, that's a fact. Ukraine has been very corrupt in politics. And, and what's this? What's this got to do with anything? Yeah, it doesn't. Guess what? Russia is corrupt. Ukraine is corrupt. If I have to pick sides, well, I think one of those is way more likely to cause huge problems for the future of the world if they win. And therefore, just for pragmatic considerations, I don't want Russia to win that thing. I, I can't imagine a scenario where Ukraine is going to start uh, trying to gather more and more territory and become. The, the leading superpower seems exactly like the sort of thing Russia would do. So I don't want them to win. That's it. Yeah. When it comes to the part of um, has committed genocide against ethnic Russians for eight years, um, that's, that's a, that's a false propaganda. And um, by the way, this is the same talking point that Hitler used against Poland when he, before, uh, when he invaded Poland. He gave a dramatic speech about why he invaded Poland, and he specifically used the false propaganda that Poland was uh, persecuting and brutally killing uh, ethnic Germans, and that 
he he as the as the leader of the german people can no longer no longer take this brutality it is yeah. forced now to invade and to put an end to this putin did the very same thing yeah. he accused ukraine of committing a genocide against ethnic russians and said we are now forced to go in and to do this there is to this day no evidence that there was actually an act of genocide against ethnic Russians in Ukraine. There was fighting between uh, Russian-backed forces and the Ukrainian military, but a genocide was certainly not happening. Same thing with Poland and Germans. Very ironic. I'm mean, seriously. Does anyone does anyone think that that's why Putin is? Oh, I'm, I, I have to go in there and defend <laughs> the Russians defend in the Ukraine. Russians, I I care them. Them. And so, in order to go in there and defend them, I'm going to get countless Russians killed in this endless war. <clears throat> he gave a major speech when he declared the war. His major reasons when he declared the war were, aside from this whole false accusation, that Ukrainians are not real people, or not a real ethnic group, that they are actually uh, Russians. So he was he was directly denying their whole uh, national identity, uh, accused them of being descendants of Russians who then created a fake state. Uh, said that he that they should have never been given independence that uh russia should once again reach its its great expansion as it was you can find all of this in the transcripts of his declaration of war speech and so on anyway why would you bring this up now um <laughs> bro is getting waterboarded by erdogan yes the Jew who believes in Ezra said, how much ace can a canned ace can if a canned ace can can ace? This is a good point. This is a good point. Noam, MK, Noam MKW said, I got a new one. Sheikh Ali Manet the Jews. Sheikh Ali Manet the Jews. Sheikh Ali Manet the Jews. Sheikh Eliminate the Jews. Oh, my God. <laughs> God. <laughs> Ah, uh, now I get it. <laughs> Pretty bad. Peter and Grobler said, first time catching you live, please accept Jizya. I accept and you will thereby not be killed. Uh, Leather Strap said, what color markers should my wife be using to write on her whiteboard? Uh, I would say start with pink. Yeah. What do you say, David? Uh, I don't know. Pink's, uh, you want more contrast. Maybe purple. That's a good point. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a good point. Shake Mike Wingling said, what's going on with y'all Kufr style? First David Wood with the Fabio hair and now apostate uh, plumber with the Mario mustache. If this isn't Haram, it should be. <laughs> um, Kobe, Kobe the ball said, uh, X plus two equals 10. Solve for X is all you guys do. Love the channel. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Makes sense makes sense and x here in this case definitely too yeah um ayatollah khamenei gifted 10 memberships thank you appreciate it lots of new cult members now uh who are serving the zionist agenda suddenly the alaskans had criteria for ap not to like you one woman two black three disagree with him <laughs> he may have left islam but islam didn't leave him yeah, some ideas become ingrained in thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just can't have women speak, man. It's like yeah. terrible. White Lily, uh, speaking of women speaking, says, I have a long Arab name because of my dad, and one of those names is Mansour. Thanks, dad, not. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Yeah, if everyone uh, if everyone missed the discussion the other day, we're talking about Mansour at... Uh... At Speaker's Corner, and uh, AP heard it as Mansour, and yeah. now everyone knows Mansour as Mansour. <clears throat> it's because of the way Anthony is saying it. It was like Mansour. Oh yeah, Mansour. so so it's Anthony's weird pronunciations of stuff that uh, led <laughs> to that. But I don't. I think it's going to stick. For some reason, I think it's going to stick. And everywhere he, uh, all over the place, I think people are going to be rolling with uh, Mansour. Yes. Yes. That's true. That's um, what they do. That's what they do. It's because about it's that. basic Christian doctrine. You can go work as a falafel ball. 
Oh, that's, I mean, that's a good point as well. Mr. Bukhari said, if homosexuality is fine, why is urinating upon one another such a crime? These men have real problems. That's true. But can you blame them? It's what they do. This is true. Homosexuality should be fine. Urinating upon one another. This man has That's what they do. real problems. Yep. Yeah. Uh, notice said, hmm, AP going after a black female again. Is this your way of telling us you're averting? Hmm, how many times are you going to call them raisin heads like Mohammed or tell them not to speak because they are a woman? <laughs> this is a good point as well. Big Zaman said, when did Ick Fuentes go blackface? This is a very racist comment. Mossad's leather strap said, should we be attacking the great prophet Candace Owens who brought us great inspirational quotes like, blessed are the peacemakers? <laughs> And others like we are enslaved to the Jews. Man. It is a good point. She just come actually, up with powerful. I should clip that. Uh, I don't think anyone has ever pointed that out, but I should clip that and use it as a sound bite, probably. Which one? Where Andrew Tate said, um, Candace Owens said, Andy. blessed are the peacemakers. It's just like <laughs> Candace Owens said, blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed. And Candace Owens is very smart. She's very smart. Let's see. I wonder if I can find that. Did she say that to Pierce Morgan? Do you remember? What? That whole, that phrase. Candace Owens said, blessed are the peacemakers. Did she say that to Pierce Morgan? I don't what remember. What are you talking about? She said it in that tweet you, you've looked at okay. 900 times. No, say. I'm Absolutely. saying uh, Andrew Tate. Did he say that? to pierce morgan oh yeah, yeah i don't remember where so, he said that that was done though it, it was done but um i kind of it was dumb too i'm curious where he said that i want to find it candies candies uh -huh. i think i got it let's see <clears throat> else's son to go and die in a ditch somewhere for his interests and i don't like people who are not advocates for peace blessed are the peacemakers said candace who's far more intelligent than ben will ever be and she is completely right <laughs> good point andrew <laughs> thank you for lecturing us on intelligence as you attribute that quotation to candace owens one of the most famous quotes by anyone in history yeah um, people would die in a ditch somewhere for his interests. ap i don't like people who are not advocates what AP, it's just like it's just <laughs> like that time Andrew Tate said, Blessed are the peacemakers. Oh yeah. 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 That was powerful. When he was on Pierce Morgan that time, he was on that Pierce Morgan with that that one time and he said, uh, Blessed are the peacemakers. That was powerful stuff. Wow. Never heard that before. That's a that's he, 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 he is the top G. Yeah, yeah. Candace. Calling for someone else's son to go and die in a ditch somewhere for his interests. And I don't like people who are not advocates for peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, said Candace, who is far more intelligent than Ben will ever be. And she is completely right. He replied that rhetoric. Uh, Candace. Blessed are the peacemakers, said Candace. <laughs> uh, and then he speaks of intelligence. Man, 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 man. And seriously, no matter where you stand, but actually suggesting that Candace Owens is far more intelligent than Ben Shapiro, please. That's pretty wild. Don't exaggerate. <laughs> That's wild stuff. Don't exaggerate. John West says, take away from Nigerian stream, loud and proud. Oh, did you have a live stream today with Nigerian? You're darn right. Dude. What's his name? Nigerian dude? Frank. Nigerian his name perspective. is Frank. Nigerian Frank. perspective. Yeah. Yeah, I was on there earlier if anyone wants to check that out later. Nice. John was take away from Nigerian stream. Uh, Islam is a religion of peace. Uh, loud and proud. Islam is a religion of peace inaudibly through and aliving anyone that upsets the most sensitive Muslims. This is very, very Islamophobic. Hey, hey. Oh, it was actually what? cool because he was showing me like panel discussions between Christians and Muslims in Nigeria. And we were reacting to them. We were reacting to uh, Christians and Muslims. Uh, discussing whether they worship the same God and whether Islam is a religion of peace and so on. It was interesting stuff. Yeah. Somebody needs to put this, uh, somebody needs to make one of those quote things of, um, of this here and spread it online. <laughs> Power. <laughs> Blessed are the peacemakers. This quote no, first no. goes back to Ken Day Owens. No, put put it just like it is now. Blessed are the peacemakers in quotation marks, with 
the dash, then Candace Owens, and then another another dash under it, Andrew Tate. <laughs> like, it's, like it's Andrew Tate attributing it to Candace. Yeah, oh, that'd be funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Russell Brand made the same mistake with the anti-Semitism bill. Said they're making quoting the Bible illegal. Lots of people did the same thing because they jumped on it, listening to a few people instead of actually going through it. Again, which uh, took all sure. of a couple minutes. It took all of a couple minutes to read it. Yeah, but yeah, you are not willing to do that. But have you seen the section eight of it? You see, uh, Mossad's leather strap said, "Blessed are the brown shirts." <laughs> Think of all the really bad books they were <laughs> cleansing Germany of. <laughs> they were cleansing Germany of everything the Nazis didn't agree with, <laughs> and some of that were. Was things I don't agree with. So, can we really call them the bad guys here? <laughs> and if you disagree with me, I remind you that my grandfather, when he grew up, it was bad. So, yeah. shame on you. Blessed are the brown shirts. It's just what Philip Daniel in 2008, Candace, Candace sued her high school for racism based. She also created a website where she was, I think, doxing people or something. I don't know. Anyway, let's continue. Things about that. Why would you tweet that particular passage from the Bible, ending Christ yes. is King, on 14th of November 2023? What was your motivation? Yeah, happy to answer that question. So if... Wait a minute. How is, how is, ben, how is Pierce fact-checking this and then getting it wrong yeah. and repeating her version of the story? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It seems like he's all, he's even looking at it. And yeah, he said, gave the date, so it sounds he like he's date. agreeing with her. We just looked at it as well. <laughs> That's not what happened. She didn't make that, uh, she didn't post the Bible quote with Christ is King at the end. That was totally separate. Yeah, in fact, it would have been pretty good journalism right here to say, okay, here's the tweet. Where's that at? Because <laughs> I only found it over here in this one where you respond to him, and you did say that to him. Yeah. That's the takeaway. She clearly said it in a hostile way in response to Ben Shapiro. She didn't just say it on her own, and people then misconstrued it. That's her version, and she's lying about it. And she said she, it as a she said it as a follow up to yeah. her completely misrepresenting what he said. As hey, you're not allowed to quote the Bible here. Do not quote that. Yeah. What are you talking about? You can't tell me not to quote the Bible. The Bible's not about you. Gee, Christ is King. Nothing, nothing had nothing to do with what he was saying at all. This is gaslighting on a whole different the gaslighting, level. indeed. This is gaslighting. If people remember what was happening at that time, um, Ben Shapiro was caught uh, on a tape calling me faux sophisticated and some other stuff, you know, a disgrace, I think was the term. Oh, did and calling on a caught on a tape. It was recorded on a video where he where he was just asked by the audience about Candace and her and, despicable remarks. And how is <laughs> how is anything that she just said he said wrong? <laughs> I mean, if I were to think of the perfect phrase to describe Candace Owen, it would be so sophisticated. <laughs> 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 she does come across as sophisticated when you take a deeper look it doesn't it doesn't seem very sophisticated actually yeah yeah let's see let's see let's see if we can find that clip here and then the question is about Candace Owen oh, the, the, this wonderful channel of course the Young Turks have captured it immediately I think her behavior during this has been disgraceful yeah. Oh. Yeah, that is and then the question is about Candace Owens. I think her behavior during this has been disgraceful. Yeah. Yeah. I think that I think that her her faux sophistication on these particular issues has been ridiculous. It's not faux sophistication, it's ridiculous. Everybody can see the moves that she's making and the things that she's saying, and I find them distractible. Uh, this was not uh, caught. <laughs> He's speaking to an audience. That's it. what. What did he just say that he would not stand by, and it is not completely accurate? 
Like she's sitting there, she's sitting there. Hey, this guy uh, talking about Jewish rabbis being junk on Christian blood. I like that. Ah, Ben Shapiro said I'm so sophisticated. Shame on Unacceptable. Him unacceptable how dare he call me full sophisticated you have been she's just pathetic again i was 38 weeks pregnant about to give birth and my husband just told me every media person in the world is contacting you globally asking you to give a comment to say something it's obviously a very traumatizing thing to go through in the moment what in the world does this have to do now again with her status as a pregnant woman yes, I, yeah i was pregnant a it, it has the exact same status as my grandfather was a sharecropper <laughs> or whatever situation in fact i suffered more as a result of ben's words than all the jews during the holocaust why is nobody speaking about that when, when you're that pregnant and suddenly you're like i just don't want to deal with this drama i don't mean like trauma in the very leftist. I feel traumatized by this, yeah. but just it's a lot happening leading up to birth. Uh huh. So when you suffer from psychological trauma because somebody made a comment about you, because Ben Shapiro made a comment about you, that's totally, totally a fair point. But if uh, others say that they're traumatized by uh, by words, then that is, of course, totally this uh, pathetic leftist thing to do. But when when you do it, it's it's totally fine. When you do it, it's it's very legitimate. You are the victim. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and my husband told me to read the bible he said just read the bible you don't have to answer these media members you don't have to give a comment you don't have to say anything these things are all fickle it doesn't but the, matter but just to be this clear on the chronology because the, the video of ben saying what he said we said i think her, i think her behavior during this has been disgraceful without a doubt i think her that, became, sophistication, that came first yeah that came out on 15th of november 2023 but you had posted what you posted on the 14th of November. That's that's not correct. You have your timeline wrong. You had posted what you posted on the 14th of November. That's that's not correct. You have your timeline wrong. It was the video came first. So you were responding directly to the video. No, I look can I um, yeah, I'm trying to finish the story, but you just have your just so you know chronologically you have it wrong. His insult came first. I think it was on the 12th the insult came. Well, you made aware um, of the insult because it and then did it I become I found out public? on Twitter with everybody else. She's just shooting us off in the foot right now actually. Yeah, but he's he's if he's doing what I think he's doing, he's trying to make it clear that her quoting "Blessed are the peacemakers" and and you know can't serve God in money is a response yes. to him because it is. And That's so, what and so <laughs> yeah, he's trying to corner her to get her to say, yeah, that was a response to that video clip. So then he can say, okay, so when he responds and you say, what? This isn't about you. It was about him. <laughs> And you were responding to the Daily Wire because she's trying. She's clearly trying to make it sound like, you know, I'm just pregnant. I'm just pregnant, and I'm thinking about stuff. And I'm like, yeah, bless her to the peacemakers, because my husband told me to read the Bible. So I'm reading the Bible, and I read, bless her to the peacemakers. You can't serve both God and money. So I decided to just tweet that for no no reason that's connected at all to Ben Shapiro. And then Ben Shapiro responds to me, and I'm like, what? He's got a problem with me quoting the Bible like my husband told me to do? What? Because yeah, so that's clearly what's going on because the actual the actual course of events, Ben disses her, and then she responds, and then he responds by saying, Hey, if you have a problem, if you think you're you know, there's a conflict with you serving God and working here, you have the ability to quit, you have the freedom to do that. And then her, what you've got a problem with me quoting the Bible? So yeah, I think it's obvious. I think it's obvious what happened. It's pretty straightforward, and this is this is just massive gaslighting. That's what it is. Oh, oh wait, wait, I just contradicted myself. Wait, but I have to point out that I was pregnant at that time, and uh, I was going through a difficulty. Did I mention my grandfather in all this? <laughs> my grandfather feels because it was very segregated bad. back then. I mean, seriously, it was segregated. And and since my grandfather um, has was also pregnant at that time, uh, and he's not taking this very well. <laughs> I, it was just trending, you know. And um, so just to go back into it, my husband told me to read the Bible and to realize that these things are fickle, and that all of these journalists that were asking me to respond to them are doing it because all they want is clicks and money, mm -hmm. and they want you, you know, they want to use you for a moment that's not going to matter in the scheme of things in your life. And so I wanted to 
respond to all of these media members by saying that I'm calling for I'm calling for peace. No. Uh -huh. So it was it was a response. Yeah. Yeah. To to of other course, people, not to Ben Shapiro, of, not to Ben Shapiro. But it was a response to the to the to what to that situation. You weren't just making that. Well, I'm I'm, I'm not buying this. I mean, she's getting paid by the Daily Wire. What yeah. these journalists who are contacting you for comment, they're trying to pay you, and you're saying, No, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be paid by you. I serve God. Yeah, but at the time my grandfather Brother, trying to rewrite the history. My grandfather was just uh, beaten at that time and when he was pregnant. And at that same time I was also pregnant. And I was kind of traumatized, so I don't remember everything very well. No crisis, king of my heart. I don't need. I don't need this right now. So that was it. And, and she's even. She's even. Yeah, even there. It's oh. So I was just saying, Christ is king in my heart, so I don't need this stuff. She said the Christ is king part directly to Ben Shapiro. That was not about the media. That was not yeah. about the media. Come on. This is there, once again, news. here is the lie. Look, here is a clear lie. This statement is clearly a lie. Calling for peace. No crisis, king of my heart. I don't need. I don't need this right now. That's not what happened. She said that she didn't say that phrase. She didn't type that phrase. She only used it once. Ben Shapiro responded to her quoting the Bible. She used it at him. She said the phrase at him. She didn't say it to yeah. herself. And so, guys, those of you who are watching, going, "What? There's nothing wrong with. There's nothing wrong with it." Even if you're saying, even if you think there's absolutely. She's absolutely fine saying Christ is king to Ben Shapiro in response to him, what he said. If you think that's totally fine, what she, the chain of events that she's describing here, it's not how it happened. She's acting like she was just saying, because Christ is king in my heart. And then Ben Shapiro flips out on her and attacks her and threatened and tells her she needs to quit over saying Christ is king. That's all, it's false. That's false. And then the question is about him. That's true. It's true. This uh, is made for gripers. This is true. It's true. It's true. Let's see. Blessed. Blessed are the peacemakers. Hmm. What? Nothing. So that was it. When you appeared on Tucker Carlson on the 16th of November, you said, I'll, I will say I'm not going to respond with the same ad hominem attack. Um, but you yeah. also told him that day that that was when you first saw the video. Mm, I didn't tell him I first saw the video on Tucker Carlson. What do you... I don't understand your question. What, I told Tucker I saw the video that on you, Tucker Carlson? No, no, that you had seen the video for the first time that morning. That I saw the video trending yeah, I'm just on trying, Twitter, yeah, not I'm, the morning yeah. of Tucker's interview. Sorry, I'm just trying, I, I don't to, work, know I'm just trying to work out the the exact correct chronology. Yeah, I, I can help you. Yeah. So you saw. I would think that's pro that's a problem if she's helping with it. She's not very reliable, as we can see. In the video one, on on Twitter, and then you, on Twitter, yes. Yeah. And then you put then, out the passage from the Bible as a reaction to seeing the video. He's still trying to. He's still trying to yes, get her. So to maybe it was twenty-four hours. Say that was the reason for it, because, guys, if it's not clear what's going on here, she, she, she just posted, said yes. Yeah, she says the blessing of the peacemakers. She's saying that was a response to general general media requests and so on. And you know, I'm really pregnant at this time, and therefore, but she, but she even just said that it was a response to seeing the video. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. No, it's, um, yeah. So she's representing what ha like the blessed of the peacemakers thing as a response to the media. And so if, because if she's just responding to the media, guys, I'm pregnant. I'm trying to focus. I'm trying to focus here. And so I'm responding to the media. And then Ben jumps in and says, why don't you quit? Well, Ben's a jerk and he's responding to her and she's just quoting the Bible to a bunch of uh, random journalists. Whereas if she saw the video and she's responding to Ben Shapiro and then Ben and uh, she's talking about the Daily Wire, then Ben saying, hey, if you have a problem with the Daily Wire, you it's very easy to just quit. And then her flipping out over that. So you can't do that because I'm quoting the Bible. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so she's trying. She's yeah, this is 
This is stupid. <laughs> this is yeah, guys. This is this is textbook gaslighting. Textbook yeah. gaslighting. Yeah. Trying to change, trying to change the history to make yourself look like the good one here. Yeah, but she was pregnant. Yeah. You can't. So we have, to, we have to let her slide. Something with the grandfather as well. Her yeah. grandfather was pregnant. Yes. Yeah. Hours later, after that, mm. whatever one was contacting me for comment, I gave the media no comment. So if you look on all the articles, there, mm. whatever one was, yeah. yes, like put I out the passage from the Bible on on Twitter, and then on you, Twitter, yes, yeah. and then you put then, out the passage from the Bible as a reaction to seeing the video. Yes, like I said, twenty maybe it was twenty four hours later after that, mm. whatever one was contacting me for comment, I gave the media no comment. So if you look on all the articles, there was no comment given to me at that mm. time about anything because I decided that peace was the best strategy forward. Tucker was booked that day, but he had booked me six weeks in advance. That was mm. just his luck that that whole incident took place. Right. Um, you know, they knew I was going on his show. He books way out in advance. So it just happened to be his luck or misfortune, whichever way you look at it, that that was going on at the same time. So in, in the build up to this, you'd already made it clear that you, or you'd said on Twitter on November the 3rd, no government anywhere has a right to commit a genocide ever. There is no justification yeah. for a genocide. I can't believe this even needs to be said or is even considered the least bit controversial to state. You didn't say what you were talking about in that tweet, but it was widely assumed to be Gaza and what Israel was doing in Gaza. Is that correct? Were you talking about Israel there? No, I was talking no, about Nazi Germany. <laughs> are, are you kidding? She actually just said no. Guys, there's a there's a life lesson here. Uh, don't say exactly what you're talking about. Don't make it clear. Like, leave enough wiggle room that if you get called out for something later on, you can say, "What? I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about something completely different." Smart. She just said no. <laughs> well, I'm sure he's going to ask her then. Well, what what are you talking about? Uh, is she is she seriously going to say no? I was just making a generalized comment that it's wrong to. I'm, cur side. I'm curious as to what she will say, but obviously she was not talking about I'm Gaza. waiting. I want to know what she's going to say she meant by that. <laughs> or, 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 or if it's going to be, look, I was pregnant and just thinking about the life that's about to come out of me, I was just thinking, you know, it would be wrong to genocide a little baby like this. So I just said, <laughs> hey, government should never be allowed to commit genocide. <laughs> and I was also thinking about my grandfather. I was thinking about my, my dear grandfather <laughs> and how... If there had been a genocide, then he could have been in it. So I was just thinking, it's wrong to commit genocide. So I said it on Twitter. <laughs> to state, you didn't say what you were talking about in that tweet, but it was widely assumed to be Gaza and what Israel was doing in Gaza. Is that correct? Were you talking about Israel there? No, actually, when I wrote that tweet, if you look right before that tweet, I had retweeted and liked something from a journalist named Yashar Ali. He had shared a clip of a congressman, Brian Mast, who got up on a platform and said that there's no such thing as an innocent Palestinian life. That is despicable genocidal language. And um, I am paraphrasing here, but Yashar Ali said, and he's pro-Israel, by the way, if I'm, yeah. if I'm judging by what he puts online, he said, can we all just admit that this language is unacceptable? And I tweeted that no government in the world, and I, I was actually commenting on America, um, the genocide is all okay. I'm gonna go and check that out. I'm pretty sure that was a standalone tweet by her. I could be wrong, but let's see. Um, Candace Owens, it would also, I mean, state genocide. Let's saying see. there are no innocent Palestinians is not the same thing as calling for genocide. Uh, yeah, I could, I could, I could say, I mean, I could say there, none of us are innocent. We've all done wrong things. That wouldn't be calling for us all to be killed. <sighs> Here. She's not responding to anyone. It's a standalone like stand tweet. Yeah, it's a standalone tweet. Man, man, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, no basically. government anywhere has a right to commit a genocide ever. There is no justification for a genocide. I, I can't believe this even needs to be said or is even considered the least bit controversial to state. So, guys, here, here she says that she's responding to someone. This is a response to someone else who said there are no innocent Palestinians. Just so everyone knows, I disagree. I disagree. But she says she's responding to someone who said 
There are no innocent Palestinians. And she's she's saying, well, that sounds like a call for genocide. It doesn't to me. I could say there's no innocent. I mean, there's no innocent Russia. You could say whatever you could say whatever you want. Um, it doesn't mean you're calling for genocide or for people to be exterminated. But she says here that in, here she's responding to someone who said there are no innocent Palestinians. And she responds, no government anywhere has a right to commit genocide ever. What's she talking about? It's not a, go it's not a government calling for <laughs> committing genocide. What are you talking about? Guys, I mean, be, be realistic here. Is she saying that Israel's committing genocide here? I, I'm, I'm looking what it through sounds the comments, like. by the way. Uh, I'm looking through the comments, which I can't see here. I have to use an uh, incognito tab here to open her stuff because I'm blocked. <laughs> but I'm looking through the comments um, through an alternative account. And everyone in the comments, literally everyone in the comments, perceives this as um, as accusing Israel of genocide and saying uh, they shouldn't be committing a genocide. It's like uh, everyone in the comments is thinking the same thing. I don't see a single person who says, "Oh yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, I definitely agree with that." As a, as an Israeli, I am pro-Israel, and I definitely no. Everyone is perceiving this as an accusation against Israel, and uh, again. This is a standalone tweet. It's not a response to anything, technically speaking. Always wrong. And so, by the way, even if I was talking about Israel or I was talking about Palestine, that statement should hold. No, I there is I so spineless, man. Just, just acknowledge. Just, just stand behind what you say. What a coward. No okay, just justification the, no, ever agree, in the agree, world but, but for, the for record, genocide. So I, agree, but, I was very surprised to see that tweet go viral and people so angry about it. Uh, I was actually overseas at the moment. I was in the UK. And so it seemed very strange to me that people would have a problem with it no matter what side you're on. But in that particular moment, I was talking about Brian Mass and on my show, my very next show, I clarified that. And, and uh, do you think, for the record, that what Israel's... Oh, the the, the, yeah, the question isn't coming. Yeah, down, did but... you hear what she just said? Oh, what? Why would it be controversial to say that uh, no government should ever uh, engage in genocide? I don't see why that's controversial. Did because you're that? clearly saying that Israel was, was committing genocide. Canada. I mean, oh gosh, this is pathetic. I don't know. We pathetic. recently talked about um, the fallacy. Which fallacy was that? The oh, the uh, gosh, my brain is fried. The, the Mott and the Mott, the Mott and, and Bailey, Bailey or, or yeah, gosh, Mott, my, I don't even know the name of a fallacy. The Mott, Mott and Bailey, I think. Yeah. Fallacy. <laughs> Mott and Bailey fallacy. We, we, and we began talking about that because Mohammed Tejab presented the fallacy in the wrong way. And we talked about it and actually um, talked about the correct way that the fallacy is done. Isn't that what she's doing here right now? She's um, basically saying, um, she is yeah yeah so way, yeah she's being accused of saying that israel's committing genocide and then she retreats to what i'm just saying genocide is wrong. i'm not saying anything about what anyone's doing yes, yes. i'm just saying that genocide is wrong how's that controversial yeah precisely precisely De thereby acting as if um people have a problem with the statement genocide is wrong that's not what people have a problem with people have a problem with what you're implying there Yes. And here is also um, here you can see directly the fallacy being committed on a tweet later on. She says, I said something along these lines and caused an absolute Twitter firestorm. I think it was genocide, no matter which government advocates for it is always wrong. Tread carefully, very carefully straight, stating the obvious moral truth. You're attacking me just for stating that genocide is wrong. Yeah. She's here making it look like people are attacking her because she's saying genocide is wrong. That's not what happened. This is deception. That's what. Ha that's not what happened. With uh, saying genocide is wrong, no matter who does it, it was clearly, clearly stated in such a way that almost every single person reading it perceived that as Israel committing a genocide. That's, yeah, that's so. what the controversy was about. It wasn't about the statement uh, itself. Yeah, we'd have to say, we'd have to say, if Candace means what she claims she means in her statements and her tweets, she's like the one thing you could say about her is she's a good communicator in terms of being able to just rattle things off and so on. If she means what she says she means in her tweets, she's a, she's a terrible communicator. 
like awful, yeah. like beyond awful. She keeps saying things that are being completely misinterpreted by all of her followers. But is she worse than Allah? No, was... she wouldn't be that bad. The, okay. Okay. If Islam is true, the worst communicators ever are Allah. He's the worst. Next, Muhammad. Third, Jesus. And fourth, Candace. Candace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has been doing constitutes genocide. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, Let's go back for the record. Brian Mass, and on my Here show, my very next show, I clarified that. And, and do you think, for the record, that what Israel's been doing constitutes. Good job, Pierce. Well, what I've been having trouble is all of the people that are pro Israel and say it's not a genocide won't tell me what is a genocide. It will tell you exactly what a genocide is. What idiot won't tell you what a genocide is? Freaking retarded. <laughs> <laughs> but notice she wouldn't answer. She wouldn't say, no, I'm not saying that it's a genocide. What kind of a response? What kind of logic is this, man? Wow. I, I don't I haven't even heard something like this from Muslim apologists, to be honest. Slimy and illogical. Well, yeah. what I've been having trouble is all of the people that are pro-Israel and say it's not a genocide won't tell me what is a genocide. <laughs> How many, what percentage of a population has to be killed before we can use the word genocide? So <laughs> Okay, do you think what is happening is a genocide? Yes or no? Well, um, the, the key... Do, oh, go pro pro Israel people are not telling us uh, what is a genocide, you know, when they're denying that it is a genocide. So, yeah, so what is a genocide, really? Um, completely irrelevant, man. Yeah, the key <laughs> factor, Candace, Candace <laughs> is intent, is the intent to commit genocide, to wipe out a an entire population or some significant portion of the population specifically to wipe out that people group. So hunting down terrorists and trying to get your hostages back and people dying as collateral damage in that effort, that's no one's definition of genocide except for you and a bunch of like morons on college campuses. Like that's, that's, that's no, that's no one's definition of genocide. Just trying to trying to get your hostages back and trying to hunt down the terrorists who killed a bunch of your people. And oh, there, there are some people dying as collateral damage. That's no one's definition of genocide ever, except a bunch of modern idiots who are just looking for anything to attack Israel with. This is the dishonesty of Kenneth Owens here. Her actual response to this question is, yes, I think it's a genocide. But her but the way she says it as well um are those pro-israel people who say who don't say who don't think that there is a genocide haven't explained to me yet what they understand from genocide uh, you don't have to go that long just say it by that logic it looks like you're saying yes there is a genocide taking place why can't you just say it this is how she talks all the time she's She's insecure, terrified of making just of just saying what she actually thinks. And then she gaslights people. Yeah, so think about this. Like everyone's like, oh, you accused Israel of genocide. That's messed up. No, I didn't do that. That was just a random response to some some guy. I it, it's not an actual response because you know it wasn't a response, but that's what was in my head at the time because you know i was pregnant and that's what was going on in my head and i was thinking about my my long lost grandfather and i was thinking about all this and i put this there and it was just a response to this and then pierce 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 is actually doing a good job here he actually oh, okay so just to clarify do you think israel's committing just well they won't tell me what genocide is so i don't even know i don't even know if it's genocide because they won't tell me what genocide is no one, no one will tell me. I'm, I'm going around. Will anyone tell me what genocide is? And no one will tell me, Pierce. So how can I even know if it's genocide if no one will tell me what genocide is? By the way, uh, I want to quickly get back to this thing because I wanted to look at this um, uh, because people were talking about it before. We kind of uh, went through this topic already, the whole Christ is King topic. And some people still say Andrew Claven said uh, saying Christ is King is anti-Semitic. So I want to I want to quickly have a look at this clip uh, to just point out that that's not not at all what he said, and that he said what yeah. we are also pretty much saying. 
So yeah, let's, 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 now, Jesus is Lord, and every knee shall bow, and every tongue yeah. confesses Jesus is Lord. When I did this, by the way, the priest who baptized me said, "You know, Christians won't accept you. They'll, you'll still be a Jew." And I said, "Well, I am. A, that's my race. I'm a Jew. I'm proud of my race. It's a, it's a great race. It's done many, many great things, including write the Bible. And you know, I am a Jew. But that hasn't happened at all. Christians have welcomed me with open arms, except this Christ the King anti-Semitic crowd. Christ is the King." And one day, every knee will bow and recognize it because he's not just my king, he's king of the universe. But when you... Hey, but yeah, go, yeah, that's a good place to pause. Think he's talking about a specific crowd, the groiper type crowd. Uh, he says, Christians in general have no problem with me being Jewish ethnically and being a Christian. They don't have any problem with that. He says, there's one group that still has a problem with me anyway because of my ethnicity. And that's these guys who are going around with the uh, America first, Christ is King slogan. They still have a problem with me because of my ethnicity. In other, why? Because they're white nationalists too. They've got a problem with you being Jewish. They're white nationalists. They want a pure white Catholic nation. They're going to have a problem with you anyway. Same yeah. as they'll have a problem, uh, same as they'll have a problem with uh, uh, Hispanic or black or whatever. Christian being part of their white nation. They're going to have a problem with you anyway. So he's pointing out, these guys are saying Christ is king. They're also racist. Who is that one Catholic guy? Um, that Catholic apologist, preacher, YouTube guy, yeah. well-known. He made a response to Nick Fuentes. What's his name again? Um, you know there are only very few, very well-known, very popular Catholic. Uh, I'm trying apologies. to distinguish. My brain is fried right now. Again, I had a problem remembering Trent the name Horn. of a fellow. Trent. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah Trent Horn. Counselor uh, Trent. Trent Horn. Um, it's at some point talked about Nick Fuentes and how Nick Fuentes is uh, very problematic, um, and then he engages in certain things such as. Holocaust revisionism and Holocaust denial. Nick Fuentes made a response to that later on, reviewing it <clears throat> in a very angry and very vile way. And um, his response was basically, at some point, he just very openly descended into and 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 why is Trent Horn doing this? Why is Trent Horn now, um, you know, attacking me because of because of my denial of the Holocaust? Because he's a Jew. Because he's a Jew. Because he's a Jew. And that's what they do. That's what they do. <laughs> that's what the Jews do. It doesn't matter if they're Christian, if they if they acknowledge Christ or not. They are still Jews. That was the that was the the thing that the, the path that he was going. Yeah, it was powerful. And that's their attitude. That that's it's it's funny because that's their attitude. This is the the, the neo-Nazi groiper attitude. When somebody calls them out. And they are of Jewish origin, even if they believe in Christianity, to them, that person is still a Jew, which is why they are evil. And they actually believe things because we see them quoting this, that Jews, one, they're involved in all these conspiracies, and two, they're liars and they lie about what they actually believe and so on. And therefore, if you got someone like Clavin, they think, they think yeah, it's, just, it's all a plot. It's a plot to infiltrate us and spy out, spy out what's going on and get your Jew ideas in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You use that phrase to mean that. So uh, here quickly to point out, Andrew Claven here um, cannot be saying that Christ is king. The phrase is anti-Semitic because he himself is saying it directly. Right. He here. says king of kings. <laughs> oh. Christians have welcomed me with open arms, except this Christ the King, anti-Semitic crowd. Christ is the King, and one day every knee will bow and recognize it because he's not just my King, he's King of the universe. So he, he just said Christ is the King. <laughs> Christ, is, he's King of the universe. So he, <laughs> he obviously can't be saying that proclaiming Christ is King is anti-Semitic. He's taught, he's saying exactly, exactly what we're saying. It's how, it's how it's being used and by whom, for what purpose, right? It's the same thing. Black Lives Matter. True statement. 
if it's being used by some Marxists to smuggle in ideas and make them impervious to criticism, make really bad ideas impervious to criticism, we got a problem here. We got a problem. Yeah. This is the only example that these groypers go to and they say, no, Andrew Claven, he clearly said it is anti-Semitic. Okay, uh, why in the world would he himself say the phrase and also add to it in such a way, in such a proud way, if he actually thought that it is anti-Semitic and he has a problem with anti-Semitism? <laughs> but when you use that phrase to mean that God has abandoned his chosen people, the Jews, through whom he came into this world incarnate, and that he's broken his promises, his covenant with the Jews. You are quoting scripture like Satan does in the Bible. You are quoting scripture to your purposes. And that to me is specifically wicked. You know, when you spit that phrase at Ben Shapiro. He said wicked, by the way, not Wiccan. Stop thinking about Wiccans all the time. Um, this is an aspect where people might have a disagreement with. But still, he does. He's not saying that this is that the phrase itself is anti-Semitic. And now here is the most relevant part, I think. Ben Shapiro, my friend, Ben Shapiro. And, and you know, I un I understand this. All every all of you who love Ben, and I love Ben, and Jordan Peterson, you all want to see them find Jesus because you know what joy and, and freedom that gives you, and and you certainly feel that it alters your relationship with God. But when I think about this, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, and I know some people will disagree with this, but I, life is not a game show where you guess the name of God and, and you get to go to heaven. Honk, you know, they ask, the name is Jesus. Uh, I look at Ben's life and I think if, if Ben were to embrace Jesus Christ, it would cause devastation to his family, to the people who love him, to the people who listen to him, to his position in the world. I just have this feeling that God has put this guy where he wants him to do what he wants him to do. And as you know, I feel that you know, the Jews were not abandoned by God. So there's another aspect where people might have a disagreement with. Yeah, again. there's a there's a legitimate area for disagreement. <laughs> like yeah. as a Christian, you'd say, wait, yeah, I got to preach the gospel to everybody. Gentile, Jew, Muslim, we're going to preach the gospel to everyone. There's there's that sort of thing where because it act, it sounds like he's saying, no, 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 these guys are these guys are fine. These guys are fine. Uh, and you never need to have those those kinds of d discussions with them because they're they're good. Uh, you could However, be you, you you could definitely be a Christian and say no, I got a problem with that. I believe that we need to preach the gospel to everyone, but that's not never, the, that's not the area that people focus on, right? That's not the area that people focus on. Yeah. However, I was just saying. However, I thought you would continue with that, but um, yeah, the, the, you might have disagreements with his thinking yeah. on whether uh, on 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 that whole part of Ben Shapiro staying mm -hmm. Jewish or con converted to Christianity. Because I, I would assume as a non-Christian, I say it would also always be assumed that uh, for every person becoming a Christian would be the better option. Um, however, with all the disagreements that you can have on this way of thinking, nowhere at all does he imply that the phrase Christ is King is anti-Semitic. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the point. If you have a criticism, at least let it be a criticism of something he's actually claiming. And then yeah. say, hey, here's why you're wrong. You're wrong about this. When it's when this guy says Jesus is king of kings and lord of the lords, and he's king of the universe, and you say he's this guy's saying, Oh, if you say Christ is king, then you're uh you're a, a racist anti-Semite or something like that. It's just false. You're it's a you're straw manning him. Um, I'm looking for a specific thing here where I think Nick Fuentes actually in his response to Trent Horn. Let's see. Let's see here. Wait a minute. This guy's just such such a weirdo. They they just showed it. They just tried to show up. Him and Jake Shields just uh, apparently tried to show up to something and got removed by security. Oh, by the to the Turning Point USA. Yeah, uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that while we were live. I was glancing at Twitter. Does Trent Horn call out with the same seriousness on the basis of their being Jewish? The Bolsheviks, liberals, Zionists? Does he talk about how Jews have perpetrated? 
the Bolsheviks. Um, Nick, it is the year is 2024. <laughs> Where's Trent Horn calling out the Bolsheviks? <laughs> this is just. I, mean, I searched his entire Twitter feed. I did not find him once calling out the Bolsheviks. Is he saying that Bolsheviks are good? And they're the right? Huh? The Bolsheviks are trying to <laughs> overthrow everything in Russia that made Russia great. They are anti-monarchy. They want to install a system named communism. <laughs> And I mean, seriously, I'm sitting here in front of my green screen and I can't find one place any of these guys is talking about the Bolsheviks. <laughs> this is just, can you be any more stereotypical of a neo-Nazi that you actually talk about Bolsheviks here in the year 2024? Man. Crimes against Christians. Is there a word for denying some of the atrocities perpetrated by Jews or conspiracies or assassinations? But Jews, without any hesitation, they feel no reluctance to get in your face with the most entitlement, with arrogance and pompousness, and stick their fingers in your face and say, you're an anti-Semite, you're a Holocaust denier, that's very evil, what about Hitler? Shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. I'm so sick of it. And here's the crux of it. I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic, So what Dude, I am obligated to see there is a if this were coming from someone else, there's a possible <laughs> legitimate issue. Whereas anytime there's any criticism of anything Israel does, someone says, ah, you're being anti-Semitic. That's that's legitimate, right? You can't just you can't block a legitimate criticism by saying by just calling it anti-Semitic because so just to just to do away with it. It's freaking a, a neo-Nazi saying this stuff. Who wants Jews wiped out? Who's <laughs> saying, ah, I came every time I start talking about everything being a Jewish conspiracy and, the, and denying the Holocaust, they start complaining that I'm anti Semitic just because I want a white Catholic nation and I can't stand Jews and I want Jews wiped out. Just I, I, come on. And they're calling me anti Semitic. Shut up. Shut up. Uh, uh, to that, if I were Jewish, I'd be responding, uh, no, I will not shut up. Oh, here, here we have another one. I don't want to play too much of this expert uh, here who has similarities to Jeffrey Dahmer uh, and who likes little boys, apparently. But um, this is the crowd that Candace and others have amassed, who, ha who are, by the way, leading that whole political, that political abuse of the phrase Christ is King in order to, to deceive other Christians and attack Jews. Oh, this is what they do. Oh, people are people are commenting on like that he looks twelve and his his mustache sucks and it's like it's correct like he's got his mustache it just looks weird but without it he looks like a twelve year old but with it he looks like a twelve year old who drew a mustache on or something so I don't I don't know it's weird <laughs> awkward situation it's a weird situation well I just saw this here uh, as you are describing it I was just looking through comments and saw this. <laughs> 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 oh. she says hey i'm quoting the bible pal when a when a christian talks you shut up and you listen okay because we're right when a christian talks when a christian quotes the bible in america you sit your ass down jew boy oh and and don't you call me anti-semitic yeah i'm not anti-semitic i'm not anti-semitic you jew boy sit down yeah, shut up Um, Kenneth Owens has also been in contact with, with Nick I Flint and, um, very nicely interacting with him. There is an occult element. That looks like a, that looks like a, a drunk 12 year And specifically among the Jews. So many of the people that are perpetrating the lies and the destruction on the country, they are evildoers. They are people that worship false gods. They are people that practice magic or rituals or whatever and more than anything those people need to be when we take power they need to be given the death penalty straight up and i'm far more concerned about that than i am about even non-white people or mass migration 
these people that are that are communing with demons and engaging in this sort of witchcraft and stuff, and these people that are suppressing the name Christ and suppressing Christianity, they must be absolutely annihilated when we take power. This is God's country. This is Jesus's country. This is not the domain of atheists or devil worshippers or perfidious Jews. This is Christ's country. This is the issue. He's the, the, he, he just talked, talked about abuse. rising to power and annihilating people. Yeah, rising to power and uh, immediately starting to put people to death whom he suspects of uh, Jewish people, whom he suspects of devil worship and uh, of attacking Christianity. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let this guy, <laughs> let this, give this guy the political power to decide whom to execute. Smart, <laughs> smart, 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 smart. Yeah. Fortunately, fortunately, does anyone, anyone on the planet besides his like followers, ever think this guy's going to have any power to do anything. He can't even walk into a meeting with an MMA fighter without getting kicked out. I mean, I see stuff like this, and then I have occasionally people come here and are like, actually, you're misrepresenting Nick Fuentes. He is just concerned, and he's a... He's, he's just concerned, good, and he, that's he's why bad. he wants to exterminate people who disagree yeah. with him. Yeah. Nick Fuentes is... A freaking loser. And so is anyone, anyone who takes them seriously. You're a bunch of freaking losers. Anyway. Yeah. Clowns, bunch of walking clown emojis, losers. Uh, Reese's Vitz said Jesus was a Jew. No, you can't say that. Nick Fuentes doesn't accept this. <laughs> not, not my Jesus that I'm talking about here. And when I get to power in my fantasies, I'm going to exterminate anyone who says something like that. So, <laughs> and if I find the Jewish Jesus, he will be put to death first. Because my Jews, my, my Jesus was not Jewish. <laughs> wow, God. What Israel's been doing constitutes genocide. Well, what I've been having trouble is all of the people that are pro-Israel and say it's not a genocide won't tell me what is a genocide. Shut up. How many, well, what percentage sorry. of the population has to be killed before we can use the word genocide? It's a funny little thing. Uh, <laughs> they won't tell you. They won't. <laughs> and, and guess what, Candace? The percentage <laughs> of the population, that's not the issue. If you were at war with a place and you just kept being at war with them and 50% of the opponent's population was eliminated because of this war, it wouldn't be genocide unless the intent was to wipe out a people group, right? It's, you can't be, oh, we're, we're just fighting a war here and I'm fighting a war and we're dropping bombs on each other and a, a bunch of your people died. It still comes down to the intent. There's an element of intent. Are you trying to wipe out a people group specifically because of, because the, of, of that group? It's not about a percentage. Guess what? You could intend, you could intend to wipe out a population because of their ethnicity and fail miserably it could still you could still have, have plotted a genocide and just failed completely uh so this isn't about per, this isn't about percentages you could kill you could kill like a, a, a couple of people and your intent was genocide or you could kill half the population and your intent wasn't genocide at all it's like it's like terrorism um, this remind this reminds me of that actually. Like whenever someone would go out and mass murder people, and we get the the Muslim commentators going, "Oh, but they don't call it terrorism because it's not a Muslim." If the person had no ideological agenda and wasn't trying to defend any point, he's just mass murdering. Then it's mass murder. If you say, "Oh, I'm doing this because of my political affiliation or something like," that, okay, then it's terrorism. There are definitions that have meanings. That's why you don't just toss these terms around. And so. If you are calling something genocide and you say that's genocide, then the question is, okay, that doesn't fit anyone's definition of genocide. Uh, again, apart from a bunch of like more on college students and so on. So give us your definition of genocide that would fit what Israel is actually doing. Because if you're going to say that genocide is going after her, trying to get your hostages back and trying to hunt down the terrorists who just killed a bunch of your people, please say that. Please say that. But she won't. They, she won't tell me, AP. I just keep trying and asking her, but she won't tell me what, what genocide is. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter how many people die. It's um, it's really that clear. And yes, it might sound uh, harsh, but that's really how it is. Um, it doesn't matter how high the number of deaths is. 
that doesn't have any bearing on whether it is a genocide or not. It could be that there is a very high number of deaths and that there is a very high number of civilian casualties, which there, there is no extraordinary number of civilian casualties in this, in this war. It could be that there is a very high number, but that the high number can be explained as a result of, um, of necessary or of, uh, of, of deaths that could not be avoided. What matters is intent here. And there is a very, very specific concept of genocidal intent when determining whether somebody's whether whether a party is committing a genocide or not. So it doesn't matter what what number you are referring to. I won't tell you what constitutes genocide. So I would like a clear understanding of how many go read a book. Palestinians have to die before we are allowed to term it a genocide. All of the experts can't agree on what a genocide actually is, but they love to float around the world the word on virtually every other issue. You know, I had no, Rabbi they don't. on my show on one of my last shows. Um, <laughs> she no. just doesn't know what the, what the, she just doesn't understand what the topic. idiot. She's sounding really, really, really stupid. Down, if you actually sat down and tried to understand the topic, you would probably get to a proper conclusion. In fact, Destiny studied this very well. She, he even he even sat down and corrected and schooled Norman Finkelstein, who was pride, prouding, proudly declaring himself uh, an expert on this topic, schooled the guy, got the approval of Benny Morris <laughs> and many others, upon which Norman Finkelstein then became very angry at him and started insulting him on during the debate and also later on on Twitter for weeks to come. Maybe she could go and sit down with him. She is in contact with Destiny. Go sit down with him and to let him explain to you what a genocide is. Yeah, listen to her. All the, all the experts are just tossing this term. No, they're not. <laughs> I don't recall. I don't recall this being this ongoing issue where everyone just tosses around genocide left and right. That, that, that happened recently that everyone starts tossing around the term genocide because Israel was involved. Yeah. So I was on the Daily Wire and I asked him that question pointedly, what is genocide? Mm. Let us know, experts, what yeah. percentage of the population yeah. of Palestinians has to be killed before we are allowed to say that it's genocide. What I can tell you... you... You are allowed to say that it is a genocide. That just doesn't mean it's a genocide. That's just the problem here. Candace, she's got to deal with it. Is I am completely uncomfortable and utterly against the amount of Palestinian innocent lives that have been lost in this conflict, particularly children. And any person who is fearful of stating... Okay. Uh, Bailey, I am, Martin Bailey. I am she also... You I'm see also, that? Genocide, uh, genocide. Yeah. Hey, is it genocide? I'm just against yeah. children. Though. I'm, let, let's see. Let's see what she's in this conflict. The amount of I am completely uncomfortable and utterly against the amount of Palestinian innocent lives that have been lost in this conflict. Yes, I agree with her completely. I agree with her completely. I'm also very uncomfortable and very much against <laughs> the number of. Um, what did she say? Of innocent lives, yeah. innocent Palestinian lives that have been lost during this war. Ah, uh, yes, yes, Candace, I agree with you. I am also entirely uncomfortable and entirely against the number of innocent Palestinians who's who have lost their lives in this war. Okay, that doesn't say anything, however, about how many people actually died, how many of these people were actually innocent, how many deaths were avoidable, and whether this is a genocide or not. Okay? That's it. Yeah. In other words, it has nothing to do with anything she's being asked yes. about here. Yes. That's it. Completely besides the point. Nobody's asking about that. Okay? Everyone can say, well, I, I, feel, I feel just terrible about people dying. I feel very uncomfortable, and I'm very, very much against people being killed. Okay, so am I. That's not the question here. That's just um, a fallacy and a, and a ridiculous appeal to emotion. Yes, there are civilian casualties in this war, like in every other war. And nobody likes it. That's not the point here. Particularly children. And any person who is fearful of stating that the death of innocent children has been utterly unacceptable is a coward. Yeah, I mean, listen, I... She's calling people a coward when she I can't stand by any statement she's ever made? She answered this question by never actually responding 
uh, with her act, with her real position, but by shifting the responsibility to I don't know the definition of a word, and no one will tell yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And there's no way for me to find the definition of that of a of the word. So she was asked, "Do you agree that there's a genocide?" And she was like, "One." Well, uh, no one will tell me what a genocide is. Who don't agree? Don't 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 tell me what a genocide is. That's her response. And then she called people cowards. <laughs> Man, I mean, listen, I completely agree. But do you personally think it constitutes genocide? Which is the deliberate. Well, what I'm saying to you is, we. Well, I can tell you what the, I, I can tell you what the pursued on my show. Yeah. What is the number? No, I understand. What is the official number? That's it. That means what somebody tell me. What a gosh, with moron. She. She's dumber than I thought at the beginning. Of why? This, why uh, is of anybody? Party. Why is any of you? Why is anyone taking this this woman seriously? Why is anyone taking this woman seriously as a legitimate source of information? I'm a journalist, a, and I have no clue what a genocide is, and I have no way of finding it out. I have no way of <laughs> of figuring out what the definition of genocide is. I asked someone on my program; they wouldn't tell me. There's just no other way, so I cannot answer, Pierce. I cannot answer I whether it's a genocide it. or not. Because I have no clue what genocide even is. No, I don't know. First, first, all those people who don't agree yeah. that it's a genocide it have to explain to me what a genocide is until I can tell if it's a genocide or not. Yeah, the response should because be: the, Why I are you? Think. Why are you condemning genocide if you don't know what it is and you have no idea what it is? Why are you condemning <laughs> it? Because you you can you condemned it and you say, "Oh, I wasn't talking about Israel. It's just a general thing about well, genocide." No, David, no, what David. is it? You don't even know it. You're using words and you don't know what they mean, Candace. No, David, you're misunderstanding me. Um, I would first like to like for those who don't agree that there is a genocide to explain to me what exactly is a genocide and how many people have to be killed for it to be a genocide for me then to answer that question. David, you see how this makes complete sense, David. <laughs> Someone said, give her a whiteboard. <laughs> She's such a coward. She's dishonest. This yeah, is just this is gaslighting. This, this She's trying thing. to manipulate uh, the crowd and also trying to manipulate Pierce Morgan and, and doing it also in such a poor way where she's just looking stupid at the moment. That's yeah, it. this whole 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes of nonstop. Like, what, what has she said that is actually relevant and correct and it doesn't involve gaslighting or something like that? I don't know. She, she said she's not allowed to speak. That was the accurate thing. That's all. That's all. All I remember. I'll give you an answer. Well, I don't Nobody think there is a specific... try, it. try it when you have. Well, it's not about a number. People it's on a... both sides of the debate on. Yeah, but it's not. It's not... Yeah, but... well, what I do you mean it's not a number? Here's my answer. And, I... Do they give you an answer? Well, no, because it, here's the point. It's not about specific numbers. It's about an intent. But it has to be. Well, no. Uh -huh. An intent. She says about... it has to be. It has, it has to, be... to be about the numbers. No. To... This is why you shouldn't talk about things you don't know anything about. And this is this is coming from a guy who has consistently been drawing attention to the number of civilian casualties in uh, in Gaza the entire time since it's been going on. He's been pointing it out the entire time. He's just saying, "Hey, is this is this a genocide?" And then, well, I have no idea. Okay, well, I'll explain it to you. And then she's she's not even accepting the definition. No, it's just about percentages. Yeah. Okay, that's not true, Piers, because in America they call they say that Native Americans it was a genocide committed by white men. This is what they say, right? Because they were trying to wipe out <laughs> because there was an intent to wipe out massive massive populations of Native Americans. That's why it's called a genocide, Candace. Oh boy. Candace, 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 Candace. Okay, here's the thing. So yes, people call it, people call it a genocide. If, let me go ahead and lay this down here, Candace. If, if a group of Native Americans, let's say the Iroquois, if the Iroquois had come along and killed a bunch of settlers and taken a bunch of hostages, and then those settlers went out and got their hostages back, and hunted down the people who killed a bunch of people, it wouldn't be called a genocide. It wouldn't, because that's not what a genocide is. My goodness. I I don't like to um, claim that I would humiliate or destroy somebody in a debate or anything like that. 
but uh, the, the the idea of having a debate with her often comes up. Although, I, I would say that uh, at this point, um, I still have probably too small of a platform for her to consider debating me and for her to consider debating someone it has to be in her best interest mm -hmm. and it has to be she has to somehow benefit from it but it would be utterly and brutally painful to have a debate with her and it would be totally pointless and it would actually be um i would say it would be it would be kind of cruel and not very good not very honorable on my behalf However, it would also be very um, enjoyable in different ways. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. It would be nice to somehow confront her one day. What the definition of a genocide is. And what is, I'm telling you is that that is, would be incorrect because the majority is, of Native Americans died from smallpox. It was accidental. Some some ninety yeah, percent no, of Native I'm, Americans I'm you what died the, from smallpox, and I'm it's telling you considered what the, a genocide. No, I understand. I'm telling you what the what the the definition of genocide is, which is not about a specific number in any circumstance. It's about an intent to target and eradicate a whole people based on their but ethnicity. I, I'm, I'm disputing that by telling you that she's they saying that is not the definition in America of genocide. Oh my goodness. Native Americans, a genocide was committed against Native Americans. Mm. Factually speaking, 90% of them, 90 you hear how stupid this is? Yes. Listen to what listen to what she's saying. She's saying, "No, the gen genocide has nothing to do with intent because there's a genocide against Native Americans and and 90% of them died from smallpox. Therefore, a genocide can't be about intent." We have we have um, we have very clear records that on different occasions and and this is it's okay to acknowledge it, right? It's okay to acknowledge it that in different uh, cases, the population that was building um, something here on this continent, as the natives were here, intended intended very explicitly, even in, including in written form to systematically wipe out the certain populations that they were dealing with, the certain Native American populations. Such policies, as they were recorded, for example, included um, in masses wiping out a certain um, livestock, a, a, a bison um, population, to completely eradicate any source of sustainable food that a certain tribe was relying on, which then was supposed to be used in order to wipe out that certain tribe, force them to go somewhere else, or force them to weaken and die. These are harsh realities. Not very pretty, but these are some harsh realities of colonization. Not something to be proud of. However, that, for example, is genocidal intent. It doesn't matter how many people you actually killed in the process. It doesn't matter how many people killed, uh, died of which, um, from, from, from which cause. What matters is the intent there, okay? I would say that as a general policy, as a general idea, I don't think that there is actually verifiable um, information that this that the majority opinion among the the colonizers was that the Native Americans should be wiped out, but there were regional and specific incidental cases of uh, wanting to wipe out certain tribes or certain parts of the population entirely, which was genocidal intent, and it doesn't matter how many people died from which cause whether they died from a smallpox or from different diseases or because they just couldn't handle it very well, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. What matters is the intent. So if Israel is, um, if, is, if Israel is waging a war and during this war, lots of people die, and to you, the number of people dying is not acceptable, 
that doesn't have any bearing on whether this is a genocide or not. What matters is whether Israel is explicitly and deliberately intending to commit a genocide, so intending to massacre, to, to wipe out a population or part of the population or not. So far, there is no single piece of evidence that Israel is pursuing such an intention, such an intent, that they are actually going after such a goal. On the contrary, there is plenty of evidence, which Israel has been repeatedly presenting, in compliance with uh, the ICJ request, for example, that they are trying their best to avoid or to minimize civilian casualties, including opening um, uh, evacuation corridors, specifically marking safe areas, uh, delivering aid, warning people repeatedly before they strike a, certain, a place, and so on. While that is happening, Israel can not be directly uh, convicted of committing a genocide. They can be questioned on it, and a, uh, and, and a trial can take place, and Israel can then present evidence that they are uh, doing their best to avoid civilian casualties, and this can then be taken into consideration when a final when a final judgment uh, takes place. That's what matters here. It's not like oh, you kill a lot of people. You kill a lot of people there. Lots of people. Lots of people. And I don't like that. That's genocide. That's not how it works. <laughs> Man. So it was actually an epidemic. Right. So is the, is the definition shifting? Because it is my understanding from Rabbi Barclay that the definition of anti-Semitism shifts. So maybe the definition of genocide has shifted, but well, let we me are read you. Well, let me read that let me, genocide well, let me read you the exact, in school. Let me read you the exact wording and see whether you think definition. it applies to... Well, let me read you the exact Definition of genocide from the Oxford English Dictionary. The deliberate killing of a large number of people from a particular nation or ethnic group with the aim of destroying that nation or group. So by that, by that definition, do you believe that is what's happening to the Palestinian people and it's being perpetrated by Israel? Well, I would say is that Israel has proven in the past that they can be very specific when they... Okay, I, I will listen what to it. I will, I will listen to it. I will listen to it. I will let her finish, okay? They want to get somebody out, uh, whether that's a hostage or any other certain military operation. And what I am seeing happening forgetting the specific language of a genocide is something that I'm using my platform to speak out against because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter to me what the media calls me. I've had every headline. I do not well, believe all that you care about. being careful in what they are doing. I think it has been a, in almost, it, it seems to me that the destruction of the hospitals and the schools and of the UN buildings, would you say, peers, that you believe that's unintentional? Uh What did he say? He said, according to this dictionary definition of genocide, <laughs> would you call it genocide? According to this, in other words, oh if you, you keep saying you can't figure out what the definition of genocide Are is, and there's no way to figure it out. But if you go with this definition of genocide, do you think Israel's committing genocide? What an imbecile. Okay. What an absolutely ridiculous imbecile. On top of being so dishonest, so deceptive, she is just such an imbecile. It is so painfully cringeworthy to listen to what she just said. What she's doing here is simply um, is being vague because she doesn't really know how to answer the question. Or because she doesn't want to take a position because she's scared, because she's because she because she's not confident in where she stands and doesn't is not ready to deal with the feedback. So she's being as vague as she can possibly be instead of answering the question. If you actually had any thoughts on this, you would give a direct answer to this question. You would say, yes, I believe that this is what is happening. And here is why. And she clearly does. She just doesn't want to say it, right? Yeah. She clearly say, she clearly believes it. But or you could say, no, I don't believe that is what, what is happening actually. And here is why. However, so and so and so goes a little bit in that direction. 
you could say something like this. What she's doing here is she's not answering the question. She's being deliberately vague, deliberately vague, because she doesn't know how to answer this question or because she doesn't want to answer the question, because she doesn't trust herself. And this is somebody that people actually like look at for information and opinion. <laughs> Man. Specific language of a genocide, out uh, whether that's a hostage. She actually said, I don't care about the specific language. Do you believe that is what's happening to the Palestinian people and it's being perpetrated by Israel? Well, I would say is that Israel has proven in the past that they can be very specific when they want to get somebody out, uh, whether that's a hostage or any other certain military operation. And what I am seeing happening, forgetting the specific language of a genocide is something that I'm using my platform to speak out against because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter to me what the media calls me. I've had every headline. I do not believe that they are being careful in what they are doing. I think it has been a... in almost, it, it seems to me, that the destruction of the hospitals and the schools and of the UN buildings, would you say, peers, that you believe that's unintentional? And she actually couldn't stop. She couldn't resist once again playing the victim in the middle of her response. <laughs> Seriously. Part of her response was, and uh, you know, people said, people have said all kinds of things about me and attacked me. That, what does that have to do with the point here, Kenneth? What in the world, how in the world is that relevant to the point? And by the way, I was also pregnant at some point, and I still feel, uh, and and it, it is very, it is it is traumatic to be pregnant and, and to deal with uh, all the backlash that is happening in the world. And also, I always have to think of my grandfather when you ask me such questions, because my grandfather he he went through some really difficult times, and when he was pregnant, he also received a, such a question like this one. And I did. I know for a fact that it was very hard on him. So when I sit here, I want to be uh, quite, very, very clear, as clear as it gets, in stating that uh, I think that you should be answering the question on whether this is a genocide or not. Right, Pierce? <laughs> Do you know what this reminds me of? <laughs> oh, this. What people are starting to see, at least in in the occupation uh, of of. Palestine is um, just an, an increasing crisis of humanitarian condition. Do you think you can expand on that? Yeah, I mean, I think I'd also just, I, I am not the expert on geopolitics on this issue. You know, Candace for is. me, I'm a firm believer in, uh, in finding a, a two-state solution in this issue. This is basically what Kenneth just reminded me of. <laughs> At least AOC, as terrible as she is, had the decency to explain that she's that she doesn't actually know what she's talking about. <laughs> Candace, maybe you can learn from AOC and also acknowledge that you don't know what you're talking about. Candace, please, Candace. Uh, I, I do not believe Israel's waging genocide. I, I think that you believe, the, but I'm asking you: Do you believe that I, the targeting I think, going I think you know, the scale, in the hospital? Well, no, is I'll be clear with you. I, I, I can answer the question. I, I have said repeatedly in the last few weeks and months that I think the proportionality of Israel's response is now unacceptable. And particularly yeah. since they decided to go into Rafah, a refugee camp yeah. that they set up, uh, to then target Hamas in the middle of a refugee camp where you're bound to kill uh, so many... To target process, I Hamas. Think. But I, I'm just curious... Who's hiding in a refugee camp is bad. Did you catch that? You're hiding, boy! You're hiding! <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, since they decided to go into Rafa, a refugee camp yeah. that they set up uh, to then target Hamas in the middle of a refugee camp, we're bound to kill. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Why? Why are they? Why are they going after Hamas in a refugee camp? Because Hamas did what Hamas did, and they go hide among civilians and they hide among refugees. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Like, what is Pierce saying? That if Hamas goes and hides among the refugees, you just say, okay, free pass. Now you're good. We're good. We're good. We'll head back to Israel. Head back to Israel. You went and you went among you went to the refugee camp, so we can't get you there. We've said we've talked about this before. Israel wants to send a message. If you go and kill a bunch of people, you're a terrorist. We're going to hunt you down and find you. Doesn't matter where you hide. You could go to the moon. We're going to go to the moon and find you. And I'd say. That's a that's probably the only message that they'll get. 
that terrorists are going to get. Here's the thing. Um, yeah, what, what you just said. This this is just such a ridiculous logic. It's it's basically um, I go out there and I kill a bunch of people and shoot at them, and I quickly go and hide behind uh, and hide among civilians and like hey, 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 hey now you can't do anything. You can't do anything. <laughs> I'm also by the way I can shoot at you from here and you can still not shoot back because I'm among civilians. <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> it's not how it works by international law. Weeks and months. I, I can answer the question. I, I have said repeatedly in the last few weeks and months that I think the proportionality of Israel's response is now unacceptable. And particularly yeah. since they decided to go into Rafa, a refugee camp yeah. that they set up uh, to then target Hamas in the middle of a refugee Targeting camp. Targeting who? Found to kill. Uh, Palestinians in general? Palestinian uh -huh. civilians? Are they targeting people, Palestinians just for being Palestinians? They're targeting, targeting who? Hamas in the middle of a refugee camp. Huh. They're targeting Hamas, who's hiding in a refugee camp. I want to clarify, by the way, what refugee camp means. And I think I should I should make a whole video on this issue as well. Um, when we speak of refugee camp, people... Oh, when, when somebody mentions refugee camp in Gaza... People often think that we're speaking of a bunch of tents put together uh, with, you know, no electricity, no buildings, people just, you know, staying there, sleeping on the ground in tents and so on. Uh, that's what people think is happening. That's not true. That's not what a refugee camp refers to. That's not what a refugee camp is in Gaza. In Gaza, refugee camp, just like genocide, <laughs> has a very different meaning and does not really fit the description of what you call a refugee camp anywhere else in the world. Here is a picture of the Nusayrak refugee camp, for example. You may have recently heard of this. This refugee camp was um, attacked <laughs> by the IDF, by Israeli forces, when they went in to rescue four hostages that were held here. It was the Nusayrat refugee camp. Let's zoom in here. Is this really what people think of when they hear refugee camp? One comment was funny. It said it looks better than Detroit. And it does. <laughs> when they're... Yeah, no. When people are thinking of a refugee camp, they're thinking of a big open space with a bunch of tents. Yeah, that are set yeah. up for shelter for people. No, They're not thinking this, of a giant city. This place is a city, a city with um, a very large population, densely populated, a city that has uh, grocery stores, entertainment, malls or supermarkets. Um, it has car shops it has uh you can buy jewelry there are different restaurants um all kinds of different things that are happening here it's just a regular city that's what a refugee camp is in gaza it is only called a refugee camp and you can verify this it is only called a refugee camp because it was initially created as a settlement to house certain people who lived in regions that are now under Israeli control, that are now part of Israel, such as uh, Beersheba, for example. There were, there were people who were living in Beersheba um, who fled to this region and settled here temporarily um, when the Arabs, the surrounding Arab nations, attacked and invaded Israel in order to destroy Israel. The idea was that after the war, after everything is over, these people would then go back and live in Beersheba forever, ideally after Israel is completely destroyed. And, and because their status there was of refugees, and with the hopes that they will one day go to what is now Israel and live there, and there will be no more Israel, they were called refugees. To this day, they are still internationally called refugees just because of that because these people uh, or mostly descendants of these people live here and are constantly promised that one day they will go and take over places that are currently part of israel and they will destroy israel they will go there and live there 
they're giving this they're they're being given this empty promise not only by the Palestinian leadership not only by Hamas also by the United Nations and by many nations around the world they are be, they are given this empty promise that they are not per permanently here in this major city but that they are refugees who will one day after Israel is destroyed or pushed back live in what is now Israel that's all that's the entire reason the entire reason why this is called a refugee camp. Meaning, calling it a refugee camp just implies that Israel um, has the obligation to retreat or be, or be, be non-existent and one day just uh, give a bunch of land to all of these people who at some point lived there before they allowed the Arab nations to invade and try to destroy Israel. That's it. This is actually a, a big part of why the conflict is ongoing and uh why the west has also been contributing to the to the continuation of this of this conflict of these wars if they simply acknowledge that um these people don't have a right to return and will not one day in the future go and live in Beersheba, for example which is now a prosperous great part of israel if they said no that's long in the past you guys are here and you will live here then their international refugee status would be removed, and this could bring in a, a, a better end or a quicker end to the conflict. This is the kind of stuff that is happening in Gaza. And I, I will guarantee to you that 95% of people who talk about this and who call this a refugee camp and who say uh, Palestinians have been displaced and so on don't know any of this. <clears throat> And civilians in the process, I think is unacceptable. But I, I'm just curious, given that you tweeted about genocide and no government ever has a right to do it, whether by your calculation from that definition, what Israel is doing is deliberately killing a large number of people from a particular nation or ethnic group with the aim of destroying that nation or group. She's not going to answer. Yeah, well, what I can say to you again, I because these definitions shift, I don't think we need to focus on the word because I'm telling you what I believe. And my we don't need to focus on the word that I used. We don't need to focus on the word that I used and what it m means and the actual meaning, because, you know, words can shift meaning and stuff. So who knows what any word means at any given time? What, what matters here is what I believe. <laughs> and the fact that I was pregnant a while back. And my grandfather was also pregnant. Yeah. Or my this belief is, is that there has been too much loss of Palestinian but life. That's, and that's my different belief, to, okay, but we don't care about your belief, Candace. Genocide, though. That, it? Yeah, but that, that, okay, that's fine. We don't need to, put, as I say, I don't know why you're like obsessing over this one word. It doesn't well, because, matter. Well, because, because you tweeted about it. <laughs> and because it's very relevant, and <laughs> if people are causing calling Israel out for genocide, then it's, a, it's kind of an important thing. <laughs> because, because you the, tweeted about it, and it's the main topic we're dealing with, you idiot. Oh my god, this oh because you tweeted is that about I'm genocide. You, so like you told me I'm only trying to tell about Brian Mast. So yeah. I, you're you're harping on this issue. There's a lot more topics we should talk about. There I'm are. being very clear in how I feel about this issue. The Israeli government is not being careful in how they're dealing with this. That's I agree with you that the amount of death has been completely unacceptable. When I tweeted that, that was back in November. So we're talking. Yep, that's you know that you know that the Israeli government is not is not very careful about it. You know that the Israeli government, when they are operating inside Gaza, is not being very very uh, careful, and that they are killing a lot of people. But I I don't know who they're killing and what they're killing and whether that is technically called the genocide or not and why not and uh, if it's not called the genocide then why are they killing them because you know like is it actually okay or justified or why not and all that however from my standpoint just uh ignoring all the facts and ignoring all the you know definitions and the scholarship and the beliefs uh just looking at my belief alone i personally do consider this to be a uh something that is of great concern and therefore i'm right and as a former pregnant woman <laughs> You can't question me. <laughs> yes, because this, that would be very traumatic, and and it's also very traumatic. Yeah. Oh wait a minute! Here's this, by the way. Look at this. Look who's praising Candace Owens, and and what for? Uh, my new hero, 
I mean, she's not exactly going to be allowed in my country once I rise to power. Uh, but uh, happy to get anyone who's useful right now on my side against the Jews. She's yeah, big. Yeah. She's very, very based. She's We're based. Make her an honorary based, griper yeah. here. The volume of this is very low because this is what people record. I don't know why. Because he's a weakling. It's not my fault. He's a weakling. Has just been on a tear lately. She has been in a full fledged war against the Jews and specifically some of these. Wait, wait against who? A full fledged war against the Jews. That's Nick's. <laughs> no, he surely he meant Zionists. <laughs> and specifically some of these Zionist rabbis against the Jews and specifically some of these Zionist rabbis. And I've been watching her evolution. It's been remarkable to witness. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm just wondering if there's a place for her in our white nationalist state. Maybe we could find a role for her. Yeah, maybe she could, she could help us tell all the other black people that they don't deserve to live with us. Yeah. She, yeah, Candace, she, she wanted a good one. <laughs> Candace. She wanted a good one. They're not all of the stupid. I mean, they're generally stupid because they're, you yeah. know, like they're racially. See, see there's, stupid. There's, one, another, yeah. there's one smart one. Yeah. Okay. Recent polls have shown a fifth of Americans. Do you know about this one? Yeah, of course I do. This is, I must say, Candace Owens is not this bad, but she's almost there. Can't locate the U.S. on a world map. Why do you think this is? I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so because uh, some people out there in our nation don't have maps. And uh, I believe that our ed education, like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as, and I believe that they should... Uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S. or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries. So we will be able to build up our future. For our look, look at poor Mario there. Brilliant response. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Brilliant response. But come on. Is she in the contest because of her brains? Let's be serious here. Thank you. That's the problem. So maybe Candace Owens should also... Like, you know, stop being. Candace, it's about Candace, it's a very simple question. Uh, is Israel committing genocide? <laughs> well, I think that some people, when they talk about what genocide is, are not really talking about genocide, for example, in South Africa and Iraq as, and as the such. Iraq, the Iraq. <laughs> she said the Iraq way more lives that have been lost and that tweet was about Brian Mass so I, I get it no, I, here's I some could my have reason. never imagined the amount of dead Palestinian children that I would see on my ex feed since it, then it's horrific you know, it's heartbreaking to me as a mother it's horrific to me that the well, media wait, seems almost mother. complicit in the wait does that mean she was pregnant at some point how is this how is this the first time hearing of this that's very traumatic the dehumanization of Palestinians, uh -huh. and I will not be on that side because at the end of the day, the hit pieces, the name, and I will always be on the side of the the Iraq and such as and name calling, yeah, uh -huh. the anti-Semitism, the psychopathic language that seems to be coming out of people means nothing. And I want to make sure everybody knows this. Right at the end of the day, you are going to have to account to God. For the things that you allowed, for the things that you were complicit in, and for the things that you did not have. This is just so, uh, so cliche, so stereotypical. It's, uh, I mean, first, you, you are asked a straight question. Okay, you are asked a straight question on your opinion on something. First, you try to be as vague as possible and counter with a question and shift the responsibility of answering this question to somebody else. Then you play the victim and talk about how you in the past experienced certain things, and then you appeal to a general moral responsibility 
and completely avoid your own responsibility of dealing with this question. Do you talk about God, for example, or about something that people generally in society know or believe to be true or false? And just direct people at that to distract from your actual position and point of view. Uh, if, if you can't see this, I don't know what, what, what else to say. <laughs> have enough courage to state. Okay. The Let amount talk of about courage. Palestinian children <laughs> yeah. has been unacceptable, full stop. Okay. Bibi what? Netanyahu, in my view, should not be given a an invitation to Congress. Mm. I think it's unacceptable. I agree. Well, they asked you and you said that he shouldn't be, so that's why they, they probably will change their minds now. Um, I really wonder how this would go if uh, Pierce was cruel enough to ask her some of the questions that he normally asks others. Maybe he's I, I was thinking that too. Doing. The follow-up should be, what should they be doing? Yes, how would, yes, how would exactly. you do things differently? Yes, that exactly. is the correct follow-up that he exactly. normally goes right to. Wait, may, maybe he will do that. I actually didn't see that. It would be very hilarious if he actually asked her, what should Israel be doing? Unacceptable. I don't and think to be clear, be, for whatever the reason, be leader when it comes to the topic of Israel, it does seem that journalists Israel. are fearful to critique Israel. Well, I'm now, not why at all. is that? So, because I would say, Piers, that you too, you too, you seem a little fearful to critique Israel. What? <laughs> <laughs> this chick who won't stand by anything she's ever said in her entire life is calling him fearful? <laughs> Look, what are you talking about? Pierce, Pierce has had a pretty consistent position, and he's he's brought on people from every side of this issue repeatedly. And, and she's calling him. She's calling him a coward. Israel. He also Ooh. personally condemned Netanyahu. He condemned Israel on different occasions. Openly, and he just agreed. He, he just agreed with everything <laughs> she was saying, except calling it genocide, because there's a <laughs> definition. He quoted the actual dictionary definition of it. She ducked because she won't. She won't. She won't defend anything. And then she attacks him for uh, being a wow. coward. Look at wow. even his reaction. And I, I don't. I don't think he's great. I don't like him. I disagree a lot of him, uh, a lot with him, especially on this whole conflict, and uh, on multiple occasions where he has condemned Israel. I think he's completely wrong. Completely wrong. But be honest here, Pierce Morgan has been outspoken and has openly and directly and harshly condemned Israeli actions on many occasions, which is why he's also reacting with that face when she says it. I'm not why is that? So, because I would say, Piers, that you too, you too, you seem a little fearful to critique Israel <laughs> and to want to always seem that you're coming up. <laughs> and his response says it all. <laughs> She's a joke, oh, so man. She's a joke. Yeah, understanding like... of everything they're doing. What is it that makes journalists, <laughs> well, no, I think corporate his... journalists, no, okay. Let me respond. fearful of saying, Can like, hey, you know, Israel has done a ton of things that have been very wrong. Yes, and I have I have said they're wrong. Oh. I think Netanyahu should go. He did it literally in this discussion. The cabinet should go, because some of them have definitely been using genocidal language. I think a lot of what Israel's been doing the last few weeks is completely unacceptable. But ultimately, I also, from the start of this conflict, believe that Israel not only had a right to defend itself after the terror attack on October the 7th, but a fundamental duty to its people. And here's where I'm just curious about your tweeting. Uh, through this, this oh, not the tweets. Ask old, her what they old. should do. On October the 7th, you didn't tweet anything. You didn't tweet anything on October the 8th. And October the 9th, you tweeted so much world peace ever since we got the orange man out of office. So glad the adults are back in charge. Um, a lot of people say, well, if you care this much about innocent people being killed, uh -huh. why didn't you say anything when 1,200 people were massacred? To well, death? in my defense, Pierce, I was pregnant and... <laughs> I was really, really, I mean, I had a lot of morning sickness during that time. So I didn't even know anything <laughs> happened, Pierce, to be honest, until much later. And then by the time I found out what was going on, Israel was committing uh, something. I don't know the, I don't know the meaning of, you know, words, but something was happening. And so I took my stand against those Jews. Yeah. I did it also a little bit late because just when I was uh, thinking about it, I suddenly thought about my grandfather and that gave me a lot to think about. It made me feel a little bit of trauma 
and I thought about how his pregnancy also went very bad. And but then finally, I did say something about it because I care a lot, and uh, such as yeah, little barbaric <laughs> manner in this awful terror attack by Hamas, and nearly seven thousand more were wounded. Some of them catastrophically and irreparably. Why did that not compel you to say anything? Well, first and foremost, uh, Israel is a strong country. So typically I talk about topics that have to do with America. Secondly, you're only quoting my Twitter feed. I'm also on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I also had a daily podcast in which I did respond directly about what happened and called the events horrific. Multiple mm -hmm. times, multiple times said what Hamas did was absolutely horrific. So you're using a snapshot of my Twitter feed where you're acknowledging that I didn't tweet for days uh, to suggest that I didn't have anything to say about what had happened. Now, to be clear, I am consistent on all matters. I do not. Oh, my goodness. Whatsoever. She just said she's she's the queen of consistency. The queen of consistency. Well, if she did indeed uh, say, wait, where, where Look, did she say that? Yes. So you're. I am consistent. I am consistent about gaslighting people um, over things I've said. And that has always been my position is to gaslight. Oh, boy. I didn't even. I wanted to review just the first 26 minutes here. We are at the end of it. Um, I didn't notice that the next topic is Christians are the most persecuted in the world. Then Rabbi Shmuley. I'm personally not really interested in reviewing that part. Uh, but then Kanye West. I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of interested in that. Then COVID vaccine. We're still talking about that. Uh, conspiracy theories. Sean Diddy. Zelensky. Don't care. Taylor Swift is the most toxic feminist ever. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what? I don't even want to know. I already have to see Taylor Swift now at NFL games and so on. And then <laughs> we've got Candace and Pierce Morgan discussing. Oh my goodness. I don't even want to know what they're saying about Taylor Swift. I will never, ever have a single look at what they're saying about Taylor Swift. I don't want to know. Oh, at you'll all. watch it. Nope. Snapshot of my Twitter feed where you're acknowledging that I didn't tweet for days uh, to suggest that I didn't have anything to say about what had happened. Now, to be clear, I am consistent on all matters. Yeah, you're consistent on all matters. I did respond. What? I'm also on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I also had a daily podcast in which I did respond directly about what happened and called. All right, let's see. Maybe she's maybe she did. Are you looking up nice. her Instagram or Facebook? I'm looking up her um, Daily Wire podcast where she was talking. Let's look at Daily Wire. Daily Wire. I'm proud to announce Daily Wire. Let's see. Daily Wire. Daily Wire. Daily Wire. He stole my initials. Daily Choir, Candace Owens. Daily Choir, Candace Owens. Huh? Is her is that channel gone? What? Did they take her channel down? Oh. Wasn't there a channel of her just of her own? Or is that on her own channel, which is still yeah, Candace? Was that all on here? Yes, like Yes, no. Um live streamed three years ago no videos three days ago one year ago wait what wasn't there a candace owens daily wire channel is it gone huh let's see I'm that's on, weird i'm on her regular channel here candace videos daily wire is <laughs> Her daily choir platform is gone. That's weird. I didn't know that. Um, I didn't know that her daily choir platform is gone. I couldn't find. I can't find it. Where was the daily choir? I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not interested in looking at all the other platforms right now, like Facebook and Instagram. This, that just sounds like torture. So I, I'll just take her word for it because she's very reliable. Um, yeah. The events horrific. Multiple times, multiple times said what Hamas did was absolutely horrific. So you're using a snapshot of my Twitter feed where you're acknowledging that I didn't tweet for days 
uh, to suggest that I didn't have anything to say about what had happened. Now, to be clear, I am consistent on all matters. I do not want America involved whatsoever in anything that is happening in Israel. I don't want my dollars sent over to Israel. We should not be supporting Israel. Um, obviously Your dollars are not being sent over to Israel. Don't worry. Your dollars are definitely not being sent over to Israel. Dollars are not being sent over to Israel. That's not what's happening. Um, if you believe that um, your country should not be in any way involved in Israel, then that means you would have to, you would want your country to sever ties, diplomatic ties and agreements in any shape or form with Israel, which means breaking the alliance with Israel. Um, and if if that is only because you want that, because you don't want your country to be in alliance with any country. Only. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, this is weird. Why couldn't I find this? When I, when I looked for it, it's still here. Um, if you only want that because you don't want your country to have such involvements with any country, with any foreign country in the world, then that would mean that uh, you're advocating for complete isolationism, which means that you are against any kind of alliances with other countries, um, which means you should be talking about all kinds of different foreign involvements aside from just the Israeli one. It's very, very interesting that you're only talking about the, only about Israel here, uh, instead of talking about all the other alliances and interventions that are going on. Plus also, it would be a very stupid position to hold, to be honest, to advocate for complete isolationism in the 21st century, which <laughs> does not work. It's not, it, does, it just doesn't work. And if you are going to isolate yourself and not have any alliances or any involvements with any part of the world, you are not going to force other forces which want to take advantage of that from having these alliances and from trying to become the next world power to dominate everyone. So there's just so much I early with that. However... We know that you never actually thought about any of this, so we'll just let that slide. Um, okay, where is this? Let's see. Am I anti-Semitic? <laughs> as far as what the... <laughs> Wait a minute, I forgot about this. This is this beautiful video. <laughs> then there's East Jerusalem, that's maybe... <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least that's what the rabbi... <laughs> You know, my grandparents' yeah. house, my grandfather grew up in a segregated south. And so when I'm walking mm -hmm. through Jerusalem and you see, and they say these are the Muslims. Wait, is she still quarters. talking about her grandfather? Oh my God, she's again talking about her grandfather. Is that her go-to point for everything? And so when I'm walking mm -hmm. through Jerusalem and you see, and they say these are the Muslim quarters, this is where the Muslims are right. allowed to live, that doesn't mm -hmm. feel like a bastion of freedom to me. Um, so Good point, Candace. I guess, oh, I, I don't... Well, so smart, Candace. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's where they're allowed to live in Jerusalem. I think it's that there are there's an Armenian quarter. It's not saying the Armenians can only live here. It's that there are communities, just like there's a, a Jewish community in in Jersey here, and there's a Muslim community in here. I don't think you know. To my understanding, it's not restrictions within Israel proper of where I, I Israeli. Think it is where they I think it is where they have. I mean, at least that's what the rabbi who was taking me around. He said these the are the rabbi told me. The rabbi said it. Are you accusing rabbis of being liars? Look, here's another instance. I mean, she she I mean, said the maybe, dumbest thing that I've ever heard about Jerusalem. Maybe the rabbi was drunk on Christian blood when he said it, but... So she actually... <laughs> she actually suggested that because there is a Muslim quarter, that means Muslims are only allowed to live there. And this reminded her of the segregated South that her grandfather yeah, yeah. had to live in. Yeah, and when she is then rightly corrected on that by this other guy who says that's not really what's happening there, she then she then blames it on the rabbi and says, "Well, that's not the rabbi. He said that the rabbi most definitely did not say that." Okay, <laughs> I don't know which rabbi that is, but he definitely didn't say that because <laughs> nobody would say such a dumb thing. A rabbi said that Muslims are only, <laughs> uh, I was there and there was a rabbi, I forget his name, but he told me, he said, Muslims are only allowed to live in the Muslim quarter and they can't, they'll be shot if they step outside. And that just, that just reminds me of the segregated South where my grandfather lived. And th this is a glimpse uh, of um, everything that she 
everything that she has been that she, that she did in on that Pierce Morgan episode as well. She says something really stupid and ignorant, then she is corrected on it. She doesn't acknowledge it and tries to blame it on somebody else, and she just doesn't have the decency to acknowledge that she's actually wrong about it. This is this is Rakana's own. Say anything about legally saying they cannot live in other places within Israel proper. I mean, there's Israeli Arab citizens that have full rights. Israeli Arabs. I'm only on the talking Supreme about Jerusalem, so I haven't been, I haven't been to Tel Aviv or anything like that. I'm I'm just talking about particularly. There, well, and, Jerusalem and itself, then, as a city, is has has a division in it where the Green Line divides, and there's East Jerusalem. That's maybe what he was talking about, not the Muslim quarter, but East Jerusalem. No, why are you being so charitable? That's probably that's yeah. Not, stop being charitable. She's talking about the Muslim quarter, and she said this is the only place Muslims are allowed to live there and yeah, that's, that's segregated that's, so it's segregated so for those who know uh for those who want more information on this you can just look it up you can look up the quarters in jerusalem um it's been even... to we've been through all of them yes we, we walked through all of them ap recorded a big giant video going through the muslim quarter where yeah. the only place where muslims are allowed to live yeah the Christian quarter. Muslims also live in the Christian quarter, by the way. That's yeah, weird. Muslims, Muslims yeah, also. Be, they'll probably be shot once uh, news gets out, and because <laughs> Candace, uh, you know what Candace says, they're not allowed out of there, but they are. Hmm, it's weird. <laughs> Muslims also live in the Jewish quarter, by the way. Oh wait, there is a Jewish quarter. Mm -hmm. a Jewish see, that's the only place. That's the only place Israel Jews are allowed to live in the Jewish quarter. It's called the Jewish quarter. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. And and it's been pointed out before, Muslims are by far the majority in yeah. the old city of Jerusalem. It's a yeah. it's a Muslim majority area. <laughs> I don't just mean in the quarter, I mean the entire old city of Jerusalem, it's a Muslim majority area. Yes, yes. I think the Armenian quarter is the only quarter that has actually that actually has some certain demographic restrictions. Um, not in terms of residency, but ownership or business or something like that. I, I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure about that. Would need to read up more on that. But this whole idea that because there's a Muslim quarter, only Muslims are Muslims are only allowed to live there. That's just so stupid and so nonsensical. It's like saying Little Italy only Italians are only allowed to live there. Nobody nowhere else. <laughs> Chinese people are only allowed to live in Chinatown, nowhere else. Yeah, I lived in the Bronx. There was this uh, right beside as far as what those are, but right beside Fordham University. There's Little Italy, Little Italy, only place in New York where Italians are allowed to live. Little Italy, Little Italy. This reminds me of my grandfather. <laughs> Happiest of Fridays to everybody. Okay, October twenty seven. I don't know why I'm tracking this down now. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna spend two hours trying to look for something she said. Happy Thursday, everybody. Ew. October nineteenth. Yeah, he's specifically questioning me. October seventh. <laughs> no, 8th. I want to. I want to credit. Like, for... I want to give credit where credit is due, and if she actually some said some shameless. I want to acknowledge it and say, "Oh yeah, you see, you see." So she actually did make a statement on this. Look, you see. But I'm so tired of looking for it now. Yeah, I'm tired of alert. And the fact that YouTube doesn't just give me a preview of the date of on which things. Happy were. Wednesday, everybody. Question. It's just really ridiculous. Happy Friday. Happy Wednesday. Uh, 11th happy Wednesday. So what's before that? Happy Monday. Do you know what I love? Oh, I don't really care, honestly. Not definitions, apparently. No, that's October <laughs> 6th. There's no justification for this. Okay, now here. Brandon Daisy's shocking confession, and this is why I never run for office. And then in the background, there's Israel Palestine flags. Huh, let's see. All right, guys, happy Friday. You know how this works. We are covering convicting a murderer. October That's October 6th. Happy Monday, everybody. I hope you had a relaxing weekend. Today, I'm going to start the show by telling you why I may never run for political office. And it's got oh, We are very glad to hear that. I hope. Oh, my God. She's talking about her grandparents again. <laughs> Wait a minute. Have the wisdom to pause and reflect and to think. They're such great listeners. Do you know what I'm talking about? It seems that with age, you lose your impulse. And what comes with that and what is replaced with that is this ability to actually pause. Is this her thing where she always talks about her grandparents? I don't understand. 
this whole first part is about her grandparents. Anyway, um, leading voices, Birch Gold. Columbia. It is the most replayed thing. Maybe she's knock it down. What happened? What happened? Where? Hot chicks. Trevor. Now everyone is suddenly paying attention because I said hot chicks. Okay, I don't see anything here in the timestamps. Let's see. Come on, open the transcript. Okay, let's see. Eddie. Look up Israel. Search for Israel. Israel. There we go. There we go. Okay. Israel, Palestine. It's at the beginning. media is always about being first. And over the weekend, I would say probably midday Saturday, when I learned of the atrocities that were taking place in Israel, I would say that the experience that I had on social media was a lot like this meme. It reads, I'm done being an expert in Ukraine war. I'm now an expert in Israel and Palestine's war. Yeah, that's kind of how it felt. Everybody was racing to make a statement. Is it people do people really watch this? <laughs> uh, that was very cringe worthy. Sizing some level of humanity. I think it was a giant time and that I make sure that I understand what's happening. Now, to be clear, Making a giant and a sweeping geopolitical statement is different from exercising some level of humanity. I think what was most shocking for me in looking at my Twitter feed is realizing that people who support either sides in this, right, completely remove their humanity in order to do so, which I don't think is necessary, right? There are people that hate Jewish people so much that despite seeing the horrific images that were coming out of Israel, and they were horrific, despite understanding that people were being slaughtered, understanding that women were being raped, being able to see these images of bloodied women and bloodied children, they are so angry about Israel being a nation that they just went, I don't care, don't care. It's, it's the Jews, so I'm, I'm going to pretend that I don't see this. It's incredible to me. How do you feel nothing when you see a child that, of course, cannot possibly comprehend any of the politics in their region, cannot possibly comprehend what is happening to them? How do you just feel nothing when you see them bloodied and harmed? And then to the same exact token, you had individuals who very much understood that and were rightfully enraged by this, who were basically calling for a genocide response, which would have elicited the same more children that were bloodied, more children and women that were being displaced, but they were... Let's quickly both cite this issue. It's weird how she keeps using a word and doesn't know what it means. Huh. Comfortable with that because that's just how it has to be in war, and that would be an even response or... Bad, bad Israelis. Bad, bad Israelis. Bad, bad Jews. You hear her. You hear what Candace is saying. So before you, after you have your population killed and kidnapped and massacred and their blood spilled on the roads of your country amid the celebrations of Gazans and other terrorists, don't respond with anger. Don't respond with emotions. Don't be bad. Bad, bad Israelis. Listen to candies. Listen to Big Mama Candies. She's telling you how to how to react. Even if it was more extreme of a response, they said that's totally fine. And because I guess these people are Muslims and we should feel less for Muslims than we feel for Jews or feel more for Muslims than we feel for Jews. Again, depending on what side of the token uh, you landed upon and really what was happening uh, across the board and what. Okay. Um, one, I have to say, it's good to a certain extent that on the first show after the event, she actually did talk about it and condemn um, what happened there and also condemned any justification of it and condemned anti-Semitism and indifference to hating Jews, which nowadays she's pretty much doing. Um, however, then continuing and making this about and, and drawing a moral equivalence there. 
and blaming Israelis for their reaction, just for their words in response to this massacre, just reminds me of one thing, which is Candace, whoever acknowledged you as a proper commentator and actually gave you a job and put you in the position of becoming a journalist should be ashamed. And you should never, ever talk about these things and never lecture people who have just been massacred on how, on how, to, how to respond to things. In fact, maybe you should quit entirely, disappear from the public eye, live a private life, and not ever talk about politics again. Because at the beginning of this talk, you are saying that you are not an expert on this issue and you're criticizing people for acting like experts. And then you're starting to judge people for their reactions without understanding what they're actually reacting to and what's actually happening over there. Candace. Dude. Please stop. Dude. What? She was pregnant. <laughs> Good point. Good point. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I what thought you were actually going to say something. <laughs> anyway, I think we're done. I think we're done. We've seen it all. We've seen it all. The big problem that I'm now dealing with is that we have 140 super chats. <laughs> Let me go pee real quick. <laughs> okay. Noam um, said, do you ever seen the photos of swastika tattoos on black people and thought, who the F are these people? Well, here you go. Ayatollah Khamenei said, Doors is back and he keeps bragging about his trans GF dude grows. I don't care about Doors. They had one good song. That's it. Uh, Iron Kippa said, used to be brain, but now mule. Or donkey brain, but now mule. As a Jew, do you have a suggestion for someone who can help me understand the lines between Judaism and Christianity? This is an interesting topic to get back to. I'll save that. Iron Kippa, shout out to Daily Corvid. He read the Quran for us. Based. Ayatollah Khamenei, why can days looking like Michael Jackson from the Jackson 5 era said? This is very racist. Uh, Legimothy Gayon said, I don't want Zelensky to win. I want Putin to win. Is the exact kind of meaningless and pseudo, pseudo profound platitude spoken by illiterates for illiterates like Kent Ace and he fans? This is true. I entirely agree with the sentiment here. Mary Mack said, Can Ace Oswald Mosley, UK's next right wing socialist? That guy was a bad guy. Oswald Mosley. Velvet Jazz said, Jizia for the cause. Rock on dudes of dynamic discourse. God bless you both. Thank you so much. We haven't been very, haven't really responded to much of the Super Chat stuff here during this live stream because we were so much focused on the great wisdom that, was, that is pouring out of, um, out of Candace's face that I couldn't pay any attention to the Super Chats and to the, to the chat. So I apologize very, very deeply for that. It is because of the the amazingness of candies. Notice that AP likes hit. <laughs> or at the very least, listening and reading him says based a lot, plays paradox games, has a bad haircut, <laughs> has bad facial hair, racist and sexist, according to David, and to the eye test versus Candace black female. Draw your own conclusions. This is good. This is a this is a good point. This is a good point. I agree with that. Uh, Vlad said, thoughts on Mike Winger. I'm going to ban Vlad. Maran yeah, Roshan made a super chat. Thank you so much. Peter and Grubel said, wonder if Candace sparked straight man is a wingling. Ayatollah Khamenei, Candace for Virgin. Remember to hit the live button. Maybe hit the live button, Candace for Virgin. Uh, David, what is your three-word response to this? Used to be horse but now no we used to be donkey but brain but now a mule is that what it says as a jew do you have a suggestion for someone who can help me understand the lines between judaism and christianity what's your three the lines between judaism and christianity yeah do you do lines how many lines did you do before this live stream i do lots of lines 
Yeah, I would, um, uh, it's not really my area. I would check out, um, I would check out something from Michael Brown on this. Um, or Charlie Brown. Michael Brown. Michael Brown. Okay, Michael Brown. He's yeah. got a channel and he does he does uh he does shows and stuff like that. So it'd be a good comment to ask him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a conversation with him. Very nice guy. Knows too much said notice the projection by the immoral anti-Hebrew, anti-Israel haters. Worst people on the planet projecting what they themselves did do or aim to do. Well, it's they're just it's just because they were pregnant. That's why they do that. Uh, Nuttis says, AP don't platform David because he's against free speech. He won't platform Riz King, <laughs> Mike Winger, to tell his wingerlings about the truth of how strategy games are better than Donkey Kong and beta anime. Yeah, this is one of the big concerns with David. Unfortunately, um, we just have to deal with that. Brandon, stop defending rabbi pervert. The left and right are being hypocrites about censorship. Nobody even even talked about. Yeah, stop Rabbi defending pervert. Rabbi Pervert. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Robert Michael said David Wood didn't no, censor the Daily Wire. The David Wood didn't censor CO. It's the Daily Wire, as you would say. The Daily Wire didn't censor carbon monoxide. She has a full interview with Norm Finkelstein. She's it's carbon monoxide. She had hours of anti-vax content. She even defended Tate on the Daily Wire. Daily Wire, yeah. They didn't censor. They just said at one point, you know what? Enough is enough. And she was like, you see, they're persecuting me because they're Jews. Ayatollah Khamenei said, the, the blood libel or not blood libel, that is the question. Yeah, it's also, it's a very difficult decision also. It's like, uh, whenever I wake up in the morning, I'm like, should I do blood libel today? Uh, always depends on what I eat for the break for breakfast. How long I slept, if I'm well rested or not. Sometimes I drink coffee, which drives me to a blood label. Yeah. It's Sometimes always difficult. You put blood in your coffee. Sometimes I put blood in my libel. Mehran Roshan said, Why are so many Catholics and Orthodox anti Semitic? <sighs> Opening a whole big can of worms there, Mehran. A whole big can of worms. I wouldn't say that this is actually a big Catholic issue. It is, there's only a certain um, part of people who call themselves Catholics. I don't want to make any judgment on whether they are Catholics or not. On certain people inside this, this Catholic um, circle who are very different from most Catholic people. Most Catholic people are, are very nice. Uh, these groipers are the ones who present themselves as these true Catholic people uh, and who believe in fascism. I wouldn't I wouldn't blame that on Catholicism or on Catholics in general. Catholics are usually not like that. Um, yeah, on Orthodox, I don't want to say anything on that. I don't have any comments on that. I'm scared that the Orthodox will shut me down or kill me if I, if I speak against them. Uh, Render... <laughs> Render on to Caesar said, great job on Nigerian Perspective Daily Wire. Really enjoyed the content. Glad to see you supporting smaller channels. He's a, he has a pretty big channel. Really? Nigerian Perspective is a big channel. I have a bigger one. Uh, Robert Michael said, Canned Ace is the most genuine grifter out there. And indeed. John Choi said, Canned Ace's vocal fry in this interview is the icing on the five hit cake of her lies and dumb takes i do indeed agree with that um knows too much the u.s biden administration appears israel's enemies and constantly stand in the way of israel's war efforts funded to israel's enemies tries to oust israel's elected pm but israel controls the u.s <laughs> it's ridiculous i mean at this point with the media arguing right now that Israel or the Zionists control the media and control the US and control this and that. These accusations to still make them at this point is just ridiculously stupid. Maji Magoro said, bring back Nigerian AP. No. Uh, Ordro, she didn't even try to say she's in a moral dilemma. She was actually accusing Ben, greedy Jew who puts money before God. That's her subtext. Shapiro skipped over her 2.0 Nazism. Very well played. Yep. Yeah. 
it's good ben has been very uh actually very reserved and limited in his response says in general to candace during this whole thing while she was acting like he's attacking her <laughs> isn't that so weird uh Seiko Kille said Apostle Prophet, I'm an ex Muslim in Canada. How do I contact you to share my story? Um to be very honest with you, I'm very difficult with uh communication, especially in, with lengthy things. If you send me an email, I'm I'm most likely not going to read it. Or if you send me an email, I'm most likely just going to skim through it. And it's not a great thing, but I just have very, very big attention issues like that and very limited time and always forget responding to people and looking at things twice so i will be very open and honest on, on that uh however i would always appreciate a summary or something like that but you can contact me per email Moo Moo Joe said Clavin said he does not know why he gave his opinion. He is Christian. He takes Christ as King seriously. He seems like she is either not as smart as she thinks or a, just a liar. Both. Yeah, she's definitely not as smart as she thinks. That's true. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's pretty racist of you to say, but yeah. Uh Black Angel said, pretend you're an OF model. <laughs> That's how you can get my intention to share your story. Yeah, get great. Or, or pretend you're a you're a Third Reich historian and <laughs> <laughs> say, "Hey, I found these new Hitler speeches that nobody heard before." Yeah, no one's heard these ones. I also like how they said Groypers when they find out the Ark of the Covenant is in Ethiopia. <gasps> Uh, uh, Michelle G. Many Christians in Islamic dominated lands are dying. What happened to Candace? She's confused. Where did get? Where did that get that Israel supplies arms to kill Armenian Christians? I've heard that before. I've never investigated. There, there was, um, there, there is an accusation, which is that Israel uh, had an arms deal which is, though not very detailed and not very much publicly confirmed, I couldn't find very much on it, um, which may have contributed to the to Azerbaijan's use of weapons, of arms against uh, the Armenians in their late, in their recent onslaught to ethnically cleanse them, literally. Uh, but I don't think that this is, that it is actually quite that obvious and quite that confirmed. On the contrary, Israel has been, especially on the Netanyahu, very much uh, supportive of the Armenian suffering, in, at least in writing. Uh, and recently, even Netanyahu unofficially acknowledged that Turkey committed a genocide against against Armenia. He said that on Twitter for the first time. So, which was very very interesting. But there there was there was an arms deal that is in question. I have to look into the details of that, to be honest. Top Fra GG. Ben literally had Pastor MacArthur on his channel a week ago who challenged him on his Jewish beliefs last time and did it again this time. He's comfortable having constructive discussions about it. He also had, didn't he have Willingly and Craig on? And mm -hmm. had him, like, had a, had a lengthy discussion with him about their beliefs. Um, <laughs> Knows too much. David, if your Quranic shirt is not enough, you should let jihadis know the wood in your name comes from Garga trees. <laughs> hey, that it. should be... <laughs> Next time I go to Speaker's Corner, I should show up like with a tree in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a, that's a funny point. That would be funny. Show up to Speaker's <laughs> Corner with a, a Garga tree. <laughs> that's pretty good. Let's see. Maybe we should we should have a, we should have shirts with the garga tree on them or something. So yeah, we should. Ooh, is. merch, merch with garga trees. Yeah, garga merch. We should we should have a podcast and call it the garga podcast. Um, <laughs> the garga tree podcast. <laughs> yeah, under the garga tree or behind the garga tree. That's, <laughs> That's perfect. Behind the garga tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, Maybe come up with good ideas. 
where there's a tree in front of us and the show is called behind every the time garden. we every time we say something we kind of peek out <laughs> from behind the garka tree <laughs> shooter down under is that i remember when candace first came onto the scene they were people who were warning everyone that she was a grifter but were ignored people like tree of logic yes i did in tree of logic <laughs> earlier i i messaged with tree of logic which i always forget what her channel where she's active all the time is called i think it's called just tree 411 or something like that just tree 411 she's been relentless and is also live right now on candace owens and has been from the very beginning very very um against her inclusion in this whole conservative sphere has been calling her out as a as a big big grifter and this is her her channel um i messaged with her this morning and actually said that we should talk together sometime about this stuff she said she would love to she just can't tonight um but yeah she's doing some great work i also very fairly said from the beginning that she's that candace is not reliable not good and you know what we're proud of that yeah. great me said another shekel for my voice thank you so much <laughs> great me. mumu joe david does thou shalt not take thy name of the name of thy lord of the lord thy god in vain apply here when christians use the lord name like that like what where i think they're talking about saying christ is king when you're oh. not saying yeah i would know oh. that's an interesting question isn't it yeah i think you could argue that yeah you could argue that you could argue that um the uralic tribes said candace has to be born again in spirit to see the truth in the kingdom of god being catholic or any other denomination of christianity doesn't work well that's just your opinion there so um solitary emmy said something i read before i say christ is king because it is true you say christ is king because you hate jews <laughs> by the way jesus christ is lord and king this is that's pretty based solitary emmy i have to admit this is a pretty based super chat <clears throat> great me said darwin is king yep one of ap's fans Dan daniel jones said hey guys just so on cbn news that hezbollah is attacking israel and has told them to get ready to weep and wail you heard this love you both god bless all right let's see hezbollah firing rockets earlier and then uh was responding with a trebuchet or catap catapult or something like that <laughs> yeah apparently um so there is a a thing that needs to be done in order to clear the line of sight when two sides are fighting at the border, where Hezbollah is using uh, vegetation. Oh, hiding behind trees, eh? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. They're using vegetation as cover. So Israel, uh, the Israeli forces uh, want to get rid of the cover to expose them and have a clear view on Hezbollah. But apparently they didn't get approval for to use um, certain equipment to burn down or take out the vegetation so then apparently they uh they came up with this just medieval way of building a trebuchet and uh and firing over the border <laughs> which looked very badass to be honest but yeah um that's what's happening hezbollah has uh is hezbollah bluffs bluffs a lot and they have been threatening for for ever now since they came into existence to threat to wipe out israel so far they haven't done it so far they haven't done it as far as i can see um they will never be able to do it they like to talk a lot that said they're also significantly more serious of an opponent than hamas is mm -hmm. hamas is a bunch of jokes hezbollah is a serious opponent although not remotely on the same level as the israeli army they are a serious threat so they have been firing and fighting back and forth for since the beginning of october 7 of the war uh have been increasingly using inflammatory language they are a proxy of iran 
and want to cause a major war. It's, it would be just nice if it didn't come to that, or if they were taken out, maybe even internally, that would be good. Yeah, I have to say they're stupid in the way they went about it. I mean, uh, Hamas is almost completely wiped out now. Yes. And then Hezbollah jumps in there. And Iran jumped in with some rockets a little while back. Um, if if they were smart, they would have coordinated something all together. Uh, and a little late now. Yeah. Hamas is almost destroyed. We're proud of that. Yeah. Uh, Granny Rose gifted 50 apostate prophet memberships and thereby expanded this cult with 50 new members who will now become just like me, puppets of the Zionist agenda. So uh, this is very, very nice. I'm very, very happy to see this, Granny Rose. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. This is how we will make the Jews happy so we can prosper. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, change comes from within. The problem with saying stuff like this is that there are some people who can really take this seriously and say, look at this. He, he's directly admitting it. No, what sucks is I was flipping out the other day because I couldn't find stuff. And so my wife like cleaned up my desk area so I could find more stuff. And I don't know where my shekels are at anymore. I knew you were looking for the shekels. I wanted so my here. shekels. Here, how about this? No, uh, he's got all the shekels. I got my shekels. Who knows where my shekels are at? I got Somebody my stole my shekels. Got my shekels. Got okay. all my shekels. Candace Owens stole my shekels. Change of comes from within said LGBTQIA plus add P for PDF I less next agenda. Wouldn't say it that. Amber Black made a, made a not made a super chat, but made a member chat, which is about as valuable. The early 1900s doctor who wrote about sex were horrible and perverted, not because they were Jewish, it's because they were degenerates. Ha ha. Yeah, this is not a Jewish issue. It's not a, uh, it's not a, an ethnic issue, not a demographic issue. But again, complete misrepresentation of what happened. The Nazis didn't just burn perverted or immoral books. They categorically burned jewish books and many other books of different political ideologies trying to depict them somehow in a good light is just a despicable attempt at nazi propaganda <clears throat> great me made a super chat which says <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which says something, I don't know, it probably says something bad. Uh, Ayatollah Khamenei said Hitler banned all books related to normal testicular and an anatomy. AP won't tell you why one ball. Yeah, there is this rumor that Hitler had only one testicle. ball, but to this day, we have no confirmation. And then... Unless Ken knows something about it. Some Jew, some Jewish kid saw him in the locker room with one ball, made fun of him. See yeah. what happened. And then he went all crazy and said, "We must kill all the Jews." Michelle G said she claims Christ. If she is God's child, He will discipline her. Only can see the heart. By God, only God can see the heart. By their fruits, you know them. Satan likes to divide, destroying testimonies. Um. No. If someone says something stupid, we can point out that it's stupid. But only he can discipline her. Well, we weren't talking about disciplining her beyond telling her that what she's saying is stupid. So, But you were talking earlier about disciplining her. Yes, I'm saying. She'll get a uh, spanking. You. <laughs> Michelle G said, listen for us all. Satan is after the Christian testimony. Let us all learn. Alhamdulillah. Um, random Ock, her ego is so high that she will never apologize. She would never apologize because... We're proud of that. She's proud of that. Uh, not as Nazis and Hitler might be bad, but he had a nice art, haircut, outfits. They make for good movies and video games. So we can really say they are all that bad they did all this good it should erase the bad yeah, yeah. that's in a reference to the brown shirts thing yeah not yeah all bad well it is that that is that is a good point so hit uh, the nazis did a lot of bad things right but 
now we have a lot of good movies and video games. So maybe that is, you know, a redeemable aspect of it. And they did have, uh, they did tend to have uh, good haircuts. Yeah, that too. That too. And they were German, so there's that. Um, Mossad's leather strap says debate idea Muhammad Hijab versus Candace Owens. Topic Who's the biggest victim, Nazis or Islam? <laughs> That's a tough one, there. You're both pretty big victims, there. Yes, 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 yes. Shoot her down under said, I also remember when she called out for being, she was called out for being a grifter. She responded by claiming that Richard Spencer was coming after her. Really? That happened? That's interesting. Not familiar with that, but wouldn't be surprising. <laughs> Cardi B was right all along. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she had a beef with Cardi B, right? Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. Now, to um, be fair, she burnt Cardi B up. I don't remember what happened, but I must say, like intellectually, I will probably say that Candace was probably the better one. In that Candace exchange. burned her up, but it's a, it was a, it was a situation that has to do with why she wouldn't debate you, but would gladly debate Cardi B. Cardi B, you know what I mean? Yeah, that yeah. helps her career to get into a debate with Cardi B. It's just for some reason it reminds me of when Cardi B made that song W A P. Yeah. A -P. And then and then Ben Shapiro made a review of it. Yeah, where he like quoted it. Yeah, I was like, oh uh, and so I need P word and <laughs> There are so many parodies of I it. Mean, it's just so good. <laughs> and then he said, <laughs> he was so and mad. Then, about it. And then he said, a woman having a wet vagina, that's a medical disorder. And that needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I thought it was a pretty, uh, pretty dumb song, but. I mean, Ben really took it very hard that that song existed and really went oh, very cool. hard, hardcore after it. <laughs> and oh boy, people made interesting remixes of it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, David, did you know your name is unmentionable on YouTube? Every comment I make mentioning you gets deleted, and all I try is lead confused Muslims to you. Huh. That's interesting. Lead. That's based. Ayatollah Khamenei said, for only four ninety nine a month, your genera your generous your generous donation will supply a village of Candaces with uh whiteboards. But won't you donate today? This is a good point. It's a good point. If you make a super chat here, it might not give a bunch a, a, a village full of Candaces whiteboards. Yeah. Tiger Hogan, that's a line. We have demonstrated it abundantly. Get him AP. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, thank you. Winged Hussar, how long before she reverts to Islam for the group? Oh, that reminds me of uh, Destiny really made a tweet because was, he was apparently suspended on the Twitch. And <laughs> I just I just like the guy's wit. Um, here's Destiny. <clears throat> Destiny saying, be right back, converting to Islam. <laughs> <laughs> Because, <laughs> but was, it's funny because that's what, like, Sneeko got banned for something that converts to Islam. <laughs> got banned for much stuff converts to Islam. That's funny. Yeah, is that what he, he means by that? Suspended. Yeah, he was suspended on Twitch. Then he appealed, and Twitch said, "Nope, not restoring it. You will stay suspended." And he was like, "Be right back, converting to Islam." <laughs> that's rough. Isn't he like a popular gamer? He is, but he, I think he's um, he has a contract with this other platform called uh, Kick which is an alternative platform to Twitch where um, he has a big money contract there to stream on there. So, yeah, it's all good. Shake Mike Wingling said, wait, Nazis har had parties? That's haram. Maybe they were bad after all. <laughs> yeah. 
that there is something that you need to learn about them. Death Red Darth Racer says the problem is the Ukraine government is very corrupt. I don't like Putin and Zelensky. The best solution is to stop killing. You already read that like a thousand years ago. That both sides will have to give up something. I didn't read this at all. Noam MKW said candy is nuts. <laughs> Um, Joshua, <laughs> why? Joshua Wooden said ancient Israelites had pagans surrounding them, lead many away from Yahweh. However, Mrs. AP may be the yoke, a man such as the Red One needs to lead their hair, huh? Their hair, huh? That's interesting. That's pretty, that sounds pretty based, honestly. Um, a Chuju says. A Chuju says, I bought her book Blackout. I want my shekels back, Candace. <laughs> I need it more than her. You should send her a, a message saying, I bought your book back in the day, but now I'm disappointed. Can you send me my shekels back? She'll probably take that as, no, the Jews are attacking me yep, and wanting yep. money for me. She'll block you. <laughs> Not as Andrew Tate says, Candace, like you are making a who's Candace joke, which for you, old person David, it goes, can this wingling fit in your mouth joke? Huh. I see. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Joshua Wooden, I've been a long time Daily Wire fan and never a Candice Owens fan. Not for the same reason AP has beef with her. The David Wood has accurate news minus her. This is true. It's true. Yeah. I was also. Um, really not liking the daily wire because of the whole because of having her on but then actually when they kicked her out i i subscribed for a one year daily wire plus <laughs> once there were no more just black for women them. yeah 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 as soon as they kicked her out i thought wow okay finally they got rid of that one you thought hey one step closer to my ideal state yeah 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 that was very based of me. Vyati Vistu Rus took Crimea to create a border dispute with Ukraine to make it difficult for Ukraine to join NATO after the 2014 US backed coup of Ukraine. NATO, however, was determined to weaponize Ukraine against Rus Russia via NATO. Not really. And that is very a very terrible excuse for anything. If we are talking about a country's uh ability to defend itself and Russia looking out for its own safety. How about we look at it from Ukraine's perspective? Doesn't Ukraine also have a right to uh, look out for its own safety and to defend itself and to consider that possibly joining NATO will be a better solution for them <laughs> than listening to Russia, which has been interfering with their politics forever, which also, by the way, installed their own regime in Ukraine before the Western coup. Just a question here. Dawa Wood. Hey, look at this. Look at Dawa Wood. <laughs> Please help. Dawa Wood said, Blessed are the peacemakers. My grandpa, Andrew Tate. <laughs> Should be eating Egyptian food. I don't know what it is, but I falafel. Huh. That's pretty good. <clears throat> Wally Bonnet Jangle said, Jizzy, for you, my liege, Candace should hit up Ye and do a diss track on Ben. Ooh, no, that, would that would be smart. That would be smart. Yeah. yeah. It, would be, it would be bad, but it would be smart. The situation is just so bad. Uh, and can this, can this be any worse? Aside from. Yeah, anyway. Uh, little Ariel said, please remember how Candace first got notoriety with a strange statement about Hitler and nationality. Search for it. It even got criticized in Congress. I remember. It was a very stupid statement um, where she gave one of her dumb speeches talking about how, you know, the, the, the Nazis, you know, Hitler, you know, uh, it wasn't a problem you know nationalism wasn't a problem until hitler decided to go all out and expand and become globalist and invade and stuff totally ignoring why the nazis are specifically remembered to be so terrible yeah <clears throat> awful falafel would you consider adding more bites to your soundboard like ooh brother ooh yes i am considering it just not doing it brother i have doubts 
that I will do that soon. But I will. I'm planning on doing it definitely, because otherwise, I would just be. You're sitting there watching Netflix. Yeah. JS said, I'm a mom and Jewish. The hate and propaganda coming from both the left and the right is unnerving. Thanks for gifting me a much needed laugh at it. I appreciate that. Wish you all the best. That's what we do. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This is the proof that Jews are supporting this channel. See? Uh, <laughs> uh, based Autistic said, David Wood, I am going back to school to get my doctorate. I want to become an apologist that's more involved, but I don't just want Christian school advice. Also, my Muslim friend came out as Christian and now leads Muslims to Christ. Your one word response, David. Uh, if you don't just want a Christian school, then pick a different school. Well, it's pretty straightforward. Apply, apply to uh, apply to uh, a couple different schools you'd be interested in. Yeah, go to a Muslim school, Zaytuna College or something like that. Random Ox said, "My grandpappy was a slave, so I can be anti-Semitic." And also, you were pregnant, mm -hmm. um, and your grandpa was also pregnant. Um, Vinnie the Pooh, maybe she had a schnitzel sandwich and was blown away by the brown shirt experience. <laughs> and was blown away. <laughs> Joshua, when she had a website to dox people and all their info, she's a Looney Tune, and the proof AP said was something objectively wrong. We are getting close, friends. Yeah. Yes. She did have a website to dox people. Based autistic also came up with my own argument against Islam and been thinking about uploading it. Would you guys check it out if I did so? Thank you so much for all you do. My love for Muslims has grown so much. Uh, yeah, sure. If you want us to, if you wanted to upload something and ch and want us to check it out, uh, make sure to uh, make a one thousand dollar donation at first, specifically adding to it that this is in shekels and it comes from Israel. Then we might have a look at it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just kidding. You can probably send an email to David uh -huh. for him to check it out, and also send one to me specifying that. And have you uploaded anything yet? Would always be interested. We'll look up and see if you have a channel. Sankey Candace was always a grifter, but she only got Jew mad after marrying. None of this would have happened if her man didn't neglect to give her a whiteboard. This is true. This is true. This is true. Ayatollah Khamenei said, Janitor Musab, clean up on Isle Candace. I repeat, clean up on Isle Candace. <laughs> um, Amber Black, her being heavily pregnant was the same criticism she had against S. Crowder when he yelled at his wife. Like, pregnant women can't be criticized. David, your wife was pregnant five times. You should know. I was always super nice, though. But what? But what? Yeah. So if, if women be, uh, become pregnant, do they become anti-Semitic then? Is it then uh, allowed? Or is that how it works? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Ayatollah Khamenei said, uh, imagine using the phrase when we take power and your army is 300 mall ninjas with double Ds who ruminate about romantic rejection all day. It's worse than that. It's um, the the army. So when when Fuentes says, and when we take over, and yeah, these are the people that we have to put to death first. When he says we, he's talking about a bunch of people, his his fans. So Nick Fuentes' fans, the average groypers, Nazis, are like twelve to uh, maximum eighteen year olds who are sitting in a room all day and doing pretty nasty things because they don't have any connections uh, with people of the opposite sex and uh, also probably not very much of anyone outside of their own head and hand. And they spend a lot of time following Nick Fuentes and using anonymous online profiles 
and then dreaming of taking over America and executing all the Jews. I'm pretty sure that we are safe and that we don't have to be worried that they're going to one day take over. So yeah. there, yeah. are, there are <laughs> things to be worried about taking over. The Gripers are not, are not one of them. <laughs> There's something to be made fun of for a while. Yeah, the first thing they have to take over is, uh, I don't know, their own lives, the outside world. Have to take a step outside their door, the door of their room. Learn to go to the bathroom by themselves, and so on. And if they manage to say hello to somebody... Other than, the, other than their own parents, for the first time in their lives, maybe they can make further serious steps toward taking over. So until then, we shouldn't be worried. Infidel Noodle said, when are we picking up our checks from Mossad? You're late. I can't even find the shekels I already have. You're late. What do I have? Uh, hey, wait, hang on. Look, 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 look what I have instead. Look what I have instead. British pounds. Ooh. Ooh. Pounds, no shekels. What British shekels? Pounds. Those pounds look very good, though, don't they? No, they, they are actually cool. They're very, they're actually very cool. cool. They're not as cool as shekels, though, so I'd gladly trade these for, for some shekels. Oh, no, I have to say that the pounds look better than the shekels. Are you drunk? They're aesthetically better than the shekels. Compare, look at it. Put, put up a pound. Here, put up a pound. That's 20 pounds, son. Look at that. It looks better than the shekel. Shekel looks old. The pound looks better. It's got Mama from Mama's family on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's from a cartoon, right? No. Yeah. I like that. I like that cartoon. Mother of one I made a super chat. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um yeah, let's see. Ayatollah Khamenei said, "Me when my me when my boss asked why I used my company credit card to purchase five thousand anime pillows, <laughs> I was pregnant." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's and also something you have to you have to throw in something about your grandfather if you want them to buy it. You can't just go with the whole pregnancy thing. You also have to include your grandfather. Mumu Joe, there is no justification for Rex, child abused and kidnapping. I can't believe we need to remind her that. Josh trusts, she quoted Matt 5910 from the KJV, but switched to NIV for Matt 624. Was she reading two translations? I think she switched to NIV because money worked better for the dog whistle than Mamoon. Mammon. 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 Um, are you paying attention to the actual translation that she was using and switching between one to the other? He's pointing He's, out she starts off with King James. I, I, I understand that. But, but then King James that. wouldn't have worked as well for the dog whistle. To say, you actually, hey, and, she about and so he switched to NIV. She switched to NIV. But you actually paid attention to that? Like Who? people actually pay attention to that? Josh Trust Josh, did. Josh. Yeah, he actually paid attention to it. So that's interesting. Joshua Wooden said, MK book speechless, not being a free absolutist, free speech absolutist. Ben said they are pro life and have no obligation to platform an anti natalist host. Same logic. What is MK? MK book. I will save this for later. No, to my side, Candace is more slippery than Muhammad's cloth after spending the night with <laughs> the uh, Kirby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, immediately afterward. Yeah. Uh, Vyati Vistu said, Hama as Arab Muslim version of Bandarite, same inferiority complex, skewed history, and love for na Nazis, hence the numerous SS statues, rallies in Ukraine. Alhamdulillah. Um, PC said she is messed up sadly messed up very indeed much Arab Kids Choice Awards I'm going to let you finish but Candace had the best anti-Semitic job of all time <laughs> that's a reference to Kanye when he during the awards a long time ago but what was that I'm not very well connected 
with all the pop culture stuff that happens during awards. Oh, but I think there was a Taylor Swift received an award and he got up and interrupted her speech. <laughs> oh, Kanye? Yeah, that was yeah, a long time. That did happen. Yeah, I that. interrupted her speech and said, I'm, I'm going to let you finish. I'm going to let you finish. But yeah. Yeah, he said, uh, your song was good, but beyond, or your video was good, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. <laughs> what, a, what a dumb thing to do. What a jerk. I wonder if she would opening, opening condemn Islam if she read the genocide language being used in Sahih Muslim 2922. That's the one of the garkin tree passages. The air would not come unless the Jews... Unless Muslims fight the Jews. And the Muslims would kill the Jews. Until the Jews would hide behind them. A stone or a tree. And a stone or a tree would say, Muslim, servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me. Come and kill him. But the tree Gargut would not say, for this is a tree of the Jews. I know she would probably read this and think that, um, think that, People are too scared to point out that this is not genocidal and that Israel is um, controlling what you can and can't say about this. That would probably be her conclusion. That's what I assume. Well, I had a I had a Muslim guest, Muhammad Hijab, on my channel, and I asked him to define genocide and if this would qualify as genocide, but he wouldn't say. So I don't know. So I don't know how to answer. And and um, the thing is, when you are pregnant. Uh, as my grandfather always used to say, because he lived, you know, in, in segregation. And this reminds me of that time. And I just find it very hard to, to ignore the fact that people actually excuse this to say that this is anti-Semitic. Um, Michelle G., I find it amazing that God entered into our universe to rescue us. We are some despicable people all in, L, all in need of HIS help. Yeah. Gray said he kept saying I'm a grown man, so Trent can tell him what to think about the holo topic. LOL. I can't tell him what to think about the Holocaust topic. Yeah. I, I, I caught a little section of that. I think um he was declaring that yes, he is proudly denying the Holocaust or denying aspects of the Holocaust and accusing Trent Horn of being uh of not being a Catholic. Not being a Catholic, but of being a of believing in the Holocaust, not believing in Catholicism, but in the Holocaust. <laughs> That's what he was saying. And you know what's very funny, everybody? You know what's very funny? He also, I recently caught this and actually um, wanted to address this. I wonder if Sam Shimon ever saw it. But um, I was going through Nick Fuentes' Telegram account to look for instances of him talking about the Holocaust. And then I saw that at some point um, he said, can somebody put me in touch with Sam Shimoon? <laughs> then Sam Shimoon made a response apparently during his live stream when people asked him to talk to, to, talk to Nick Fuentes. He said, I'm not going to talk to Nick Fuentes. I will not talk to Nick Fuentes uh, because of the, the whole Nazi and Holocaust denial thing. And then Nick Fuentes made a follow-up post on Telegram and accused Sam Shimon of not being a Christian, but of of not being, uh, not following Christianity, but following the Holocaust or something like that. Um, oh yeah, never mind. It turns out Sam Shimon is not actually a Christian. Apparently his real religion is believing in the Holocaust. I had never heard of him until this week, so I didn't know. And then he posts a video of him. And then, shocking, shocking, he then says, is this guy a Jew? <laughs> because Sam Shimon rebukes him, and says, I will not have I will not have a conversation with Nick Fuentes. His next response is, is this guy a Jew? That's what they do. Urinating upon one another. That's what they do. Um <clears throat> yes. Joshua Wooden Candace is not about you, Ben. Bible says Israel Jews Hebrew over two thousand times, and Ben's son in Hebrew so glad David would cut off the bad fruit from the tree. Yeah. David Wood did good in firing cannons. Yeah. 
Joshua Wooden, old candies. Uh, David Wood sub to listen to her new candies charges twenty to seventy five thousand dollars per minute to talk to and hear from her. Jeremy and Clavin were right about her. They were indeed. Yeah. Oh, still a good bargain. Yeah, but David Wood did make a right decision. Hey, hey, you could debate her if you raised enough money. You could debate her. Oh yeah. If I paid her, let's look, let's have a look at it. If I paid her $22,000, I could debate her for 15 minutes. <laughs> no, you got to have at least an hour and a half debate, man. Oh, it's too expensive, man. Can't do that. But worth um, it. <laughs> let's see. 1500 yeah, that's twenty-two thousand and five hundred dollars. So, okay, everyone, I want to have a debate with Candace Owens. Um, however, so here is her here, here is her new business. She's on this platform called Minect. Candace Owens is right here. Candace. Uh, it says video call. So you can book a video call with Candace Owens. However, it is one thousand five hundred dollars per minute. Uh huh. One thousand five hundred dollars a minute. And it says. The site says 15 minute minimum. So 15 times 15, uh, 1,500 would be 22,500. So uh, you can't, I, you can't go that short. Just, just call it an even hundred minutes, hundred minute debate. Okay. And so 150 grand. Oh, well, that's cool. Okay. So, um, for one for one hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars, I could arrange a debate with with Candice Candice Owens. Um, seems like a fair deal, right? That mm -hmm. she would she would get a one hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. <laughs> but your you, your channel will blow up even more. <laughs> Man, I mean seriously, I wasn't gonna say anything about this, but this is just ridiculous. One thousand five hundred dollars per minute to talk to her. This is how. This is this is the value that she sets for herself. Yeah, people can talk to you for two dollars in a super chat. Yeah. She wants one thousand five hundred dollars per minute to talk to her. Quite a bargain. I want to copy this and also put a profile of myself up here. So I want to sign up here and. Put it on one thousand four hundred dollars. See if somebody calls. Hey, I'd like to put up a text answer, hundred dollars per text answer. She got there. I oh, like yeah. to set up something like that, but it's just I have like automatic replies, and anytime someone sends sends me uh, that, then it I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Some funny auto reply. They'll be based. They'll be based. <sighs> Did you read about Ridge Albanian guy in Kosovo who built a nightclub in front of a mosque? Why did he do it? The imam threatened his son, LOL. I'll send the link back and never fails. Really? That's pretty funny. Albanians are crazy. <clears throat> and that's a fact. Uh, Kosovo nightclub mosque. I don't know. Now I searched for night nightclubs in Kosovo and I'm getting recommendations for what nightclub now i have to travel to kosovo see see what you did terrible <clears throat> um joshua wooden said she learned from her bff and told on herself if the trajectory continues as it is she keeps learning from them she will start going after ezra son of oh no that's terrible yeah might do that arshia shahidi says I don't know what's nick fajita's problem with the bolsheviks considering he himself is a bolshevist i bet <laughs> he did not see that coming lol that's pretty good. CO said, was the Holocaust a genocide? No. If the Holocaust isn't a genocide, 6 million Jews, when will it become a genocide in Gaza? Only 15,000 so far. FKHMS. <laughs> what, what, what are you looking at, David? Because I searched for a nightclub and mosque. <laughs> and the article that popped up was 13th century Palestinian mosque converted to nightclub in Israel. <laughs> This is from a couple of years ago. It said a centuries-old Palestinian mosque in the northern Safed district of Israel has been converted into a bar. Al Ahmar Mosque has been repurposed several times since 1948, first into a Jewish school, then an election campaign center, 
then a clothing shop, and now a bar. <laughs> and the only, hey, what? Hey, you have no sound. Are you muted? Huh. Yeah, I turned the, the sound off for some reason. So it wasn't. I, would, I wouldn't laugh at that except for the fact that they're always, oh, we, we bought a church and converted it to a mosque, you see? And it's like, eh, you're so it, you're, so you're it a wasn't mosque turned, a bar. Hmm? So it wasn't turned from a mosque into a nightclub. It was first a bunch of other things before it became a, until it became a nightclub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it I just uh, changed hands a bunch. But no, it's 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 got like a minaret and a little dome and everything on it. So it's uh, it's a mosque, but now it's a bar. Dude, was, how did we not go to that bar while we were there? I don't know. Now I want to just quickly plan another trip to Israel just to go there. Um, <laughs> to be very honest, without intending any any offense here. It actually sounds like a pretty nice idea to turn a mosque into a bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We should do that. We should buy a, a mosque and turn it into a bar. Yeah. Because, you know, people often do this thing. They, 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 they create or they open clubs and bars with uh, different designs, with different architecture. They turn like factory things into into bars and stuff like that i went to this to this club once in 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 germany in berlin you never went to a club ap <laughs> ap <laughs> here trying to sound cool <laughs> I, when I was in germany at the club <laughs> i went to to new year in berlin into this club that was like underground that was this oh like, it's now he's in the underground club it was this old facility that was turned into a club and it was pretty pretty interesting like industrial beautiful. thing turned into a club. It's pretty nice. Um, Peter and Gobler said, if the trajectory continues as it is, if the trajectory continues as it is, yeah, yeah. Corey Kolochek said, the real DEI hire. Yes. The issue is, look, here's the issue. The issue, here's the problem. I don't think and so. I don't think it was. The here's the problem that nobody talks about. This, all except me. <laughs> here's the problem. Candace Owens became popular and was made relevant and uh, was turned into a public figure by certain conservatives only because of her skin color. That's, I'm, I'm, I think that's pretty obvious. Because unfortunately, while people have this whole, um, that this is just, this is an issue that is, uh, that, that also emerges on the, on the right or among certain conservatives, while trying to, um, while talking critically about leftist, um, you know, race, or identity politics and things like that. Um, th there's this conservative idea of using certain people who are not white, like Candace Owens, certain black people, in order to have them as a token person, a token black person who is on our side, who doesn't go with the flow, who doesn't go with the general public black opinion look we now have a right-wing conservative black woman who can also speak quite well i would say that it's quite obvious that um that that so both sides are doing this whole identity politics and skin color issue and she is an example of a random person being hired and put into uh under the limelight put onto the on, on a stage just because she is a a person of uh, she's a black person who doesn't go with the general leftist Democrat talking points and who supports uh, conservative right wing Republican talking points instead. She has nothing interesting to say. She has she hasn't contributed in, in any way to any proper discussion. She hasn't added anything of knowledge. She never knows what she's talking about. Whenever she's confronted about a, about a question that is uh, currently uh, being talked about, she 
literally, she adds nothing of value to the conversation. She says nothing insightful, nothing new. She always avoids the point, gives gives vague answers, repeats things she read somewhere on social media. If she was white, nobody would have even cared about her. You know it's true. <laughs> and that's not me being racist. Racist? Yes, it is. That's no. the most racist thing I've ever heard. He <laughs> said, he said, a black woman cannot be taken seriously for anything she says. <laughs> no. Actually, by by saying this, I'm accusing the conservatives who made her popular of being racists. And yes, I stand by that. Um, Ayatollah Khamenei said, oh shit, I, wait, I clicked it away, what happened? Uh, I'm calling it, Candace is going to get divorced in three years tops, and that divorce will be beyond messy and mudslinging, trust me, I'm a mufti. No, her grandfather would disapprove of that. Darth Racer said, native peoples were killing each other long before the Europeans came, true. There have been many books written about it, true. Cannibalism, true. Slavery, true. Mass killings, true. What happened was a clash of civilizations, true. Yet, and still... Nothing to do with anything we're talking about. Still, we do have uh, clearly recorded instances of uh, intent to wipe out Native American tribes. It is, it is, it is true. It's, it's, it's the reality. You have yeah, to doesn't mean you're saying they're the only people to ever do it or anything. It's just yeah. that's just what happened. It wasn't pretty. That's what happened. Yeah. UVB nineteen seventy said, "If the worst Israel could do is five thousand on average per month, then it's not very good at committing the G word, is it?" Yeah. Israel is doing a terrible, horrible, horrible job at genociding. They're the worst ever. Worst yeah. genociders ever. Like, I mean, such incompetence. It's ridiculous. Ayatollah Khamenei, sir, you just coated yourself in pudding and robbed an orphanage. Me, as a pregnant person, I abhor this attempt to throw dirt on my grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> UVB nineteen seventy. I want to see all those luxurious moralists when it comes to defending their own towns and villages. Yep, exactly, exactly. I just wonder, just wonder why Israelis react that way. Put yourself in the position, and then wonder if you will also be just you know very reasonable and not emotional, not say anything mean, and be like, oh no, we should be. Have complete restraint and not respond violently in any way. No, 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 no. That's not how we respond. You have a you have a, a barbaric, completely sick, twisted, messed up uh, group of people trying to kill and eradicate your side, raping them, massacring them, shooting them and sp spilling their bloods in the street, burning them alive. And you are then supposed to respond to that with restraint and with reason. Pfft. Yeah. It's very easy to say when you're not the victim, of course. Infinity said, Candace looked at Ben and thought, that's too much work. And then she looked at leftists and thought, wow, I can complain for a career and put actually productive people down. This is my passion. <laughs> Tiger Hogan said, Candace's trans-Palestinian granddad was pregnant on 10-7 and had a gay baby while under heavy gunfire from genocidal Jews using gay black babies as human shields. <laughs> In the cotton fields down south. <laughs> I wanted to keep a straight face reading this when I couldn't. Um, Hello Yiddy says, that's funny, that's a good name. Hello Yiddy says, this is my Shabbat plug for everyone to go buy Israel bonds. Not only do you earn dividends, it makes you smarter. Like knowing Israel is a diverse, not apartheid state. Yeah. Yeah. Moria W said uh, she was in Rosian Bar a few months ago and said, I don't give a sh about what happens in Ukraine, but she cares so much about Palestine. It's the money. It's the money and the attention and the grift. I'm being confidently informed that, uh, in informed that, that her husband has a lot of impact on the political directions that she's involved in and going Tate's buddy yeah Tate's buddy who is now who is also 
Candace's husband. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna t I'm gonna talk about that with Target Tree when, she when married, she's she married Top G's yeah, Top G's friend, Pregnace. Yeah, <laughs> Pregnace Owens says, uh, <laughs> Blessed are the Sid Spinklers. <laughs> um, Elon, she said that the rabbi told me, I believe it was Shmuley undercover. Yeah, it was probably Rabbi Shmuley telling her when she was walking through Jerusalem that only that Muslims are only allowed to live in the Muslim quarter. Sankey, please be considerate. What if a pregnant woman with a black grandfather and Nazi BFFs is watching? How would she feel with you mocking Candace? This is true. It's true. Very disrespectful. Mother of One said, David, a lot of Indian wars were started by occurrences like October 7 on small scales. They would go on in and find entire settlements, including babies sculpted. Then the government would go to war. Oh, oh okay. Hey, AP. Because I didn't know that if we said... There were times when people tried to wipe out the Native Americans that we were saying the Native Americans never did anything or that they didn't fight war. Ugh, I didn't realize that we were saying that. What, you said that? Huh. That's weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Yes. 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 No. Yes. We are aware. Completely acknowledging. Oh, guys, guys, fine. The 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 the, uh, the the colonists never did anything. They never did anything to harm any Native American ever. Can we can we get can we get past it? They never did anything, nothing. They were completely completely friendly and peaceful. And then the Native Americans they all caught diseases. And then uh, the others they they, uh, they they jumped off a building or something. In fact, in fact, I think the colonizers they never did anything wrong in their entire lives. They never did. They were completely completely completely. Innocent and everything else, any everything that said is sheer propaganda. Yeah, I think they were actually the first uh, sinless people in the world, mm -hmm. <laughs> or something like that. Um, what's the takeaway? Said one hundred percent Americanism is a heresy in the Catholic Church. America first, Nick Fuentes, twenty twenty four. What? Hmm. Yes. Oh yes. Mark H said, and by the way, I hope Nick Fuentes. Um, anyway, not going to say it. Uh, Mark H said, I was never impressed with Candace and thought she was overrated, but I never thought she was this disingenuous. Yeah, this is bad. Just this live stream has uh, dropped my impression of her. I always thought she was. Uh... Really? Honestly? What? Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, see, you, you've got you got different things. So I always thought she was a good communicator in terms mm -hmm. of um just just being able to fire off just being able to fire off uh whatever she's saying, whatever she's talking about. Uh then on some of the issues of like, okay, she doesn't know what she's talking about over here, she doesn't know what she's talking about over here, she doesn't know what she's talking about over here. But then here, when we're actually watching this discussion with Pierce Morgan, it's like, wait a minute, she's gaslighting everything. That's different, right? That's different. We we all know what you meant. We all know what you meant when you said that. And if it were one example, that would be one thing. It was like everything that got brought up. Uh, and so that means she is just all too happy, flat out lying to everyone who's watching. And that means I don't trust you at all, anything you say anymore. Alhamdulillah. Celia Rosenkroix says, uh, I have been mostly preoccupied and unable to watch the stream live, but I look forward to seeing what was said at a later time. Hope it's been nice. Uh, yes, indeed, it has been nice. Thank you. appreciate it so much. I also saw for a fact that Celia Rosenkroix left a comment on your live stream yesterday as soon as it was over, telling you what video to watch. No. So I saw it immediately. Don't yeah. lie to me. I will bet money on it apostate boohoo said ap what if candace saw you talking about her how do you think she would feel go to his queen <laughs> not as said ap will you condemn the david wood extreme fundamentalist who prosecute the wingerlings and blame them for the rise of nerdism stop wingerlingophobia i think they have a point so i'm i'm not i'm not, I'm not sure why i'm supposed to condemn that yeah i mean they have the option of not being such freaking nerds. So, yeah. 
I'm going after them for their choices. That's a good point. Let's see. Andre of Fick said, guys, I would pay good money to see you guys debate debate Candace. Yeah, what you saw is she, she she charges one thousand five hundred dollars per minute. So um <laughs> anyone who's got a hundred and fifty thousand burning <laughs> a hole in your pocket, you could arrange an hour and forty minute debate. No, honestly, if if it was possible to get together with her and to actually have a discussion with her, I don't think she, I don't think it's possible because I think she's just I don't think she's actually interested in having honest debates. I would totally totally do that, but it would also I I'm saying it quite honestly and openly. I don't think it would be very honorable. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Of me to debate her. Hang on, AP. What? Just just so it's on public record. <laughs> would we agree to a two-on-two -two debate, David Wood and the apostate prophet versus Candace Owens and Nick Fuentes? <laughs> yes. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Just, just to sweeten the pot, would we agree to a two-on-three handicap match? Two-on-three, David Wood and the apostate prophet versus Candace Owens, Nick Fuentes, and Jake Shields. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Oh. So you're saying that Candace Owens and Nick Fuentes are too good, which is why you want to bring down the quality by adding Jack, Jake Shields. I like that. I would agree to it, yeah. I would agree to that. You heard Definitely. it here, folks. Yeah. Our balls are in their court. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very interesting choice of words. Uh, Nut is said, <laughs> AP, you could teach the Groypers how to have self-control. I mean, you went this whole stream about a black woman without saying repeal the 9th, 19th, <laughs> 15th, or the racist word, which for a level 10 racist such as yourself had to be hard. I thought you were talking about the whole um, restraining yourself and not. Anyway, yes. Yes, I can teach them, uh, but I have to charge. Copy the ball said, um, at some point I turned my volume off when Candace was talking. This is probably a good decision. You might be healthier as a result of that. Especially when you're clicking through her videos and, hey, happy Sunday, everybody, blah, 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 whatever else she was saying. That's very racist against women, of course. What do you expect from David? Uh, Josh Trust said, I grew up KJVO, so I noticed that means KJV only, right? Yep. Yeah, so I noticed her use of two translations further shows that a story of simply reading the Bible at her husband's suggestion was false. Mm. Imagine if Pierce Morgan had brought that up. Well, you say you were just uh, reading the Bible because your husband told you to, and yet you're clearly selecting different translations to go along with making your point against the Jews. So how do you respond to that? Hmm. That would have been legend status right there. Hmm. Awful Falafel says, Bruh, you only read half of my other super chat. I actually paid more to be able to write examples of sound bites that would be cool for you to have. You did? I don't remember that. I'll go back and check it. I swear. On Candace Owens. I will go back and check it. Urating Broom says Clash of Titans. Urinating upon one another. Ali Dawa or Mojab. Pick one. I think Ali Dawa says more dumb stuff, but Mojab is more mentally unstable. I would say that um, there is a fallacy here uh, where it is being treated as if Ali Dawa and Mohammed Hijab were, were separable, and we would have, and we had to make a choice. If they are not separable, Ali Dawa and Mohammed are one. You can't have Beagley Beagley without Grape Ape. You can't have Grape Ape without Beagley Beagley. Yeah. So, this is this 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 choice, this dilemma here, is a fallacy, and I cannot respond to this properly. It is both of them together. They are never separate. They sleep in the same bed. They take showers together. They debate together. They eat together. They think together. That's what they do. It's like it's like pick between Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. No, you got to have them both. Yeah, yeah. See? Yagoda Basich said, thank you for the membership and exposing the poser and anti-Semite Candace. I appreciate it. Thank you for being part of the cult. 
in serving the greater Zionist agenda. Uh, Royal Castriota, the nightclub was in prison, prison Kosovo. Sent you a link on X. I was over here trying to look that up because he must have sent the link to you. But I was over here for a few looking up that place. Couldn't find any reference to anything going on on Twitter. But you got the link, so... A possible who said Candace can't be all bad. I I hear she blocks Turks. <laughs> yeah, that's one good thing that I like about her that she blocks Turks. Yeah. Uh, Christianity is anti-Semitic. Jesus is not king. Said Kwame Matran Yame Mentuhotep. I don't know why this Pharaoh is back talking to us. About. Uh, yeah, don't know, but thank you for the financial contribution to AP's channel. Yeah, you guys are dead. You're, not, you're no longer relevant. You're part of history. Uh, the White Tiger said, the White Tiger made a super chat. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, Sam said, the three Stooges, Ken Dace, Owens, Jake Shields, and Nick Fuentes are all in competition for the dumbest person in the world. Sneeko won last year. <laughs> Honestly, I must say, I have to disagree on one point here, and this is going to be the biggest admission of the century. I do agree that two people on this, two people that mentioned we are, here, we are on the are same stupid, page, are uh -huh. stupid. The third person mentioned here is not stupid. There are four people mentioned here, so you're stupid. Wait a minute, what? I didn't even. Oh, no, 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 not including Sneeko, because it says they're in competition, the three. Yeah, that's why. So you're stupid. Uh, <laughs> but of the three people mentioned here, David, you, you also agree that two are stupid. One is not, right? No, I would say of the four people mentioned here, two are stupid, two are not. Although one of the people who isn't stupid is not nearly as smart as she thinks. Okay. So yep. I don't believe that Candace is stupid. Okay, I believe so that she is of above average intelligence, just not nearly as smart as she thinks she is. Okay. Well, by that by that definition, possibly, yeah, I would. Agree whereas with you. whereas Jake Shields and Sneeko, I believe that they are sub average intelligence. Well, Jake Shields is a barely functioning human when you come, when you analyze it from. <laughs> <laughs> from that aspect i i would argue that he might be dumber than sneeko from the things that he says i would say that there is a possibility that he might be even dumber than sneeko which is which is a very big deal you shouldn't be take you shouldn't be taking this lightly it's a very serious problem nick fuentes is not stupid that's true nick, nick fuentes is not stupid he is He's and that's pretty why, wild. That's why yeah. Kant, that's why Immanuel Kant said that the only thing good without qualification is a good will, because everything else can actually help bad, right? Like if you are evil and you're smart, then you being smart is not good. That's bad. It's bad that you're smart and evil. Yeah. So we agree on that part. Nick Fuentes is definitely not 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 stupid. He's smart. But he is deceptive. Whoa. He has pretty bad intentions. Hey, Sneeko's winning the poll though, man. Really? Which poll? Yeah, I voted for I voted for Jake. Which poll are you talking about? What are you talking about? What the poll? poll on here that says who's more stupid? I don't see such a poll. Where do you see such a poll? Are you joking? You put a poll up. I didn't put a poll up. What are you talking about? Who's more stupid? 57 58% are saying Sneeko. That's wild. More than Jake. Maybe, maybe lots of people are just more familiar with Sneeko than with Jake. Well, I don't see a poll. What are you talking about? Who who did the poll? Who is the <laughs> I didn't make a poll? Um let's you say clearly did. I didn't. North Star said, AP, how do you even handle listening to David's anti-social hours at a time? Here's a little something. Go buy one of those bad American beers after the show to wind down. Love you all. Bad American beers like Samuel Adams? Don't think so. 
good American beer. I very rarely drink nowadays. Very extremely rarely. Even when you're at the club in Germany? (laughs) (laughs) The underground club. But if I grab the beer, my choice would definitely not be American beer. Definitely not. I'm sorry to say that. But it's just quite obvious. You'd grab a Miller Lite. I would grab something German or something Dutch. Something like that. North Star said, we already read this, man. No, it's, it's good. Miril Vittel said, hate from Romania for Candace. Oh, I thought it was for us. I was kind of happy about that, but yeah. Um, thank you. Appreciate that. It's Tate land out there. Yeah. Hate for Tate land. Say hello Tate to that Tate. country. Let's see him. Yeah. Um, hey, this is amazing. Somebody said Erdinger. Where is that? Here. Yes. That's the kind of beer that I like. That's the kind of beer that I like. Uh, Heineken is good, but not quite on the same level. Yes. Erdinger is brutal. It's beautiful. Brian Maunder said John Bapo killed because accused Herod of marrying his bro's wife. Reminded me of Mahu taking adopted son's missus. What do Muslims think of John the Bapo? It's John the Baptist. Good night, says Bapo. Stop misrepresenting what this super chat says. It says Bob. What's your two word answer to this, David? It's a actually interesting parallel. Um, Herod married his brother's wife. John the Baptist, Baptist called him out for it. Herod locked him up. Wasn't sure exactly what to do with him. Uh, Bex is good too. Yeah, uh, then Muhammad. Yeah. Muhammad takes the wife of his own adopted son. But see, Herod didn't have the power of revelations to justify what he was doing. That's interesting. That might be hmm, that might be worthy of pointing out that in that situation, a prophet called out the ruler for doing something messed up. Whereas with Muhammad, it's the so-called prophet doing the messed up thing. And you can't call him out. Because he gets the revelations saying it's okay. So what would John Bapu say? John if, the uh, Baptist would have totally called out Muhammad and Muhammad would have had him killed. That's but we're point. not talking about John the Baptist, we're talking about John Bapu. That's true, but John Bapu's pretty much in the same ballpark. Oh, I see, I see. Fair enough. Um Apu Bakr said, love you guys, but you're being a bit harsh. Candace is concerned about the lives of Palestinian children. Let's face facts. The image of Arab children being killed so brutally does not help Israel. Did we well, say did we say one word about not being concerned about Palestinian children? Nope. In fact, only issue uh, the only issue as far as that whole scenario was, she's calling it genocide, and then when she's called out for calling it genocide, pretends she wasn't calling it genocide, and she was just randomly commenting on on in response to someone else, and then when Pierce says, "Is it a genocide?" But do you believe that it's a genocide? She waffles around. And well, I don't even know what the definition of genocide is. And then when Pierre says, okay, here's a dictionary definition of genocide. Is it a genocide? Then they have to go back and forth for 15 minutes and she won't answer. That's what we're calling. That's what we're talking about there. Perfectly legitimate, perfectly legitimate to be concerned about kids in Gaza dying. Perfectly legitimate. Um, it's just when when you are when someone is assigning blame for that, how about how about bringing up the terrorists who slaughter a bunch of people and then run and hide where they're about the weather where they're a bunch of kids? How about no? Knowing that Israel's going to come after them and doing so deliberately for PR. You're hiding, boy. You're hiding. Darth Racer said, oh, "Guys, I'm not saying you're a piece. We're still on the American." I'm not saying we Europeans already said no crime. Americans have ever done anything wrong. Guys, I'm not saying Europeans didn't do a lot of crap. That's what I meant about clash of civilizations. Advanced civilizations overcoming lesser ones. It's just human nature. It's been going on since recorded history. No. Nope. Nothing to do with anything we're talking no about. No European white person who landed in the Americas ever did anything wrong in their entire lives. We have already established that. Case closed. Period. Uh, Abu Ahruf said Nick Fuentes and Jake Shields brother ooh. 
trying to roll up into a conference today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ooh, brother. Ooh. Uh, Alex M. Love you guys. David Wood and Associated Press. However, I have been having trouble with one thing. Do you guys not believe there is a point? where this war is leading to tons of unnecessary civilian deaths in Gaza. Yes, yes, definitely. I would indeed say that this war is leading to a lot of unnecessary civilian deaths in Gaza. I agree entirely. I agree that this war is leading to a lot of unnecessary deaths in general. Does that, however, mean that uh, Israel is at fault does it mean that Israel is deliberately killing civilians? Does it mean that Israel is committing a genocide? Does it mean that uh, Israel is targeting innocent civilians? No. If you make these accusations, you have to back them up with something, with some sort of form of evidence. If you make these accusations and you don't back them up, you don't want to stand by it, then you are simply making a blatant wrong accusation. Yes, people don't have to die. And it's, it's sad that people are dying in war. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes talking about it. People don't want to acknowledge it. People want to deny it. People want to condemn it and so on. Nobody actually likes a bunch of people kill, uh, being killed or dying. The issue is what what is Israel really supposed to do? And is Israel just really targeting people? That's not what it looks like. There is Hamas on one hand waging a war which they started, which they promised would bring the destruction and end of Israel. And they did nothing except target random civilians, who, whomever they saw on October 7, with the intent to actually wipe out Jews as a people. In fact, not even just Jews, Israelis as a people. It doesn't matter if they were Jews. They also did the very same thing to Arabs inside Israel, because to them, everyone inside Israel is part of Israel and is a traitor and is the enemy. So they went there with the intention to wipe out everyone who is loyal to Israel. Israel is now putting an end to this. Israel can't just decide to say, oh, you know what? Too many people died. Let's just stop. Let's just get out of here. If Israel says too many people died, let's just get out of here. Hamas will just attack again in the near future. They have already announced that many times. In their own words, why in the world would Israel prolong the suffering and cause more deaths in the future instead of going there once and fighting this brutal terrorist organization which deliberately uses civilian infrastructure, which deliberately sacrifices civilians, as they have said it publicly and privately, and end them once and for all. You can focus on the short-term suffering of humans dying. What matters here is that in the long run, this conflict must be resolved and those terrorists who are vile beings, excuses for human beings, must be removed from power. Hamas. Yeah, and that's uh, what a lot of people are missing when we're thinking in uh, the big picture. Um, there's a potentially endless cycle of violence here back and forth back and forth back and forth and as much sense as it makes say oh but civilians are dying just imagine israel does ceasefire right now doesn't finish off hamas mm -hmm. hamas says what the, hamas says hamas says what they're going to do they're going to go do it again okay so what happens then israel's going to retaliate again uh, what what takeaway message does Israel want to leave? There are basically two options on the table. Two takeaway messages for future generations of potential terrorists. It's it's one of these one of these messages. It's either you want the people who are there to understand if you go and kill a bunch of Israelis and then run and hide and take a bunch of hostages, we're going to hunt you down and nothing is going to stop us. And it doesn't matter where you hide, we're going to hunt you down. Yes, there will be civilian casualties, but you are not under any circumstances getting away with it. We're going to hunt you down and find you. So just be aware, all future generations of Harris, there's no scenario where you get away with this. We're going to hunt you down. It doesn't matter where you hide. We're coming to get you. You can either leave terrorists, future terrorists with that message, or, hey, future generations of terrorists, just so you know, 
if you come and kill a bunch of us and take a bunch of hostages and you run and hide, just keep hiding for a while and we'll eventually give up and you could get away with it. Which, which message is for future generations? Yes, we understand that one of those is best for some civilians right now. Uh, but one of those is clearly better for future generations of terrorists to understand and get a certain message across to them. And so when you say, oh, come on, civilian death, civilian death. Okay, what, what are you saying? Israel stops right now, ceasefire. Is that the message you want to leave Hamas with? Just go and hide among civilians and we'll give up. What does that do? That says, that sends a message, not just there, to the entire world. Guys, if you want to get away with terrorism, just go slaughter a bunch of people and run and hide among civilians. And we'll all give up because we'll say, oh, no, we don't, we, don't want to, we don't want to get any civilians in the crossfire. So yeah, let them go. That's a bad message. That's a very, very bad, dangerous message. And you don't want terrorists of the world to get that message. Just say. Indeed. Death to Hamas. <clears throat> Not as AP, if you had to make a tier list of these people who goes where Adolf Hitler, Kenneth Owens, Atatürk, Mohammed, Hirohito, Mao, Stalin, Mike Winger, David Wood, and Ben Shapiro. Uh, I will put it together and get back to you. I would say very top, definitely, David Wood and Mike Winger. Um, those are, and those are the worst people. The, the others are not even. Then uh, Ben Shapiro. They're not a Turk. So this goes from bad to good. Uh, Stalin. Mao. Mohammed. Hirohito. Hitler. Oh, that's the question. <laughs> Um, just put it in reverse. Josh Trust said, thank you for enduring my autism and seeing the value of the point. Daily Wire. Associated Press was visibly disturbed by my by my biblical literacy, preferring I read Dawkins. Yeah, indeed. 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 Gladly we have Daily Wire here, who always has an understanding and open ear for that. Royal Castriota said, David, check X, sent you the nightclub video in front of the mosque. And just a dude made a super chat. Tiger Hogan made a super chat said donkey brains. Alex M said thank you, brother, for your answer. Some in chat seemed to think it was asking in a provocative way, which by no means is true. No, no, nobody ever makes provocative chats here in this, in this, on, on our live streams. Um, <laughs> way to twist words here. <laughs> um, yes. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Hang on. I didn't get any link. What's he talking you about? Did. You Is did. he on my old account? Probably. I got David no has an old account where he hasn't posted for like five years. Well, I was locked out of it. Um, uh, b -b 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 I don't even remember the password to try and peel it. All right. Yeah. You got it? No. Okay, you don't. But okay. you can, you can, you can check it out. You can check it out tomorrow. Ooh, check it out. Um, people are asking who won the poll. I don't even see the poll. I'm serious. Whoever made the poll, <laughs> the poll was under your name, dude. It came from apparently you. Apparently, a moderator made the poll. I didn't make it. Oh, that's funny uh, then. Yeah, I don't know. Moderators can make polls. That's funny. Yeah. Um, Wait a minute. I can make polls. Oh, I see what happened. Okay. Okay. Oh. I get it. Um, yeah. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. And tomorrow we will be back on tomorrow. And Wait a minute. What is it's today? It's today Today's Friday, Friday man. Holy wow. You don't even know what day it is. It's the next day. That's how you gonna, how you gonna how are you gonna tell everyone what to think and stuff, and you don't even know what day it is. Yeah. So tomorrow, be prepared, everybody. Uh, put on your uniforms. Uh, we have some serious business to do. Put on your big boy pants. <laughs> and always listen to what uh, Big Mama Candace Owens has to say, in her famous words, which generations will remember. Blessed are the peacemakers. Um, 
And also I was pregnant and my grandfather was also pregnant. So think about that, meditate on that. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can take from there. Until tomorrow, have a fantastic day. And as always, we'll be watching. Wait a minute, notice AP is so racist, he didn't even give Candace Owens a spot. Really? Wait a minute, was Candace Owens actually mentioned? I didn't even notice. <laughs> wow, I didn't even get a spot. <laughs> like she's on a complete, she's something completely different. Well, <laughs> well I didn't even notice that. Um, okay, one more thing. Sam, could you each say what, are we with, what do you think is the most stupid statement argument of each person? Sneaku, Jake, Candace, Nick, that made your mind up about them? This is too much to ask for a final question. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a number of things. Someone can say something really stupid one day. I would not, I'm just a person can have an off day and say something stupid. You know, you notice clear patterns of stupidity over time. It also depends. Uh, do you actually mean stupid as in, uh, yeah. in intellect, like uh, not very intelligent? Or by stupid, do you just mean that it's a stupid suggestion because the outcome of it would be stupid? Uh, if you mean that, it's, that it just comes from a very clear lack of thinking skills, that will make every, everything quite different. I can say with Sneeko, it's probably the uh, Book of Council of Nicaea. <laughs> That's um, up there. That's right up there. Um, <laughs> and then um, Jake is, there's just too much to count. I don't know. Yeah, that's it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have a fantastic day. We'll be back tomorrow, as always. And uh, as always, as we always stay away do. from Islam.